Yo. Yo. What is up? Woot. Sorry, getting everything set up. That notification not play? I hope the game uh, goes in a good direction. I really do want to enjoy it. Um, I have, admittedly, I have seen the changes that are coming today, and they are a step in the right direction. So, um, the game will be better after today, and these changes are in. That I can I can say confidently. Uh, I'm excited for everyone else to kind of see what they are. Uh, and then during the stream, <laughs> what's up, Mort? Um, after, after the stream, we're going to get feedback from everyone. So, uh, and, and I think that's going to be pretty important is, uh, is the feedback because as, as part of the early discussions in this itemization and all these changes coming for season four, we were able to give feedback to Blizzard and they already implemented like some of the feedback we gave them from a week ago into season four. They're quick with the feedback. They want to know what the vibe of the community is and they are willing to act on it quickly, uh, which is really encouraging. Like it was just really encouraging for me to see. Yeah, what's up, Mort? Woot. All right, let's do it. Let me ping. So much going on. New quest lines, new legendary items, new unique items. And we got YouTube chat. Jason Wilkinson and Rip Some Lip Outdoors. Still cannot play the game. Keeps crashing for you randomly. You learn a wondrous place beneath should try turning down your graphic settings. Untold treasure. Nearly always seek this treasure, never return. Those that do return are haunted, or worse yet, possessed. You seek out this place to put an end to whatever is lurking there. Following a lead, you discover a sprawling network of underground vaults. It houses the Loon, a priceless apparatus built long ago by the brilliant mages Zoltan Kul and Ayujan of Chaldeum to shape the elements and build tools to serve humanity. While exploring the network, you rescue Ayujan, only to discover that the demon Malthus has taken over the. We're live on YouTube, Tony. Private hell. Munis. Is a servant of Munis is here. He's unlike other demons we've encountered. You crank from the clan, yo. Manipulates others, takes on forms other than his Everything is turned down, not sure. Try a fresh install. And you must work with Ayujan to explore the vaults. Oh, the first YouTube stream, co-stream with, with Switch. Yeah, what's up, Adam Joe? I don't know if notifications are going to play in this uh, in this setting that I'm in. But. Mouth has taken control of them and twisted them to his liking. Any predictions? I know everything that's coming. Actually, I don't know everything. They showed us a week ago what they had planned for the campfire chat, but they took our feedback and they already made some changes just based on our feedback. So I'm actually, there could be some surprises for me too. Um, what I'll be more curious about is the feedback from you all. And I want to get all of that feedback, document it, and give it to Blizzard because I saw what they did with just our feedback as the streamers, and I, and and I think that that's great. Like the streamers can can give feedback, and 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 that's all well and good. But like, where are the opportunities for the community to give feedback? Uh, and and that's what I want to do. So there will be like a yeah, there's gonna be a surprise at the end of the campfire chat. There's probably going to be a lot of people here. So if you want to get your word in edgewise, you probably want to do that before the campfire chat ends. Um, you can probably figure out what's going to happen. Uh, but at that point, I really want to get the sense from everyone on where we're at right now because I, I think it's a lot of really good stuff. Uh, I'm excited. Yo, what's up, Gab? What's up, Leash? Daddy Diesel. Oh, guys, it's it's the afternoon on a Wednesday. I took off work for this. So you know something's going to happen. D4 is dead. Uh, you're not probably not the only one that's, that's going to say that today. 
Uh, so it, it is what it is, but um, it, is, is it dead? Maybe. Could it be re resurrected? You never know. Yo, Solon, thank you for the 28 months. I, I think um, notifications aren't going to play in this scene, but I, I'm going to change scenes later. are seasonal dungeons that are filled with a high concentration of deadly traps. Where you can farm for the magic stones for your <laughs> I'm not your friend guy, yo. How's it going? You got me double box next to the the world record four man we did with uh Jim McCall and BK. That was a really fun run. I love playing with those guys. Encountering great challenges. Vaults not only resurrected family in there, but also new traps built for this season. Players are going to discover many new hazards inside these vault spaces. You know, whether it is spinning pillars, right. shooting out flames. Or other traps. This is this is nothing new, so we can uh, we can we can keep chatting. I'm I'm loving this. Um, I, I'm surprised. I mean, there's people in the YouTube stream already. I'm 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 super excited about that. And uh, and I think if the dual stream goes well, um, I think definitely like going forward. We we just co-stream going going forward. I, I think um, I, I've been asked it a couple times from uh, from you know YouTube YouTube commenters and for the purposes of today we got everything all set up and running. I think that was the the one holdback was uh, getting the logistics squared away. But so far so good. Hopefully it goes well. Yo Don Mac in the house. What's Twitch? Yeah, everyone is the YouTube. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys. We got some. We got some mods. Yo, what the heck, Hyper Teddy? Yo, Hyper Teddy. I feel like we've got some uh, some lapsed D four players in the house here. So um, I, I think this could bring people back. Yeah, I I think so. I I think. At least for me personally, like I, D, uh, season three got stale for me pretty quickly. But at the end of the changes that you see today, I mean, it's gonna feel like a pretty pretty new game. Um, and I mean, for that reason alone, it's got me a lot more excited about season four. But it, it needed something like this. I mean, they, they are completely redesigning and, and i'll i'll let them get into it but it, they are drastic changes that are are needed coming back just wrapped up wow season of discovery nice don mac you've been having fun with that the gauntlet was a letdown um yeah i mean here it is the gauntlet um the problem with the gauntlet right now like it's not a bad idea um, I think in theory, it just can't be the only leaderboard. Like, come on, Blizzard, what are you doing? Like, that, it's just, it's just not, the end game is lacking so much. They promised us leaderboards in Season 4. And for that to be the only leaderboard, like, where was the level 100 leaderboard? You know, I'm a Diablo 2 player. Where's my like where's my 99 ladder? Where's my level 100 leaderboard? Where's my tier 100 rift leaderboard? Something like that. Like having this be Hello, the only Diablo leaderboard is where is the problem with the gauntlet. Campfire and and, and that's the main uh, main problem. It can't be the only thing. If it's today, one thing of many, uh, then I'll it's fine. <laughs> but as the only really end game leaderboard, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll no good. No good. I, I promise you this is GR one fifty. Uh, Get ready. <laughs> Dead trash game. Well, some people are gonna think that. Yeah. Hopefully it gets better. Hopefully it's better after today, and I think it will be. Is the volume okay? Uh, we have Charles Dunn, who's a game designer on Diablo 4. Uh, Mr. Joe Shell, <laughs> the game director of Diablo 4. And Mr. Joe Pipora, who's the associate game director it's low. of Diablo 4. It's low. I'll turn it up. We will be joined by Adam Jackson, who's the lead class designer of Diablo 4. Uh, before we can't hear the Diablo uh, team, get to, to the class specific uh, information that we're going to share today. But I know Joe wanted to jump in, talk a little bit about. Is it better, uh, or do I need to turn it up more? We're going to be uh, talking about today. And then we will go through a plethora of changes coming to Diablo 4. And of course, Turn details up. about the first ever uh, PTR, Public Test Realm, 
for D4. Uh, and for people who don't know, Public Test Realm is kind of like a private server where players Better. can actually end up playing uh, early content and test that out and provide feedback to us. Um, so we'll go through all the details on that. <laughs> the left looks dead inside. That's Joe P. He's he's off. actually Thanks, a, like a legit yeah, so legend. I want to um, frame this update. This is uh, met him in person. Most energetic guy about Diablo ARPGs. Um, when we think about, he's got a face on um, right now. But Diablo, right? Diablo. He is an will ARPG. talk your ear off. Everybody knows what an ARPG is, right? <clears throat> Um, it's an action role playing game. What's behind Adam's um, ear? It's a pen. But it's such a broad category, right? You have lots of games that are. Sounds good on your end. Um, thank you. Thank the, you. A game like Hollow Knight. Thank you, David example, Lee. Um, is an ARPG. Donuts. It's also a Metroidvania, right? Or a game like Hades, which is an ARPG. It's also a roguelike. Mm -hmm. Or something like Elden Ring, which is an ARPG. It's good that um, they're acknowledging other right? popular ARPGs. So when you think about what is Diablo, and what is Diablo for? Um, you could call it a Diablo-like, sure. Um, but another way to describe it would be as a systems ARPG, right? An SARPG. Um, and so what distinguishes this kind of game from those other games that are in the same space that are all ARPGs, right? And it's really about when you're making decisions yeah, and what's the most Ring. important decisions you're making. Pretty sick. The most important decisions in a game like this are the decisions you're making before combat, between combat. Decisions you make in combat are important too, but those are the ones that are the most important. Action combat, Change RPG elements, up. and systems are all foundational elements of any, of any ARPG. <laughs> but in a systems ARPG, yes. the, the systems in particular, including the end game, itemization, things Systems like ARPG with only Those Diablo 4. Those are what the soul of the game. No, I think it's important to understand the, the dev's philosophy like behind they don't just have some to of what deep, they're doing. I don't, I don't think they talk prolific. about that enough. Uh, exciting. At the end of the day, it's got to be know, a good game. But... We've been designing this update for a while. Um, we're putting it on the PTR because it's important, and it's important to get it right, like Adam was saying. And everything you're about to hear that you'll hear about today is from that S part of the SAR. Solid, you grinding Poe? All of it. You getting ready for the next Joe, league? Joe, Adam, Adam. When is um, uh, and Charles are going to take you through the when changes? When is Necropolis? All the changes. In is it detail. like early April? And there are a lot. So sit back, grab a drink, get your React faces <laughs> ready, <laughs> uh, and let's do it. A week from Friday. Awesome. Well, I appreciate Soon. it, Joe. March 29th. Um, so I, I definitely know, want to play uh, that. What we want to do first, we, we kind of have a. It might a, be the first Poe League I stream. We want to talk about really quickly. Anyway, this is Diablo PTR. 4 day. Um, we do want to get some. Because this is this is big. Can expect from PTR, along this with is the big. Dates we'll, we'll talk about so when they can actually trying out Poe. So, season on 4 stream. PTR yeah. is actually going to start on April 2nd, and it's actually going to run for a week through April 9th. So players will be able to jump into PTR. There you go. And. Try everything out that we're we're about to tell you all about. PTR uh, in is this, uh, stream. now. I know a three lot days of after are asking, like, hey, the poly. That seems pretty April close 2nd. to the end of season three. Is that enough time for you guys to actually react to you know the feedback that we're going to be getting from PTR? And I will note here that we do plan on actually extending season three for uh, this. So season three is actually going to have a new end date. We're pushing it back a few weeks uh, to ensure that we get all the feedback from this PTR. And we apply it to season four to make sure that and season all these new three is getting extended. That we're doing are, are right and and work for the community uh, based off of everyone's feedback. So season three is now going to end on May fourteenth, and of course with that, season four also starts on May fourteenth. So there are some uh, a few different uh, uh, changes coming on uh, for the schedule. So you'll see that in-game uh, message, which actually notes like when the season is actually ending. Change. Uh, today probably um, with this new date for players, uh, so that again, D4 chat is ruthless. We all the well, here's the PTR thing about starts on April second through extend April 9th. like season three uh, ends May fourteenth. Um, is, uh, listen, I want th season three to be only. be over as soon as so anyone. This just allows us to be a little uh, bit more but... agile on our team. 
Does in my mind, PTR season three ends PTR when the PTR starts. No, so April 2nd is actually when season three ends. Like, I'm not going to be playing uh, season PTR, three, I don't uh, think, after the PTR uh, drops. The like, I want to get uh, into the season now, four stuff as soon as possible. Only, so so we'll once PTR drops, like, that's going to be what my focus is. I want to really get into the PTR stuff. I want to play the season stuff four stuff as soon as possible. And the fact that we're getting that in April, I'm cool with. But, like... Kind of all the details of the fact that, that they're well before, uh, delaying the season of, uh, three PTR like the season four start i don't i don't think um, is a big deal personally other notes with PTR, uh, i think well, rushing um, these seasons uh, to fit to a, a certain time schedule like, well, is why we're in like the situation that we're in now with really existing characters um, lukewarm PTR seasons it is a like a fresh new server Big fat um, L. Like, w but wouldn't you rather? On PTR, I don't know. We do have boosting. Like, I rather uh, wait um, a couple extra weeks and get a good season, and then have to go these, through these seasons were, one and three again. System changes that we're we're doing specifically for PTR. So give up, yeah, gave up season three two weeks ago. Yeah, and I and I get it. Like for people that don't want to play the PTR, bring the camera back to me, Lucas. That's also. I, I've, I've seen a lot. That's of also a about, lot of time hey, that you have to wait. You guys have a lot of slots. But hey, sometimes the you got POE League, you've got Last Epoch, you've got other games um, in, uh, that you can play until then. Actually showcase because I rather be have a season that, that I we will enjoy. Today. Like I rather them get feedback from the PTR, make it build. better. So we will actually be going to the live than have like the season two weeks earlier. We know that a lot of players want to see more gameplay or see them in game. So we do have that here today. Okay. Now we can go to the next <laughs> Yeah, Hyper Teddy, so, just keep watching because, like, uh, so there will we be haven't even gotten to the changes. You'll available. see why um, uh, for, soon. For why, that like, are into PTR, I, don't, I don't think um, it's a big deal that they delay it this season. Uh, when you do uh, do I'm that, not in a rush to play anything like season three again. So, you can do this multiple times. Here's what you'll get in PTR so you can get across your characters, of course. And then, uh, boosted character, gold, opals, completed for your character as well as offering you amounts, all your skill points, and more. Um, skill points again. Skill Paragon. points, Paragon, uh, Fog of War. War will be completely clear. This is everything you'll get in the PTR clear. so you don't have to level from scratch. It's actually match the renown progress on your, your uh, And I don't Diablo see... Board, um, so already done all your renown rewards and everything. I don't see you'll souls in there. Uh, Boosting a PTR is only $60? Nah, it's free. PTR. Uh, and of course, all the class system mechanics, things like I went Poe to D4 um, or to or like D2R, finished Poe. Um, now you're in limbo. Enabled for you. Play D2R, for Daddy. That you end up do creating for PTR Would you play this season? I missed this season. And then all your <laughs> only sixty dollars. And oh, you guys are troll. Be doubled. Um, and I believe um, uh, glyphs are also yeah, glyphs um, are maxed. Yeah, also, glyphs are also yeah. maxed up. So you will have that uh, capability there. There are like a few things that will they be, delay the gauntlet uh, and you don't not play present in PTR, but that is uh, like that is example, true. Uh, one of the things is uh, um, codex of power, mm -hmm. um, but we'll we'll explain why they delayed the in gauntlet a, in, a, in a minute. Um, there, there's some more details. And I wanted the, the gauntlet to be at the start of the uh, season, like to kind of understand, everything. Uh, you should have everything at there. the start so of the season. We will be so like if they told me that they were going to delay season three two weeks, but we'd get gauntlet right when the season started, I would have been okay with that. Like. I would be fine with that. Just because something is delayed PTR doesn't make it good or bad. I just want uh, everything right now, when the so season no starts. Like, I, I uh, don't love these mid-season updates. Online, like, we'll it's great that they try to adjust this um, stuff. So please provide feedback based off and, of everything that you are uh, you know, adjust today, to our feedback. But it feels like halfway through the season, they're just changing everything that's happening in the game. And I I rather just have it all right at the start. It feels very much like a gimmick to get people back in to boost With their that, player retention. Now that we've like, the, the PTR, I hate to like, put on my tinfoil hat, but yeah, um, I, I don't like these mid-season updates. Okay, I want Bruce, everything right when the season starts. Today, so we're going to try to move briskly through parts where we can. And that includes uh, the so gauntlet. Like, I would have played so much more of the gauntlet if it was today. out on day one. Uh, the first, Charles will be bringing us through All right, a so here's the topics for today. crafting changes you're going to see when season four goes live. I wanna, but I that's, also, that's, I mean, that's fair. But the changes we're talking about today are all going to be on the Eternal Realm and on the Season, season 4. Season 4 date 2025, add pleasure. Today. We're really talking about this massive item update and in, uh, in other, these other updates have been happening kind of in parallel to season development during this time. Yeah. So that's going to be the first. Uh, but that's uh, the thing, like... Uh, the next I want season three to be over. In game content that we've uh, but been implementing and integrating. In my mind, the, uh, it's over on release. April 2nd. 
Uh, and then not whenever Jackson, season four starts. Uh, like once that PTR starts, live class updates, season four, season three is over the, for uh, me. Various mechanics in the game. So there's a lot to look forward to. They do the uh, mid-season stuff to boost numbers? I think so, right too. In. Charles, if you don't mind taking us away. Yeah, absolutely. Let's start talking about uh, yeah, you agree, Mark. So when we think about D4 has been a constant updates, scramble to catch really up after being forced to release half-finished for... Yeah, Wombat. No, I, you're so exactly right. That's why I think delaying is not... Okay, this is important. This is important. quantity of items. We'll let them talk. So one of the persistent points of feedback that we've gotten since we've launched Diablo 4 last year was that a lot of the What's items up, that you find in dungeons and, and throughout the game, uh, you, you end up just sifting through a lot of items, searching through your inventory, and, and reading a lot of lines of text, and ultimately a lot of the items just end up being junk for you. And that was never really, a, it never really felt great. And, and so with this update, that's been our driving, uh, our number one goal is to focus on making sure that when we do give you items, they're high quality items. They're much more likely Yo, to be what's useful up, Jim? for your build. Thank you. Rather than Thank just flooding you, you with endless streams of often junk items. The second uh, goal we have here is that the best items in the game, the the, the really pinnacle ones, help make you, a build for uh, you in the, the new poly. They have a, a journey associated with them. Uh, as, as I said you before, you were out. kind of sifting through your inventory and, and looking for these items. But once you found it, once you found that that you know, perfect item, it, you were pretty much done. It, this is it was good. basically a complete item and it, you're already done with the item, you, you, you've completed it. We think that the game is a lot uh, more engaging when you have a, a bit of a journey, an investment, uh, whether it be in time, crafting materials, and, and you really get to customize and make items your own. The and journey is the slot machine, like Daddy Diesel. For Just me watch. And my build and my character. Yeah, and feel that power progression too. It's Absolutely. Part of the experience. Yeah. Do I yeah. think season three and will the save this third game? Goal that we have here is it's a step in the right direction of surprise and delight in, in the this itemization is good. chase. Th this leads to to moments of you know. Hey, I will I share all my item. opinions. You get really excited about it once, and you're just you know. Um, We've let the Diablo these, guys these infrequent moments. It's not going to be all the time, but do when their you do find it, and you're going to know it. News. You're going to feel it. You're going to be really excited about what just dropped. Because I've seen it all, but you haven't. Um, so I, want, that, I want everyone to be able to a, see it. A number of topics within the itemization update. So the overview here is that we've Clover, got just uh, updates to existing systems, such as uh, base items uh, updates. We've got uh, a few additional updates that are kind of adjacent to the itemization system. Uh, we've got some updates to Codex of Power, which we sort of alluded to earlier, and I think those are going to be some really uh, big wins. Um, we also have some new systems being introduced here. We've got uh, Tempering, which is going to be a new customization system. Greater Affixes, which tempering, help to deal. Uh, provide some chase in the end game. These greater are going to be affixes. some of those powerful items, ones that have You're going to like this. And then once you do reach that end game with, with great gear, you're going to be able to masterwork it to really unlock and its full potential. And and upgrade it to the best possible version that it can be. So let's hop this, into this some is of the all, base Every one of these updates. is actually like a banger. So every this single is one where of those we're topics. We're going to focus on making a smaller pool of affixes that are more relevant and more potent Double tempering. for your specific build. <laughs> just watch so that. Like, as I kind of literally mentioned just earlier wait. in the goal section, a lot of the affixes and, and stats. Okay, that this was a given. Items, they already they said they were going to do this. This isn't news. Right? You had like damage while berserking or damage to close enemies but or this is a huge win hyper specific and and ultimately just were kind of meaningless in, in a lot of ways they, they blended together top right oh sorry really yeah let me do that focus the in this rework we're, we're focusing on reducing that pool of affixes to be uh more general they're more applicable to a lot of builds they're not going to be this hyper specific How conditional and they're going to be more potent so some examples here We've got ranks of a single core skill. Uh, sometimes on gear, you would find uh, items that have, you know, ranks of upheaval, ranks of whirlwind, and ranks of yeah, double Yeah, sorry, I'm a little dizzy after item, that. And almost no build once all three of those things at once. So like you made it so that, too. hey, only one of these can appear. That makes just the subset of items that you find much more likely to be relevant for you. And in terms of like being more potent, we're looking at things like in World Tier 3, only sacred items are going to appear. Um, and then once you get into World Tier 4, only Ancestral, only those most powerful versions of items will appear. This means you're just getting less junk, right? Less Sometimes you get, you know, sacred items in World Tier 4, and that never felt great because, hey, I'm in World Tier 4, I should be getting the best items now. We also did a pass on the affix values to make sure they're a bit Seem punchier. Seem like solid moves, that, you know, yeah. You could feel it when you really equip an item. Uh, this often was just, you know, some numerical tuning. This is good. Uh, in the past, you might get an item that said, you know, plus... 2% critical strike chance, and honestly, the, it, it was hard to ever notice that. 
um, or like plus you know five percent damage or something like that. And, and those really small values uh, were, were just hard to ever notice when you're swapping it, and and it never felt like you got to upgrade your gear. Gosh, was so that really loud? At, at, um, at, at some examples here. Um, Oh, right. So the other update is that we, we are uh, reducing the total number of affixes on gear that, that initially drops. So this is a big deal, items too. Used to drop with four but affixes. But just wait, because it's stats. going somewhere. Uh, that's going down to three. And then rare items, the yellow items, used to have uh, up to four. And now they'll just go down to two. And oh, uh, yeah, so the, the goal here, once again, is, is to really focus on the quality of the, the affixes that appear on the gear rather than just the pure quantity. And this also gives us room Trust me, to, it's, uh, they're going somewhere with this. Some of the later crafting and, and tempering you systems. You, you are going to get more affixes, but the base item is going to start with a little bit less just so we have room to grow. One of the changes that we're making in response to this also, like we know that this, right now- The like, reason that this is good, the items that players are using to trade yes, less find, crappy really affixes, powerful template items, less things you have uh, to look for when the item push, drops. Right? Like a, so like less really looking through your inventory, players. just less so items change, dropping we are, we are in general. Trading to allow whenever you find items, items they're gonna be better. Unique items. Mm. To also be You're spending trading, less uh, time the, uh, killing, or there. less time looking it's at your inventory and more time uh, playing now, the game. one distinction here to keep people on, to let people keep this in mind, is that so these are on huge. either of these items, whether you're going to be tempering or masterworking or anything else later on down the road, uh, these things like enchanting does today, these make these items uh, account bound. So you can't trade them uh, once you get them and after you've, uh, after you've done, some done some crafting on Always them. looking at your inventory, so same. a great job of making sure that the trade economy is still interesting. And that when you're looking for a specific item or an item is dropped for you that a friend can use, it's going to be a lot easier for you to go ahead and hand those things around now. Yeah, absolutely. Did you hear that? <laughs> Trade? Uh, by the way, I'm going to know. Oh, Adam Jackson. Oh, yeah. Adam Jackson snuck in here. Trading yeah. is a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Very important. I'm okay. Yeah. 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 Literally yeah. appeared for trading. Yeah. 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 Appeared for trading. Yeah. Yeah. The trading fairy. You guys here trading? <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Absolutely. That, that's a very important note, and I know a lot of people, uh, you know, might have saw this and thought, "Oh, rare items are now, um, you know, how can I trade?" Uh, but now you can still be trading these legendary items. You can trade find, legendaries useful, now. Um, that is you, so big for, oh, for the also, game. I should say also, uh, Uber just in general, because now you can trade for uh, right, aspects. aspects. Everything that isn't an Uber yeah, unique. everything is not an Uber unique. Yeah, an Uber not, unique. Yeah, those yeah. are the most powerful items, and if you want those, you're gonna Uber have to go uniques. Find you can't yourself. trade. Those are the most powerful items in the game. There, legendaries and right, uniques. So it sounds like they just at, said uh, the uniques part is news to me. Closer example here. So we've got you know kind of on that came up in the feedback sessions with the streamers, and I'm not gonna say which streamer suggested it. You could currently but get they took that feedback and, and they immediately implemented it and they opened up trading to just about damage, every item in the game. To shadow damage so, over time affected enemies. That is a mouthful. This is the kind of stuff uh, that um, hit, I'm encouraged uh, about. Like that kind of... These are the, the really hyper Look at this. Look at the difference in these items. About, really... Uh, I will say items. It takes a while to parse this. Like you just can't. That glance, yes, tell, hey, is this, this looks a little bit yeah, more like a little bit boring. <laughs> uh, the right, the after. Is very, it is. It is taxing. But it, look, especially but when you really fill up your inventory for, with you know, uh, uh, glancing and items, browsing, so sort them all once, just looking just really at the item, the first action. glance, what does it do? This is demons. so much better. So this is in, in so the, much after easier this itemization update in the to after section here, we have decipher got and you know exactly what the item does. It has plus damage. That just applies to all of your damage. It's not, you know, hyper-specific. Trading gear and should be 100% open a, market. A larger bonus if you're hitting vulnerable enemies with this. And I am encouraged that they are getting looser and looser with the trading. No, in fact, because it's this very uh, good wand, uh, uh, is, that they are uh, just has intelligence on it. It is just the main. Stat I think free and open class. trade. Every so ARPG should have a sorcerer, completely free and open. Find intelligence on but items. If I'm okay with like bind on trade and so on. If, if, it, if, it, stat, if it has right? to be. Yes, I'm OK stat, with it. But no more. Are you going to find, oh, I got, you know, intellect yeah. on my barbarian. Very, That's very happy about the trade changes. All right, so let's take a talk about some of the other additional updates that are kind of adjacent to the, the main itemization. This updates. one, I don't um, know how I feel about. <laughs> from monsters that are level 95 it, This higher, is nice. Always going to be because now uh, everything you do item power is going to have 925. Is the it's going to be like max level items, game. like and even overworld really events. Facing, the toughest monsters in the game. But now, like, sure why are you going to do Nightmare Dungeons? Which I'm fine. Like, I don't I don't care about Nightmare Dungeons. But of quality over quantity. I'm okay with skipping Nightmare Dungeons. I guess they're kind of just for XP now. 
care about but this is very good <laughs> so why are we i mean th here, this right? just makes you're everything else in the game now caring about item power because feel you just know that everything i'm getting like is not a waste of time power uh, next, we've done a pass to update. Yeah, our Nightmare gems. Dungeons are repetitive, are so I mean that's simpler. fine. Some of the gems used to have, uh, once again, those very conditional things like <laughs> critical strike damage to vulnerable enemies was like one stat on gems, one gem. This isn't, uh, this so we kind of simplified deal, it. So we now we just have bonus critical strike damage or bonus vulnerable this damage. This is this is a good change uh, too. We've also the gems. added uh, some some updates to have core stats on them. So some of the gems will have strength, some will have dex, and so on. But yeah, and now farming any overworld is going to give uh, you max, max end, item power, which is kind of OP. To really unlock that highest power level. Like, this and is a ton of power creep. Gems that you want, uh, excess gems will now sell for quite a bit more gold. So item re-rolling gold you're, cap you're cost. Really going to waste once you, you have kind of found those best gems. Additionally, we've done a pass removed. on the salvage. Forgotten souls from and whispers salvage, and drops uh, from elites, globally from elites. That is huge. Know, less items than before. This uh, is huge. Once again, we're, we're focusing on you have less time sorting through your inventory. That means and more time I'm back hoping back, more time that I can enemies, uh, now sustain forgotten yeah, souls much less corrupt in this version without future, doing hell tides if I don't want to. If I if I if I do hell tides, I want to get a ton of forgotten souls, right? But I want to not have to farm them just to do like my first couple rolls on an item, you know. Like, uh, I don't want to be forced uh, into hell tides just to play the game. Like, I want to get enough test. to be uh, okay. Been, uh, but if I if I really want to like roll something a million cost times, cost then okay, you go to hell tides for that. But only that. Fishing for that perfect not graphics, it could cost just to play the game at its most base level. Uh, we'll, so, we put a cap on that. Yeah. Uh, we don't think cap re-rolling gold. Forgotten souls coming more. A little high, but it's not going to go to infinity. Good stuff. It's good. These... Taking a pass on the I don't want to give them too much credit because uh, like, like ore and herbs. I feel like some of this stuff of the should have been obvious. Game, and a lot of the ones we had some variety. But of, they're steps uh, like in the right direction. Herbs. You got to acknowledge so, uh, that, that were found in different zones. They, it and, it and is fixed nice now. Flavor there, and the game is better it because really of it. Didn't provide so. much compelling gameplay. So we've consolidated all of like the common uh, crafting materials into just a single type, just uh, just basically common herbs. And then there are still some rare ones to find to find uh, <laughs> to craft. You want to know when the game's ready for your first playthrough? So I mean, it's it's um, th we, these are you know, great changes. System, so we just got a super uh, a, a super cheer. Yeah, my first, this is my like first uh, like YouTube super cheer like mm -hmm. like from Computer Gipper. Cheers, cheers, Lucky. Only still playing because of your builds. Rather give you money instead of the pile of money chopped in Diablo Immortal. Well, thank you. I mean, that's that's so nice of you. Thank you so much. And then the uh, computer gipper is uh, updates to first, the forgotten my first souls, YouTube right? so cheer, my first crafting, YouTube live stream. Uh, material made me very happy. That's that's exciting. Or, or other crafting systems, uh, we're we'll making them back a to, little more uh, accessible. Uh, they'll we'll back to come it. from Whispers of the Dead caches, and they can also rarely drop globally from from any elite in the game. And this is a really uh, cool I'm glad moment. that you're uh, enjoying the build. You kind of have this this jackpot moment. Computer, uh, it, it's pretty rare when you kill elites, but there is. There's a moment where you just get like this explosion of loot, uh, and it you know, you loot uh, explosions. spits out a ton of, okay. of the forgotten souls, or or other loot, or um, other crafting materials. Sounds good and, to and me. That's, that's a really exciting moment uh, when you encounter it in game. It's it's pretty rare, but you know you know you kind of hit the jackpot uh, when when that does happen. And for forgotten souls, that can happen outside of Helltide, right? Oh yeah, that can happen on literally any elite mm, in the game. Yep. That's good. Uh, also, we're looking at uh, updating our uniques. So unique items. You need are, to be able you know, to really build defining, play your way. Flashy, like you shouldn't be forced. Uh, unique necessarily items, right? They are they are very powerful. To do what uh, I call chores. Currently, they are locked. This is actually kind of cool. Three and onward, they're really late game items. And we thought that, Uber uniques uh, can drop from monster level 55 now, your build and they drop at 925 so items. Many power. of our uniques in the game can now. It's going to be super rare that that, that happens. So you can start getting them earlier on in the experience. But I really equate this to like going, Diablo uh, 2, Nightmare, then, you three, Mephisto. You drop like an Oculus. You're playing a sword, something dropping. like that. Like including that's Uber probably uniques, more rare very late game than chase items. than there like dropping an Uber unique at this point with the buff rates. Uh, drop these Uber uniques. It's a pretty small chance. It's very rare. But it's it's one of gimmicky. It'll be rare. Find, maybe uh, you know, maybe it happens maybe to you really one lucky, season you out of five uh, seasons. But yeah, you remember that. You'll remember that play. Think that'd be Yeah, you remember it. Yeah, you remember. Of course, they'll drop. Oh, I was gonna say, kind of going back to our goals of itemization update in general. They increase the drop rate of Uber uniques and the last season. So they, they do actually drop. Is that even early on in the game, you can get the. I am live on YouTube as well. Very, very First YouTube yeah, stream. Not really common, but it's 
possible. Maybe the some the YouTube is coming that you're going to explain I mean, is kind of going along that vein, right? In Absolutely. honor of yeah. the, uh, uh, we want you to have the, the chance to, to really. We're going to open this today. Have that high roll moment. That really so we got this from you YouTube. Awesome loop. It's like long overdue, right? We uh, try a YouTube so that, stream. That covers the uh, additional updates. Uh, we've got uh, to talk about the. Remember, Meff dropping me an SOJ right, would so be nice. The power is a system that has been in the game. You can drop for SOJ before launch. that, I think. And, Nightmare Andy. Yeah. Uh, we we're making a big update here where now all Take a legendary year to get aspects in the game will start appearing. I guess in the they expedited it for me. Every single one. This is good. Was just Pay attention. Subset. Um, and I believe we even have some codex some of power that we can talk and uh, go through an example of what this looks like. Yeah, this is actually here. massive uh, for your inventory. We actually have Ruben, AK Thank you guys. Thank you for the congratulations. Now, Thank you. Now, and everyone from YouTube uh, uh, and Twitch. I mean, you guys now, all made yeah, this well, happen. So it's actually through, like a congratulations to all of us, be, not 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 me. Driving through all our little demos. I just make today, videos so. of things I think awesome. are cool. Yeah, so you can see you guys in our inventory really... right now, we've got Edge Master's Siege Bow. Watch, watch, and this watch. has a little icon on it in the upper right uh, in your inventory there. And that indicates I'll go over it after. that if you salvage this legendary, it will upgrade an aspect in the Codex of Power when you salvage it. That's right. So you no longer need to go to the Occultist to extract aspects in Correct. any way. Because aspect crystals are no longer a thing in this new version of the Codex mm -hmm. of Power. Yeah. Aspect crystals are gone. No more it's aspect when crystals. salvage the legendary, it will upgrade it. So we salvage it. We can see Boom. that Edge Master's aspect has been upgraded in the Codex of Power. So we go to our Codex of Power and let's go take a look. Um, so we've got Edge Master's Aspect here uh, that skills deal up this to is so good. increased damage based on your so available good. resource when cast. This uh, solves so all the, of the, my stash uh, problems. Kind of my, I have the one that five characters solved. on the seasonal uh, realm all filled with here. just uh, aspects in -game it was that I might use one day. On two-handed bow and that, that doubles the range. This alone, um, but you can see it's not a minimum. Like role. I don't need right now, unlimited on, stash on, tabs uh, now. Like I, I can live with the stash tabs that we have now because of this one change. Better aspect crystal. Yeah. Uh, the codex is kind of relevant. Now the codex will continue being relevant because every time you find a higher role, again, it's going to upgrade. Should have already been in the game. Continually re-imprint. But this we're happy power that to any gear it's that here now. Going forward, that's right. That's so that's the important part. Ten percent roll, you know, on mm -hmm. something else. Then that is now going to. You can go ahead and salvage that item down. That's going to, like, that ten yes. percent version is now going to replace the six percent version. Absolutely that's huge. That's version, w so win whatever. Is like, as you yeah, what's up, Sunny Lee? Versions of these aspects, they replace like, the that older ones. Now, is another big you, one. You decide you want like, to these are good power, changes. That's going to be the version that you get from that point forward. Yeah. Once so you get a max roll aspect, the first time, you never have to pick up another one. Like you're done. You're done. You have that forever. You get a perfect aspect. That's it. However, it's over. The uh, the ranks of legendaries. <laughs> it feels so good to, to just say out loud. These legendaries in World <laughs> like Tiers literally. One two, when you're just starting out your journey, we it's have the bane uh, of my existence. So a lot of legendaries used to say, hypothetically, if a, if a legendary rolled between twenty percent and thirty percent, uh, now we've extended that range from twenty to thirty-five percent. Mm. But those like thirty to thirty-five percent, the highest That's range, fine. the most powerful versions, those are only going to be accessible. So in World you Tier can 4 trade them too in the later game. So this does give you a bit more progression. So we'll open this on it stream. Early, I haven't opened it yet. Upgrade it, but then you're going to find even better versions as you progress through the World Tiers. And uh, if, if we actually if we we'll hang go it up back to the build really quickly because yeah. uh, and uh, <laughs> Ruben, if you can <laughs> bring up that codex again. Of power, Really quickly. Show the UI uh, yeah, a little bit here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because one one big thing is like there. Uh, I know we so much stash really space. Quickly, but there so are, much stash uh, filters, space. Filters, ways of searching through everything, mm -hmm. which is really nice. And then of course on the icons as well. I think people are probably seeing these numbers associated. I know. Yeah. Uh, it's it's. You don't uh, have to hold on to it, waiting for the perfect weapon. Yeah, you, and you can just you apply it every time like, now, hey, right? That's another thing. You only have to find it once. Fog right there, you don't have to think. Showcasing, hey, should I apply my perfect aspect to this item? I might get a better one. Great point. Not your friend, guy. Now you just throw it on. Like I got it. I'm good. I really love that gold border to really indicate that hey, you found the best version. You've kind of completed this, and I can make more than one character. You kind of cheat on it, right? Things that only have one rank. Holy crap. Uh, like, so I, wait, I could play a different class. Yeah, that's an example of one that you could I literally up. never <laughs> even <laughs> thought of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I can literally play another now, class. Uh, I couldn't play another class because I had to fill up all my characters uh, with my rogue gear, part. my rogue aspects. Um, and, and I couldn't even comprehend. I tried in, in, in the, the launch of the game to play a necromancer, and I couldn't because I literally didn't have room. I can play another class besides rogue. 
Yeah, I love part, Rogue. The, these have the but it would be power, nice to be able to play another class. To make them like really my only other option was buy another copy fun. of the game. And I, I'm sure there's people asking specifically about, hey, is this a seasonal thing? Is this an eternal thing? Um, I, this like, is everywhere yes. forever. It's just so good. This is the like, new world. This is the this new is, world. This, this is, is good. All the updates we're talking about today, Correct. once again, are for the Eternal Realm. And Should have been at launch, season, but it's good. Seasonal updates. It is good that it's here now. They're coming with season four, but they are applying to the whole game. Yeah. Yeah. Right. This and, was and, and probably the, power with the biggest quality of life thing will, that I would have wanted. Change like every single time. It does the game. Either the, either yeah. this yeah. or yeah. unlimited yeah. stash yeah. ads, but yeah. I like yeah. this yeah. more yeah. because then yeah. I don't yeah. have to keep yeah. finding yeah. the the yeah. actual yeah. aspects. Yeah. Eternally, of course. Yeah. The best thing I've seen them implement. Yeah, just just keep watching. I haven't even gotten to like the master working temporary. But there's also new systems coming. We're not done with new stuff. That was updates to existing things, but we have got a lot of new stuff. So let's talk about temporary. Tempering. tempering is a new crafting You'll recognize system this. that will allow you to add really cool new affixes to your items. And so I really just want to highlight that, that this is not just taking those, those old really conditional um, nitty gritty aspects uh, or affixes. This, is, this also includes a lot of really new exciting affixes as well that we'll, we'll showcase a bit later. Things like a uh, chance to cast bonus projectiles. Talk about it's a uh, journey. Increased effect size uh, of your skills and, and other ways yeah. of talking directly to you, individual skills. And it's not. Uh, a lot of this lives in tempering. And so this way you can really customize your character. Uh, you Customizing know, your, build and your character, using, your skills. And you want to play. As well through tempering. So you might be asking, well, how almost do we a pseudo expansion uh, of the skill got, uh, tree. Tempering manuals through tempering, so are, and also uh, items, you know uh, through your that items. Are drop well. from most content in the game. This isn't something you need to go target farm. You're just going to find these as you're playing, and these manuals are going to be Watch. a list of possible affixes that are kind of themed to individual builds. So if you are a uh, bone necro, for instance, you know the the. Um, app, the manual for Bone Necro might have you know, things specifically to Bone Spear and Bone Splinters and Bone <clears throat> Spirit. Uh, when you do the tempering, uh, which is done at the blacksmith, it will attach a random one of the affixes from that manual onto the item that you're tempering. I think they'll uh, show an example. If you don't example. get the exact one that you want or you don't get the roll that you want, you can reroll these affixes up to the item's tempering durability. Now this is tempering durability. Example, so Does this sound familiar to anyone? You can just, uh, or yeah, let's show people through, what it looks right? like. Um, yeah, so here is uh, some screenshot examples Can't put my of finger the on actual it. recipes that hmm. appear. So on the left, we've got uh, the manual of natural yeah. motion. This is a generic recipe that but hey. uh, really applies to any class. It's got a variety of movements. We're going to knock them for it? it. So you've got, if it's uh, good, you know, you might do we, just if, do we like it? Gear. I don't care if they steal something from another game. Only after you kill an elite. Um, I couldn't care less. We, if we I like it, I want it in the game that I play. Or give you mobility like, come on. Skill yeah, what's up, McCall? We've tagged a lot of skills in the game with mobility yeah. tag when, you know, things like teleport or charge. Yeah, they twisted it. They twisted it um, a little. And then on the right, we've got one that is more specific to necromancers because this is the, the bone necro one that I mentioned before. So we've got a chance for bone splinter projectiles to cast twice. Chance for bone spear projectiles. These are a little uh, increase the size of your bone spear half explosion, baked. I want to say, or increase the duration um, of your bone like storm. Like the, the so skill if you're a changes. Bone necro, one of these is probably going to be pretty relevant to you, and but it'll be really. Uh, it's a, a step cool in the right direction. I hope they do some more skills. cool stuff with this. Uh, so like they seem very basic. The UI. Uh, but so I think the they could got, do you know, a lot cool, like a lot cooler things. I think with like the actual skill changes that you get. And, from and so it's got, the, you know, the, the, the relatively simpler as, uh, affixes. Yeah. It's got just max life, damage, and critical strike chance. And we, we go to the blacksmith, we put it into the into the menu here, and we can see that there are kind of six categories. Take an existing uh, idea and tweak it. Them yeah. being highlighted. I'm cool with it. Uh, these categories are the categories of recipes. So each <laughs> so recipe here. corresponds to one of these categories. I'm a call, but I was looking for and, moderators. Um, on amulets, you can put anything. You said you're going to be in meetings all day. Category. So that's why you know offensive. We need YouTube defensive, moderators. Utility, mobility, First YouTube stream. How's the YouTube here? stream going? How are and, you guys? Uh, once we go How's through everyone? this, uh, we we can do this twice. Thank you so much for stopping um, because, by today. Uh, most items can only be we've got uh, a lot in store. Once you can get just one affix on them, but ancestral. Oh, it's gonna items, be a day. Really late game. World Tier 4 right. items can be tempered twice watch. from two separate categories. So you can't put, say, two defensive ones on there. This You're is going good. to uh, diversify. And in this case, we've got charge cooldown reduction added on the right. And we've also got some bonus damage while berserking. So we've got an offensive one here. And then we've got um, a utility one that, that gives us the, the cooldown reduction. Uh, do we have a, 
a, a live example of this of going through this actual flow, so we can kind of show you what what this ends up looking like. Yep. Once again, yep. No, right look, there. Look. <laughs> look. Points. Lock points in the blacksmith. Yes. yes. <laughs> so in here we've got uh, you know our, our bow of uh, branching. You're the best. Molly. Thank you so you much for the here. road guide. So, so tai Chi weapon, Studio. Thank you so much. Uh, ones from the offensive category. Thanks for hanging out so on YouTube. All the examples. You know we've got five different recipes that we've unlocked here, YouTube. depending on how we want to build our characters. So if we want to do say marksman skills. Uh, to put on snuck there. away we for lunch. Well, thanks for stopping finesse. by, McCall. And this will give us either bonus marksman damage. Um, uh, why don't we just temper it and see see what it looks like? So we get this this flashy animation this cool. that comes in, and we get I haven't to see, seen this. Uh, hey, we added twenty nine percent marksman damage. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> point nine, yeah. yeah, that's awesome. So not um, scripted. Is this live? Me. Definitely not scripted. So yeah, uh, actually no. it wasn't. It actually <laughs> was. <laughs> this is wait. This is really this is really live. Yeah, I haven't seen this before. Yeah. Uh, one thing I want to call out also while we're looking at this. That's actually that, like, really so cool because some of the feedback we gave them season, was like, can you show this us this PTR PTR stuff in game? Like, right this is, uh, when this they presented to us, PTR it was slideshows and they didn't even look as good as this. It was literally like PowerPoint. In the middle of being polished now. Just PowerPoint presentation. But this is great. I'm glad that they're actually giving live examples. Not quite like what I expect. There's like, like, through my bugs That's cool. That's kind of the nature of the PTR experience. We want you to report those, like Adam called out. Bit yeah. earlier and that, get your feedback on the experience. Yeah, but. that that that's that's actually a, a really good reminder because I think a lot of people have an experience. It's PTR, random, especially if you're like kind of new to Diablo and you do jump. Yeah, in. PTRs will have bugs. It's random <laughs> and you can no, break no, your item with yeah. temper. So, so there will be bugs, pol um, polish things that won't be. I suggested so to them yes, a way on all those things so that we can actually, at a greater cost uh, to get a little bit more of a targeted so Ruben, temper. Ruben, you know, point out was like when say it costs twice as much. Uh, so or got say it costs the, uh, marksman three times as much, but you have twice the, the chance of getting the assets yeah. that you want, something like that. But they wanted that, tempering you know, to be very we're random. On, we're aware of and, and going to polish up because yeah. that's the nature but of I think of it like eagle-eyed among the viewers. Yes. yes. Yeah. This is a thing. What's the system in Path of Exile where you can use like twelve hundred links and guarantee a sixth link, right? Instead of randomly doing it, and it would cost you maybe a thousand on average, something like that a little bit what is um, that so called? You can see is it just is crafting like is, is that just called crafting one out of two esoteric you were sure the crafting item, bench you can yeah like bench crafting uh, right from two different categories so, so like be able to get put bench one tempering one versus tempering something uh, like there's this something like that where you can remove the randomness so for a greater how price many times you can i think that they need something like that uh, the first but I'm, I'm really I'm encouraged not, uh, by this so far. Like, they'll they'll fix it. They'll iron it out in, in, the have, in the uh, in the future state. Where but it, it did consume it. But ultimately, this is going to be the number. Yeah, of times you can re -roll. Yeah, you're, you're just one bang the six link. Yeah, you could always do that too. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, it's basically just a way of guaranteeing, like removing the RNG factor. But to make sure that we can at, a, at a higher really cost, the way right? The that, that's works. all it is. Um, um, so we've attached an offensive. Uh, look at these items. Don't Let's they look a little different too? Like ones that we can attach on. Uh, so I don't know if you guys can even see that, my mouse. Uh, uh, uh oh, not great. Uh, uh, well, yeah. live build. It crashed. Yeah, live build indeed. It's proof um, that it's live. Well, so we can talk through what what would have happened there. Yeah. Right, so when you would uh, attach the the weapon category, yeah, you can't you can't knock them for not the more, not giving a live uh, uh, more interesting, right? the bonus not giving a live the presentation. Bonus size. Yeah, that was the, um, yeah, the weapon category that had a chance to create different like multiple bone splinters. Or yes, that's why we have a PTR. Yeah, yeah that's it in the weapon category. So so there we would attach one of those. You know, maybe we'd get a they're rolling with for it. Rapid fire projectiles to fire an extra time, uh, and then when we do that. You know, maybe, oh, we actually want to play a penetrating shot build, right? Or maybe rapid fire is not that great. We could consume one of the tempering durabilities to re-roll that and try to get that, that bonus rapid fire projectile ones that we want. At least people now believe it's live. Uh, but yeah, I, I know we're, we're, we're getting the build back up here and everything, but there's, there's yeah. a lot of really you snooping cool in their files, Adam Joe. Yeah, the tempering system. Like, oh, I know, yeah. Send me a like screenshot. I've been playing a lot of season four, uh, like on uh, our, our dev build, and I'm playing a barbarian right now. And I've been playing a lot with with uh, with dust devils, which I know we'll sure. talk maybe a little bit more well, about. We're gonna later. talk about clipped it 100%. But there's, uh, but there's like opportunities to like spawn, like instead of spawning one dust devil, you'll spawn uh, MV dust McFly devil, subscribed size. with a, a prime. A I'm really not getting notifications like, really in this view, so I apologize for that. On other uh, like play styles, mm -hmm. I think it's really fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grievance as well. The goal of tempering is customization 
and really cool new ways of building your I character. I apologize. That's not just plus damage. There is still some bonus damage, as as you still need to in order to you know actually do damage. But there's a lot of ways you can customize your skills and and make it really your. Oh, uh, you're welcome. Now, right MD now, uh, you can temper legendary items. Correct. Sorry and, about uh, that. and and yeah. rare, uh, and rare items. Um, you uh, you can't. I set the scene up pretty items. quickly. Correct. Yeah. Unique items. What kind of what you see is what you get. Mm. Right. They they drop still with the four affixes for the most part. Um, you, those are going to be unchanged. You won't be able to temper onto them. You need to still get four yeah. with tempering, right? And then we we show the tempering durability, yep. you know, as part of and we're, we're, but can't know, temper rules in this case. So the idea here is that like when which the means has, uh, that you know, uniques are weaker. The, the you got, you <laughs> uniques literally got options. nerfed at the end of that process. You simply by can't temper any longer on that item. There's not a way to reset that item back this. down. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, because now you can have five uh, aspects on a legendary, like trying to to have only four on a unique in general. It's making it so it's a little bit easier, and also ensuring, like you know, uh, it's easier for you to reach those 925. But there's another change coming. Really deeply engage in features like this. Is you want to make it a little bit easier for you to go find some of those really good baseline. I don't think Diablo will be good till season six, of, seven, or eight, as maybe. As to it having it be like, I need to find, like, seven. If you temper, is it a count bound? Yes. Find a max full cooldown reduction um, on it, right? Like it's. It, we're in a different They're place doing now. another PT. Well, in addition actually, to I'll, I'll let, them, uh, the, uh, the let them talk about the plans well. for the future seasons. It, but it, it seems like big changes being a lot easier to, to have until the game is in a good state when are, are going to be the norm. But also so, that uh, if you're playing with friends, there's opportunities. I think season four is a big step in the right direction. Yeah, I think you make a really good point about finding really strong I think maybe season six to build off of. And I think that goes would be a solid target for like... Uh, so greater affixes. These developers have done what they want to do with the game, and the it's, it's 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 going to be in one of its best of forms. The normal affixes. So because uh, I, I do think some things are still missing from this, but again, so let's say good step a in the right direction. Might come between also, like I'm partial to the number six of a stat. If it rolls greater, then you actually get a hundred and fifty. This is cool. Instead, okay, greater affixes. Sound familiar? Comes in at that hundred and fifty mark. Sound from the, I guess, um, so when really I first heard about this, I thought the of they're gonna be tier 7 affixes in Last Epoch, but have a little, then uh, people told me like primals in Diablo 3. Right away, but see, the thing know, with primals hey, in Diablo 3 is that everything on the item was like 1.5 times, right? But this is last, But so I think this is more like Last Epoch's tier 7 affixes, which is cool. The, and one other note, yeah. these, as I mentioned, they're late game. They only I like this. On ancestral legendary items and ancestral Yeah, exalted items. Are dropping yeah, the, the, in the or T6, T7, exalted. I think we can right. zoom in on the uh, the, the top yeah. one here where we can see we've got a little, um, like some Roman numerals at the end of it, uh, two. That indicates that this pair of gloves has two greater <laughs> it was on it. so small. And when we actually go and pick it up, we can take a look at Make the Make this more of obvious. The, of the item itself. And we can see the intelligence here is highlighted. And I can't so type. I'm, I'm on cooldown. Uh, and these are these roll up at the max. Please roll. make that more obvious. It's kind of so between, small. Um, you know, it's a, like literally invisible colored. Is, is a, um, this is almost you know, a loot filter? Yeah, I mean, it is It is You've good. Got, say, 74 dexterity, I can't type. I'm on cooldown. But... 70 and 84. But this is right, cool, right? This is cool. Dexterity. Like, I, I thought that this was really cool. And yeah, it's last epoch. Like, 84. Same with the critical strike. It is literally ball. last so epoch. The dagger on the exalted right, items. That's a really good one. I mean, not only do you like get he got banned, fixes, you also max roll. Yeah, I got timed out. In between, that is a great base item. How do I tell the difference? You can uh, tell they the see they have the red glow and. Uh, think we've got uh, the next topic. Their talk max roll. Master working. It Masterworking says there's a roll, a but they always roll the max. System that we're going to use to Masterworking, the, the, so the last crafting. Kind of find this is also going to look item. familiar. Uh, maybe it has some greater I didn't get banned. I'm just joking. Um, and then you've tempered on the affixes that you want. Yes, you, know, you can hey, get you multiple. The, you can get up to three out of three. That are yes. To your build that you've attached it's rare, to. but you can get up to now three out of three. you're really pushing into the late game content. It's Watch time this. to start Masterworking. And Masterworking has 12 ranks. Uh, where you can upgrade the current affixes on your gear. So this isn't going to change so any of the affixes like um, enchanting or like tempering does. This is just going to take the current ones and then upgrade them through 12 ranks. This is kind of like the old gear upgrade, right? Similar, yeah. yes. However, both masterworking <laughs> and tempering are replacing the old gear upgrade system. Uh, 
that the previous system where you just kind of upgraded the so item. So no more upgrading your item four up times, it. five times, uh, whatever. These two systems replace that, and now you're going to be able to customize them and then master them. This them is different. This is a bit different. On the back Absolutely. end of this as well, after these uh, these things are done, yeah, yeah. to item upgrade, yeah. Absolutely. Um, so the the twelve ranks of mashed working, uh, as opposed to the this five is kind of like uh, most of the ranks are going to increase all of your affixes on the gear it. by a small amount. But then every four ranks, so I just like want a game that I that I, I enjoy playing all the time, and and this is amount. like a huge one. So here's an example. Uh, the ring on the left. This is a view is for ants. Can you guys see over on you YouTube? Right up there by the everyone on YouTube power. doing it's okay. Working two out of twelve. Uh, let's focus up, in on, on like the the ma maximum. Is it, is life it coming through? Uh, are you on your phone? Uh, so on the left at rank two, you see we've got 880 bonus maximum life, and so we take it, uh, we master work it up to rank three, and then that will upgrade that to. There's a lot of power creep. Maximum life, so a little bit of an improvement, but then once we hit rank four, we actually get a much larger increase in maximum life. It goes from 920 all the way up to 1,120 while the other affixes on the gear stay static because they didn't roll randomly because uh, we're only hitting one. Um, to Joe's point earlier about we still have some, some in development, uh, this is in development content, it's not final, as the watermark says, um, the tempered affixes at the bottom, the golem active cooldown reduction and the bone critical strike damage, those also would be being upgraded and are eligible to have this, uh, this larger bonus. Uh, but in this particular screenshot example, those numbers didn't change, but they will change in the final, and there's yeah, a those chance. also get affected, yeah. Yeah, they, they, they will be included just like all of the rest of them. Uh, but yeah, so I, as you go through it, you're going to get kind of three of these, uh, these effects uh, at rank 4, 8, and 12, and they can all go on the same one. Uh, so if you get really, really lucky and you really needed a lot of maximum life, you know, you might get uh, just a ton of maximum life every time that, that increases. Or it could be... End game is coming. Boxes. You could get... Tons Closer. of cooldown reduction, if that's the kind of build that you're They're, looking for. Yeah, this isn't just itemization. And once you fully uh, master they got, item, you, the, the, uh, if it didn't really pan I don't know if the they talked about it. To, the, End the game is coming too. Go They're, They're going to go over that. You are able to reset it and try it again, but it, you will kind of lose all the materials that you've invested into it. So you'll but see. You can try that a lot of power it creep. completely um, lock you out of it. Right, mm. so once you've got like a really great yeah. pair of gloves or whatever that you've been, you've been, you've, you've tempered at this point, you've mm -hmm. enchanted to get exactly the affix you wanted on, off it, maybe you, you got some greater affixes on it in the first place when you started, uh, then you take that item into, assuming you got through all that process, it, you can take it into the master working feature and then <laughs> I you can... can I, I've that. shared, yeah, I know yeah, get the, option to get to, the majority of what they're sharing, exactly I know. The you're looking for. They've yeah. made and, some and changes based you, on our feedback that, right, and they're open to more feedback. So strike damage and then you hit um, all three times on it, super upgraded. They may have changed some stuff, uh, that's gonna be like, like trading uniques, that's new. I didn't know that. I only asked them to trade legendaries. You really needed to hit the one And they said you could trade uniques. Not uber uniques, but you could trade uniques too. Is gonna be very memorable when you get all that coming together. That's cool. I think we've got an example here to really. Uh, but I do know all most of the stuff that's coming. So on before, this was that boned one restoration that we talked about uh, right admittedly. at the beginning. We talked about paring down the affix list to just more simple intelligence, damage, and vulnerable damage. And on the right, we can see it after it has been tempered. So we've got bone spear or bone spirit damage. We've got chance for our bone splinter projectiles to cast twice. And then we can see uh, intelligence has been highlighted in blue. That means it's been it's had one of the upgrades from master working, and the damage stat on here has been upgraded twice. That's why it's in yellow. Uh, when we got up to master working twelve, and you can see how I we, like the Uber Unix are account bound. Uh, this item yeah, I think it's fine. Plus and, and they're on, gonna. So here, once you got it, they haven't all talked about it yet. Twelve. This is really kind of the pinnacle of what items can. I think be they already they said that Uber Unix can board. drop earlier in the game. So what they want to highlight there, here. There's going to be a know, couple more changes too. Com the total depth of what an item can do and the complexity, you know, you can still make an item do a lot of different things, but on that before side, you know, when you're looking for items that are dropping, that's all that you're going to parse through over there. It's just like three affixes, did I get the ones I want? And you can just do that very quickly uh, and parse through a lot of items that way, but you're going to be slowly, you know, introducing that complexity over Did they say yellow was, is that rank eight? So you're it turns yellow, rank four is blue, blue, I believe. Absolutely. In, in terms of like lucking out on this, I think it's 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 fun to call out like it is basically nine five percent upgrades to your affixes during the regular master working process. Yeah. Blue, yellow, red, or green. I'm not sure what the highest one looks like. Actually, upgrades to the uh, to one of those. It's a double affixes. upgrade, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you're very very fortunate and you manage to triple up on a, a, a particular stat, what color uh, is it? That's a 
you can do the math. It's a tremendous, tremendous upgrade. Yeah, I mean, they're overall. exponentially yeah. like any greater. If you go hard into one Apex, you can go really <laughs> yeah. hard into one Apex. You can go one really hard on CDR in this world, right? I'm like, terrified. It's, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You can go hard into CDR. Also, it seemed like you can't really brick from masters. Or both cool and flash. Or both bonus projectiles. I know yeah. some yeah. stuff. It's going to be really sweet. Yep. It's bone spears everywhere. Yes. Absolutely. Um, but, of course, you might be asking, okay, new items are great. Well, what am I going to do with all of these new items? Before we even bridge to me, okay, this <laughs> yeah. is a really good okay. bridge. So two things I want to call we'll out. One, it. masterworking works on unique items. Correct. Yes. So the, you know some of those really, really cool You can masterwork unique, unique items. items. The power of the, uh, of the unique item. But right. A lot of like the really specific uh, unique items. Including. Items, those all benefit from the masterworking process. Super well, uniques. Which are really significant, right? Uh, so I think that there's like there's something really, really fun there. Uh, also, uh, you can make sure that uh, like when some of these unique items are dropping, they also can have greater affixes attached. And Uber Uniques so can have greater affixes. Talking about like that is uh, and Uniques cheap. and greater like, Uniques now, like, can have you greater get extra, affixes. Fifty like, percent value on top of that. Yeah. So like you get fifty percent uh, value on top of unique item affix, and then on top this of is that, you like it, it gets it can get really, exponential. Really so there's, really, there's a good chase in power creep. In Mm -hmm. like even allowing for like when we talk about else, something like that like lots of really exciting stuff for players to play. like that yeah and uh, the other thing i, I i've seen is a little bit of this in chat as well as like a lot of people are going like hey when when are we actually able to experience this ptr uh, ptr <laughs> well first ptr and also at the same time this is something that uh, does start immediately with season four when yeah. it begins yes. this is all all the item is is that plus all 12 ranks on shaco changes will start yeah. with the start well of which stat four. would you want plus 12 ranks on like, they're going like well we we had hurt gauntlet in the past and then gauntlet actually life? started mid-season uh the itemization because you can't you can't actually increase the will start legend the, the uh, unique right affix you can't you can't get 14, the plus skills it doesn't work on the plus skills it so it would only work on the uh unless i'm mistaken it only works on the affixes not the aspect you go first all right well i clarify something because i know it's gonna be a lot of questions that people have on greater affixes yes the one thing i really don't like about d4 is that you have to go grinding three different areas multiple times to be able to have a chance to fight the boss that you need drops that's the exciting moment that we're targeting uh, enchant Kyle you Crespo, exist. you can still enchant that like is being addressed that slightly. Uh, you cannot enchant into a later affix. later in this you in the stream. You can enchant out of a greater affix. So if you choose to, if you've got like a one greater affix item, you can yes. enchant it, that it, greater it, affix. Just just else, wait, just watch. But it won't change to another greater. Give them give them time. Into a greater. It's all They're getting into it. Monsters, I think I think it would be good. Really we have to have a critical discussion after it's all over, and we we have all the information and kind of what we're going for. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Focusing on the drop, the ex moment the drop of excitement. I, I totally get what you're saying. For there. All right, yep. and then one thing I want to call it as well that we did talk about already. And I agree. There are That's other, not, there's not a lot of other changes that we fun. haven't actually discussed here that you'll see <laughs> when you get to play in the PTR. Uh, but one of them I think is really cool is we actually add a bunch of other new baseline rare affixes that can appear on items yeah. that like players haven't seen before. Yes. You know, yeah. So there's, a, as an example of a few of these, uh, we have like Fury per second. You know, can, I can oh, appear awesome. on items, yeah. which is very, very exciting and very interesting for my for my barbarian friends. Doing a template yeah. for the people. Like, like there's, there's what do you a mean template? Ones, like, like life per hit. You know, is now uh, mm -hmm. something that players can find. As like, the um, like, are there any? Yeah, the, the, like a summary. Or kind of cool, or and also ones that that are are cool and powerful that appear in different slots. So I am trying to take screenshots of all of the of some sort. The slides. Uh, we've extended that so a lot of weapons can now have resource cost reduction. They can have bonus attack speed and other things that increase your output through not just saying damage, damage. to a certain yeah. uh, way. Yeah. More interesting ways of increasing uh, your output. Yeah, very cool. Uh, because Three after the stream, that's just the bounce call. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm terrified of it. It's so um, low, but yeah, yeah it's gonna it be is really cool. Having bonus projectiles. I think a lot of people are going to be here in this stream. And then you master bonus projectiles. And, and it gets, I want to recap everything and get feedback from everyone. I want to talk about some end game stuff that's coming to the game. So I'm, I'm actually I'm I'm trying to maybe summarize. Maybe leave that for the end. Maybe do a video out of it. Stream itself, right, right before we go into Q and A. Is there? A, uh, I'm going to ask production here. I'm going to pivot them. Yes, blunted that jester. To, to that that is exactly. Is coming. Oh, end to game. Me next. Yeah, you next. I'm, I'm pivoting. Oh, wait. A shrug. So like, I think I think so. This yeah. is yeah. Adam Jackson. That's yeah. balance. We'll go the character end game balance stuff here. Um, because we we do have a lot of uh, uh, additional things that we still need to talk about. That even pair with this itemization, yeah. uh, these itemization changes. But we'll we'll jump into class changes really quickly. Sure, we'll we can go to me next. So it's yeah. fine. Do it. <laughs> Take us away, Adam. All right, so uh, are we ready to go? Yeah, okay. 
So we've got kind of three big goals for class updates. We've got a lot going on. Uh, I'm going to try and breeze through a little quick in the interest of time. The first one is going through a very high volume of meaningful class updates. And what I mean by meaningful is, you know, not just moving numbers up and down on things that exist, but kind of either updating systems of how things interact at a systemic level or adding things that are, are really, really powerful and are actually going to move the needle and, and change how you interact with the class or the skill or the legendary or whatever we're changing. <clears throat> Next one is making flat damage effects more viable. So by flat damage, I'm talking about things like dust devils, um, mm -hmm. earthquakes, good. dancing bolts, <laughs> all these things. I've been, you know, I talked a few campfire chats ago about how I wanted to make these things like a lot more viable and scale better, and uh, we're going to be making good on that in season four. I'm excited. We'll go into more some details, but yeah, that's one of the big things that's changing this season. And last but not least, opening up designs to be more generally useful. So kind of similar to item affixes, how you know you've got these like multi-conditional things. We're going through classes across the board and going and looking for ways that we can open up things. You know, so you're gonna find that things that were a little more restrictive, we're gonna try and make interact with more different pieces. So you know, something may have only talked to core skills, now it can be any skill, things like that. Where we're trying to make things less conditional so that you can mix and match things uh, a lot more often. So, yeah, in addition to those three things, and those are our goals. Oh, thank you, King I'm also going to talk a little bit today about PTR balance and hardcore updates. And a uh, little uh, you know, PSA, everything that you see here right now, the tuning is still in flux. We're going through the balancing process right now of these things. So any exact numbers that you see Ooh, updates, hardcore uh, updates is very much subject to change, not only before yes. PTR, but of course, one of our goals for you playing very PTR good is change coming to soon. Balance because everything is going to be changing. So uh, that, that, yeah, that you'll hear here. To change, but that's kind I've of been very right vocal here. about this one. You will... So first, let's oh, talk wait. about uniques. Uh, so okay. in season four, you're going to be getting double the normal amount this. of uniques added to the game. Uh, normally, every class gets one. Every class is going to be getting two this time. So again, more content. Uh, we're also adding a new uber unique here, uh, Tyrael's Might. Uh, this is a defensive Yo, oriented unique. Oh, Tyrael's uh, Might, the return. Piece. You can see the stats there. Uh, lots of resistance oriented things and damage reduction. Just by the way, in this new world, damage reduction is going to be much harder to come by. So it's actually a lot more special Why is it than not it blue? here. And the special power of this is that when you're at maximum life, so when you have like you know, the entire blue. life bar full, yeah, no, uh, you're going to be not shooting blue. out projectiles very similar to the artillery shrine. So you can see here kind of in action, you can see that sometimes he's attacking and it's not going off. And then as he heals up, you get those uh, bolts that's hitting enemies. It's really, really flashy and cool. So yeah, class updates. Like I mentioned before, we're really looking kind of to curious about that one. These. Um, we're, we are still going to be having a number of changes, quite a few of just things going up and down for tuning. Um, but we're also looking at updating some systems and designs. And I'm going to give you some examples. Now, everything I talk about here today, I'm giving you a small snippet of the things that we're doing, like one or two examples per class. But when you get the patch notes, you're going to see it's like a giant wall. There's, there's a lot of stuff that we're doing everywhere. It's a slice of the overall pie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, some examples here. Uh, skill tag updates. So, we're not only doing this on the Sorceress, but on other classes as well, but th this is the one the example I want to give. Um, one of the pain points that Sorceress has always had is that they have kind of core skills and then mastery skills. Mastery skills are things like Firewall, I don't know a ton uh, about the Sorceress. Like that. But... And the mastery skills, you know, we're, we're always kind of second class to the core skills because we had a lot of things that scaled core skill damage, but not mastery skill damage. So, we've updated our skill tags and, and kind of change things around so that they make more sense. So you're going to see more skill tags added to things across the board. And the example here is that mastery skills will also just have the, score, the core skill tag. They'll be considered both mastery and core skill. So all your core skill damage bonuses, interactions, all that stuff will just work now. Uh, oh, did uh, you have something? Yeah, just, uh, we also talked about like mobility skill tag added yes. to a lot of skills as well, mm -hmm. and how that interacts with the tempering system. You have ways of getting mobility skill cooldown reduction that ties into the same yeah, concept. So, yeah, we're actually adding the mobility skill tag to all things across all classes that have mobility attached to them, mm -hmm. so then they can interact with the itemization system, yeah. and you'll have these things working in tandem together. That's a good point. Yeah, so now some other examples. Frozen Orb on the Sorceress is getting a lot of love. Seemed um, like a good Before, change. when you cast it, it would go an exact set distance and then blow up, but now it's going to go exactly where you point it at what do you think? with your cursor. Sork mains, um, are so, these you know, good you're not changes? Your life if you run into like a suppressor elite, for example, you can actually make it fire point blank or all the way across the screen. And we'll actually be showing some video of that as well later. We also have a new unique that we're going to have video of that's really awesome. So, frozen orb sorceresses are going to be really happy this season. And next, Necromancer. Uh, I've been talking for a while about Necromancer minions and how we're going to make them better. We're delivering on that in Season 4. Uh, the first change is that they're going to inherit 100% of the player stats. 
So, you know, your crit chance, crit damage, Here's your minions, Schecter. going to inherit it from you, so they're going to scale way better with you, the player. A hundred percent of your stats. Going to apply to I think before minions, it was like 10% or something, like 14%, 10%. So we're also going to be this, and we're going to get a pretty big power bump. So, um, we're also I don't know. Look, that look at, look, look, sounds look, good look at to me. I just don't know. But yeah. <laughs> and uh, basically revamped everything. Here's your minions. Uh, all the upgrades almost are getting some type of either number or big functionality change, and I'm going to be going through some haven't played there. minion builds but it's but. just going to be a lot more punchy uh, we're not only looking for effectiveness here like making things stronger meaningful but uh, we also like the rule of cool where you know the things the that necro are awesome minions look, might look might cool be good visual are gonna you know stand out more and so we're trying to do that as much as we can i mean that's the the fantasy so of nice playing a necromancer right you want to so have an, an army of minions that earlier, actually can do you know, something the landscape so. of everything is changing pretty drastically right itemization is going to be changing a lot of how player power works and how things work in the game We've got a lot of class updates that are going to be changing how things are. Uh, you can expect a pretty big shakeup of like just how all the different classes and builds perform. Like it's going to be a brave new world, really here. Um, but you know, normally we promised a while back that we're going to do lists of everything that's perceived as a nerf. Uh, I'm not going to be going through every single thing today. Um, you'll be able to see everything in the patch notes on the PTR, and that's mostly in the interest of time, just because there's so much change that's happening. But I am going to give you you know a snippet to make to do good on that promise of kind of how the game is now and some things that you can expect that are going to be lowered in power in the future. So some examples here. Um, generally, uh, Tybalt's Will, uh, everyone's favorite pants, right? And not only is it really good because the effect is good, but also it's damage on pants, which makes it really, really good. Uh, that damage Why are you even reduced. showing uh, nerfs on this stream? Tailsman. Both of these uh, uniques are insanely Literally powerful. just save this um, for the patch notes. going to be really good after this, but the damage is just being lowered so that other things can be competitive. Why are you doing this? Next, the Barbarian, uh, everybody's favorite charging class. Uh, first thing that we're doing is, many of you may not know this, but when like, we launched the game, I we don't actually know. gave them 10% They should try to balance reduction. with buffs this more than back just like in, nerfs. Uh, melee classes in general, People are just gonna, were having trouble in the early game. I don't know. There, there's um, so many buffs, like with everything else, then, that don't feel like they really these need nerfs, you're, you're not even gonna um, feel, you're not even gonna notice it. Really, what, what, the factor is gonna be, how do they balance the monsters? when Charles was talking. Like, what are we going to be fighting general, against now? It's going to be much more rare and special. You're not just going to find it on any uh, defensive stat. When you see it, it's going to be something that you're going to really value because it's hard to come by. And we also uh, think Barbarian Diablo is still going to be really good. Diablo 4 is fine. Content creators who are dramatic in chin up controversy. Like what does Diablo 4 have? Like, so 4 million active fine, users? That's dead? Yeah, okay. This extra part. Like also, we're reducing the effectiveness uh, of charge, might be hammer, the inches, and the rage. Uh, all three of these things have been Double incredibly is definitely not powerful. Dead. And, and I think like that Unbridled rage have kind of been stamping out competing things for a long I time. I do think that it's so good. Um, we're not. Our goal here is not to remove these from the game or make these builds not viable at in all. In the interest of a lot of content creators to farm, hate watchers. Just in general. And next, we're going like, to go over to the sorcerer. It and is we've got a couple bug fixes here. Hate um, baiting or whatever it's called. This, like it is, it is a very sound uh, strategy. The first one we had one where the evade uh, reduction so was they do it. Off of what, what I don't understand. So basically went, meant was like I understand why content creators do it. They're incentivized to. Like what I don't understand is why people who aren't content creators like have such a hard on for like hating on the game. Like you're not, you're not benefiting from from that. Like you're. You're and just the next kind one is uh, falling Jesus prey Frosty. to this is a key passive on the sorcerer that used to apply the, sort of the hate bait to all damage types, but it was the like fire key passive. You paid now seventy eight to one hundred dollars for the game. Shouldn't you want it to be good? And again, this is just a even if you like of other ARPGs. A lot more stuff. And again, like, shouldn't you want Diablo Four to be good so that it increases the competition between games the and then so I worry too much about makes the other games that you do enjoy playing more better? All right, so now let's get like, to there's the There's literally no updates. reason, so going unless you just hate Blizzard as a company, just showing like one to two examples of to kind of the actively of root for the downfall Again, of Diablo 4, unless you're, you're a content creator who's going to benefit it from it financially. Direction that we're going here. Like as a player, as so an owner of the, the game, if you've already so owned like the game, you are you're just like, literally like punching yourself in the face. It's like let me invest a hundred dollars in something and then actively root for its downfall. Wind Slasher. This is a legendary that we updated. So it's like legendary that spawns dust doubles it's Before just it was, you would cast double swing twice you kind of counterproductive and 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 every other time you'd make a dust double right pretty cool um we're updating this now so every single time that you uh, barbarian you, uh, buffs, uh, 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 barbarian buffs and instead of every other time spawning one every other time spawns three 
So now it's yeah. And then if you do give criticism, hit, then one. don't get me it's wrong. One then three then one then three, Diablo Four deserves criticism. And I want to call it again. There's tempered apex, but there's a way to, to give criticism constructively. Yeah, dust devil. So and apex is that that can help the future of the game. And if you truly want the game to be good, then like you need to be constructive in your criticism and not just criticize just to criticize. Dust devil built a bar for the season. So it's the example I tell our team. It's like always I say earthquakes and dust like these things need to be cool yeah. and all the ones like that though across the other classes yep. anyways that's the bar there's actually so there's two cats this, in the background are like this. my stream druid for example a thing that has been long complained about to me is that last rate is there's one here other things sleeping in the plant so on the left is what you can see and there's one in today, the actual cat bed which they almost are, never the sleep in the cat bed for a little bit for every hit and it's doubled when you crit and then the, the next the black one loves to sleep in the tree does a little bit more damage Oh, just merging those yellow. together. So both of those combined is going to be your first um, lacerate upgrade. I think upgrade. my wife locked them in here. And now we have a second upgrade so they're, they're there where every time that lacerate crits, it's cat nap time anyway. Your, all of your shape-shifting skills are going to deal more damage for 10 seconds up to 40%. Well said. I'm still rooting so for the franchise. So now we're adding a very yeah, strong, I mean, potent, multiplicative damage. There are very few reasons so now, you that know, you would rate, want the game you know, to fail. And it's the reasons are you just hate Blizzard or you're a content creator trying to hate farm. So then if you get a cooldown reduction on it, you can keep that buff rolling. Like that's have it. like a build going on so if you're not in those categories the source race. so what here are you doing just text i'm actually going to show you some videos the first one is here going to be cats. showing that frozen orb change that we talked about oh this is here. cool you can see so the change to frozen basically orb. you can see here that where the this person is, good. is targeting with their cursor is where the frozen orb is going rip to controller explore. players so now you can make it point blank you can still. make it far away uh, you know, it's going to be wherever you go. And for you controller and players, keyboard. this is going to interact just like other skills where it just goes to an enemy and then if there's nothing nearby, it just goes a certain oh. distance before blowing up. Oh, that's cool. They did it for... Next, we're going to be talking about the unique. Wait, that's... So, prefacing this unique a little bit that. before we show the video. You might want it to go um, further than, like, the first is enemy. The conjurations but... are cool and frozen orb is cool. Mm. And cat what's going to and cat like... is frozen orb is going to have a chance when it explodes to spawn conjurations. They're, they're not here that often to get a cat game. attack, they have a chance to throw frozen orbs at enemies. So now we're going to see this in action here. So it's called Fractured Winter Glass. And this video is just the person casting Frozen Orb with this unique. It's one of the so at first uniques. it's like, okay, it's fine. You see a couple conjurations, right? But then as you go on, you can see that the Frozen Orbs are making more of them. And then the conjurations are also throwing out more Frozen Orbs. This is all just from pressing one button. This yeah. is all just from throwing out <laughs> frozen orbs. Just been right clicking this whole time. Yeah, so it's like when That's I awesome. when I place a firewall and my firewall makes a meteor and then my meteor <laughs> makes a firewall. Yes, yeah. but conjurations. But, but conjurations. conjurations. Yeah, yeah. So, Hydra throwing frozen orbs. Firewall yeah, exactly. meteor sounds cool too. Yeah. But that okay. Fair I got enough. An idea. Stay, stay focused. <laughs> but yeah, so this is an example of one of the cool uniques that we're adding to the game. Next, let's move on to the rogue. So we're also updating some class mechanics and other things. Uh, inner sight has kind of uh, been eclipsed by other things in our game, right? When we first made Inner Sight, you know, it triggered off of trying to, this idea that you were going to target a single enemy, pick on that enemy, and build up this gauge, and then you have The rogue changes might be the most be boring changes that any class got. I'm crossing my fingers uh, for the actual patch notes. Because this is... Resource this is uh, not a lot easier nowadays. Yeah, it's fun to do. It's that, not too. it. Yeah, and it's fun. we want people to do that. Yeah, so we have to not it for rogue. systems in accordance to that, which is kind of what we're doing here. So now you don't only have to hit the marked enemy, but you can hit like you can it's charge better. Inner off of everything. Yes, so you're blowing up waves only of because they nerfed sure inner sight the like at the start of the game when people were using it. And now, in addition to that, the payoff. So now they're just kind of so like making it back to what it was, still, giving us some critical strike chance. But if you're running chances. precision, like so now you're you don't even need the critical strike chance. When you it's just are in stupid. Mode. Uh, it's so now there's actually a damage. It's a very there, boring so change for Rogue, unfortunately. Energy. But I, I hope that next necromancer. So like there's I said, more. Book of the Dead is getting upgrades. I kind of picked one uh, slice from each part. What about the game itself? They're going to talk about the end game later. Wind up attacks now can reduce your one of your active cooldowns by a pretty chunky amount uh three seconds is insane no video for rogue yeah no <laughs> that was not um, a good change i mean you it's know, it's buffed but that they've made to, to be better than combo points I don't know, and now they just make everything vulnerable so actually if you want cold mages to solve vulnerable for you further skill tree looks to be taken from upgrade. other game and last but not least we have your iron golem so iron golem Creators, now that ideas you tell to go games. somewhere and do that slam attack where it pounds the ground I'm It'll not saying that D4 was done or executed so poorly because it really was. You know, put that on your bar. You have another trying to be, create something different. It seems like uh, they copied this from D3. I want to call out with golems that I'll make players happy. Look, D1 to D2. Uh, golem now 
while you're CC'd or at any time, when you activate it, it's going if to If you haven't your played the game since so now you launch or season one, on the uh, jump into the PTR. Builds, which I think will make players really happy. Yeah, it's a you don't even have to have the time yeah, investment of getting you're to you're end game to, to, to jump yeah. into the PTR. Yeah. That's awesome for a Golemancer build, for sure. You don't have yeah, to yeah. test the realm. You don't have to give feedback. So next, like I was just saying see before, if you like the game, if it's worth playing season four. Dust doubles and earthquakes are going to be your friends now. And you don't even have to commit the time to like getting to end game. Well. And what I mean by that is yeah, that the, rogue the damage changes, that they did was not fixed. Good. So if you got like a dust level or earthquake or whatever, you got that legendary at like level 25, the damage that it did was just a number, and that number didn't really go up with you or scale with you in a meaningful way. Now, under the hood, all of these things are going to be scaling based off your weapon damage, which means that these things will scale with you as a player and be much more viable now. And I believe we can zoom in on this example I give. So this one is Dancing Bolts. I'm actually running this legendary right this now is on my Lightning Storm. kind of good. So you can see... Because now, you know, the like, the flat damage aspects are going to be more this important early, changing but then they fall off late. This, legendary equip. this is in Season 4, so you can see it does an amount of damage on the left, you know, about 5,400 there. Now, that number on the right, I didn't get a new legendary. I didn't change it. I didn't do anything except change my weapon, and that increased the damage that these Dancing Bolts are going to do. So when you get these legendary legendaries now, they're going to scale with you and do quite a bit more damage and be oh. punchy as you go into the late game. This is in addition to like tempering and other things, talking to these things, so you can actually itemize into making them more powerful. So well. flat damage yeah, is I, scaling it's on funny there's, your there's some people I think that didn't catch item power. Maybe now. they didn't catch the first part of the itemization, but they're looking at this second legendary, mm -hmm. the new one, and they're going like, "Wow, it's only got three stats or something." Uh, this is. You should probably watch a recording of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's when it drops, uh, not yeah. after you've done yeah, all yeah, your exactly. stuff. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot. There's a lot of uh, itemization changes to to make, um, you know, the items feel more valuable themselves mm -hmm. in season four. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, I recommend watching the recording just yeah, yeah, for, yeah, for yeah. people yeah. that may have missed the itemization or, or checking out our blog next. Yeah, you can temper two more affixes on them. There you yeah. go. Yeah, they got five. That's right. All right. So net, last but not least is opening up designs. Like I talked about, one of our goals here. Make things more generally useful, less restrictions. We can zoom in here. To, I have two examples. One is Azurath here on the left, a unique sword. So two things going on here. First, you can see before, it was that your core skills have a chance to freeze enemies and deal a bunch of damage to them. On the right, we've removed the core skill requirement, and now yeah, any this of is your good. skills can... Uh, I hope they did this with so every this unique, you can honestly. Use it on, you know, like charge and other similar things like that, where, you know, maybe you want to make a build around something that's not a core skill to proc this, you totally can, or it's just going to proc more often and you just play normally. Second thing you'll notice is on the left it says barbarian only. Well, we just removed that uh, restriction. So now any class that can use a sword can use Azure Wrath. Again, we're just trying to look for places where there was restrictions, and when we can, we're just removing them. Next one is Opportunist. This one I'm really excited about on the Rogue. I think I'm going to play a Rogue this season. Mm -hmm. um, so on the left is the old version where it says when you break stealth with an attack, you can drop stun grenades, right? And then those grenades deal damage and stun enemies. On the right, we've removed a lot of these restrictions and made it more useful. So now it's when you enter or break stealth, and you don't need to break stealth when, it, when you attack. So anytime that you cast stealth or go into stealth, you're going to get two sets of these. And it's just Grenade Rogues and online. And stun grenades. Uh, you also notice that... Who wants to play a Grenade thing, Rogue next season? Stun Grenades grenade has been buffed. It's a second now. And then we also did a thing that I'm really excited about here where every single grenade, Stun Grenade uh, Legendary will increase the damage of your grenade skills. And all of them are going to have this. So if you want to make a Stun Grenade build, if you collect, you know, the four or five of these Legendaries that, that kind of combo together, every one is going to incrementally increase your grenade's damage as well to a point where, you know, you, you'll, they'll be doing a lot more meaningful damage in your build. All right, last but not least, we've got hardcore updates. So for you hardcore players, uh, Elixir of Death Evasion is being removed from the game. Hey, it's hey, hey. And it's not coming back, just like you will in hardcore. Here we go. Uh, we've also redesigned the flame <laughs> I've been saying this so before, since beta. Mechanic where when you took fatal damage, it's it actually hardcore. You. Now it's going to automatically activate. When hardcore is actually hardcore. It has a, uh, an internal cooldown on that. Who would have so, thunk? We've heard from the community kind of who, loud who would have thought hardcore to be hardcore, and so we're like, going to deliver on that now. You have to that, have to that you would want that. Of, you know, Sanctuary is a very scary place, like, and you won't. Hardcore have was a joke. It literally is easier than softcore. 
And uh, finally, because you get an extra back. life so to do like everything before, we're by having a potion of cheat death. You have an extra we life in hardcore think, uh, versus anyone in softcore. Uber bosses, if there's anything for you and that's coming that's later you. than that, that's um, even when you, that's even better. Kind of your Every single thing in the us, game in hardcore, uh, really you had an, a, like uh, more chances to do it than you did on softcore, which is so weird. But yes, we're also looking for what good. changes really made the game more fun to you. You're gonna we're going to do a feedback old man card. We really want to know what changes and we did, maybe didn't a lot of people why, from you know, the campfire chat enough. are going to probably be in the stream after, small tweak. I suspect. And then last but not least, we want to so know we're, I'm going to do a recap of a lot of the right? stuff. Probably, probably not as much the class balances, like the stuff. A lot of these changes are coming from your feedback, like, you know, flat damage scaling. But the hardcore thing is good. Mostly the itemization stuff. We're going to recap everything and then get feedback. And in a very public forum, we're going to do polls and stuff. So we'll be looking for that feedback. So yeah, that's pretty much everything we got for classes. Thanks everybody again. Yes, yeah, so we're excited. There, there is a uh, like ton of information for classes, and good stuff. It's funny because everyone's treating this PTR feedback slide as if as if we're done. No, no, no. We're we're not. Not. There's more. And I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Started yet. Joey P, uh, as the chat calls it, Joe Pipe or Rap God. Uh, has not has not <laughs> spoken yet, uh, so uh, he will be he will be talking here now about end game specific items sure thanks so uh a couple things i want to talk about first we're gonna talk about some new content stuff in just a minute but there are some other things that are also changing at the same time uh you'll see on the ptr we've made adjustments to uh to world tiers and that we've changed the xp modifier that you get for opting into certain world tiers so uh I'm gonna, so the reason why we're doing this we want it, we want to get players to end game a little bit faster so we've made an adjustment where World Tier 2 now goes, instead of giving you 20% bonus XP, it gives you 50% bonus XP. This is good. Uh, World Tier 3 More XP. now gives you 150% uh, bonus XP mm. as opposed to the 100%. Just get to end game four. faster. And then cool World with Tier it. 4 gives you 250% bonus XP. I think 100 is going to be under 10 hours. <laughs> so again, we want to get players into the space where they're, they're getting a chance to play with these new items. They're getting a chance to see some of the new content we're going to be talking about in just a minute. Uh, and experience more of the end game and, uh, ha and have a little less uh, emphasis on the, the level up process uh, being like a, a lot longer as it, as it is today. So uh, this is this is our I like Joe. Uh, I like Joe a lot. Reach level Adam Jackson want them to get more is very passionate. Level 100, nine, I, nine, nine I like him too. Items. We want them to start seeing more greater affixes. We want them to engage in temporary. Adam Fletcher is a great MC. Everything else the game has to offer. Obviously, he's not uh, like sure a dev dev, but that possible. I think he does a good job. Think about that as we move forward. This is just... And all this of the is things the first we're talking I've about seen this guy. are just one more step on the journey of Diablo 4. We're going to continue, as Adam already called out, to continue to make the game better based on feedback. And just Joe's a good storyteller. Cool stuff that, uh, that very animated guy. Game and also that we're, we're hearing from our player base, our community, would be really, really great for the game experience. So, uh, with that quick little thing out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the first major update we have planned uh, that you'll get a chance to see on PTR. And that is we made a, a significant update to Helltide. Now, I, I think that everyone will remember that in Season 3, we made an adjustment to Helltide timing, where now they're basically up for 55 minutes out of every hour. There's a five-minute gap between each Helltide experience. You know, and we think that that's great. Players are able to get uh, better access to Forgotten Souls and, uh, and, and, other, and all the gameplay there. But we also, like, looking back on Season 2 uh, and, you know, the, uh, the, the Blood Harvest regions where, uh, you know, the armies of Lord Zir were marching across Sanctuary as we all... This is good. Call from mm. quarter four of last year. It's hard to get excited and, you know, about anything Helltide related, blood, uh, but this is good. You know, that was, uh, we thought that was a really fun, undeniably frenetic, good. Uh, like social experience in the overworld. Like it's just a, a blast kind of go <laughs> Yeah, they like cut away and cut people. back and Joe Shelley was uh, gone. And, uh, and summon Bloodseekers. Adam well, Jackson was the there. And getting good rewards as you go. Kind of so, funny. It was, a, it was a fun experience. In season three, we had a different take on that idea with uh, the form of Arcane Tremors, where players can go and engage in a number of different like, small activities and traps. And, uh, and also uh, managed to uh, to summon heralds of Malthus in a group and go ahead and get more like tuning stones and more love uh, the blood harvest and, yeah and the stones, seasonal overworld uh, stuff and and, and they haven't even talked about what the seasonal theme's going to be or we thought that was pretty what you know what right? the seasonal mechanic is so this is just base game changes and I'll, I'll be I'll be uh, actually I think it might be even easier if we if we could just throw to Ruben potentially who I think might actually be able to be in Helltide right now yeah uh, fantastic looks like that's the case okay so we want to take some of these ideas back to Helltide. <laughs> Hello, yes, you're being, you're going to get destroyed. Uh, so, uh, so uh, nah, yeah, we're taking some of these ideas not... back to Helltide and make sure uh, that he's the, running. You know, our overworld, exciting, demonic invasion experience that players get to go through here 
is just more fun to, uh, to, to engage with. Was that yeah. just a giant hellworm belching a bunch of enemies at? <laughs> that Ruben? was that was a giant hellworm. <laughs> Room shard. Do you see so that? A, a bunch Room of shard just dropped. So one of the things that <laughs> oh, let me let me dive in. So one, one, one of the things that we uh, that we we did is we add this new idea of a threat system. Now you'll see the eagle-eyed among you uh, can look to the left of the mini map. Thank you, Ruben. Uh, can look to the left of the mini map. Oh, it's bloodshed. You'll Let's see a go. Horizontal bar segmented in three pieces uh, next to that kind of like half-completed pentagram there. Uh, as the players are killing demons in Helltide areas, they are slowly growing their threat over the course of the experience. And as they do that, they're going to find like more uh, like ambushes. They're going to find more uh, creatures trying, uh, coming and trying to kill them as they uh, as they kind of like roll through the. So space. he's filling and up this, this bar. They're earning. They're gaining threat by doing anything. If they're opening tortured gifts, if they are killing like regular monsters and elites. You know, they're, they're always earning more threat. It looks like the, the bar filled up. The, the armies of hell are paying more attention. There's this new, so like, boss the icon is here. Going through this process, they are going to feel, start feeling, like, more pressure as they go through the experience. Coiling Ward now, was once the player has gotten towards colored the, like, differently? the end of this, like, they actually have, uh, you know, when the armies of hell have been fully... Where immersed, are the Forgotten Souls? You know, you hear it all, <laughs> which I think that... Uh, uh, I think we might actually hear. I, I want it to well. rain to forgotten it. souls when but, I'm you know, in Hellside. That's, that's all to I to care the, about. The, fact that the armies of hell are basically coming for your blood, right? They're they're coming for you at this time. And this is what PH, they, uh, that placeholder. Case, see that there's going to be a new creature type that's going to appear, uh, which we'll uh, be able to get to in just a second. Some of the other big changes that are happening in uh, Helltide alongside this, while we kind of wait for some of this stuff to happen, is uh, we're, we have reduced the. Uh, What's this? This is totally M A W. You'll start to see. What's M A W? In, uh, in lower world tiers now. So they're they're in, in a, a great way for Maybe. you to level up. Uh, okay, it looks like the forces of hell have been alerted. So now there's going to be like it's, it's going to be a little, a little, almost a little more of a holdout. More invasions and ambushes are going to start to occur at this time. You know, and uh, it's these gonna guys be, dropping uh, souls. Kind of cap off event towards the end. We'll talk about as it arrives. I see don't right see now, souls. The threat is draining while this uh, this uh, event is occurring. So you've kind of like reached that maximum threshold. Where are the, the forgotten the, souls the, the, the in this whole thing? Are coming for you. Uh, you are, you know, you're going to be, um, you know, kind of fighting for okay. this stuff. Cinders, cinders get, are like, great. Cinders translate. You know, once this bar is to souls. Is drained, once again, I see rune shards. By, again, that must be out, doing more things inside the one of the crafting materials. Uh, you're going to get more opportunities for more cinders and more of these ambushes. I, I literally the, don't uh, see as, any as like forgotten souls. End of this now. Oh, yeah. None of this is endgame. Yeah. yeah, that's true. This, uh, this Hellborn here. Yeah, this is, so uh, yes. So yes, and now uh, one of the Hellborn has managed to appear. Uh, Hellborn are, are they're very much a... Uh, All right, a maybe this guy is going to drop the blood the souls. Seekers that we've seen in the past. These are adventurers who have fallen to the, uh, the, 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 the depravities of hell. Okay, so blood seekers are back. The, uh, they're, his, they're infernal masters. Uh, they have great drops, like they'll drop uh, like legendary equipment. Uh, and uh, they will also drop uh, summoning materials for Lord Zeer uh, moving mm -hmm. forward. So there's more ways for you to get some of those maps. What about as you go the souls? And that's actually one of the other things that we did as, uh, as part of uh, our, our general updates. Is we, we kind of wanted and to they go didn't through let and us see. To make it easier to find more of those. those he, was having, he was struggling with that like, boss. From doing like, different kinds of content. So mm -hmm. while obviously you can go to Hell Tides and open Tortured Gifts to get Living Steel pretty quickly... We, we want to make sure that there's, like, if you find, like, a tr Treasure Goblin, there's a chance now that Treasure Goblin could drop a random boss summoning mm -hmm. material. Oh, you know, when you go and you Sorry, I'm, cash, um... Or, uh, whisper Cash is the end of a, uh, a, a bunch of Whisper Yeah, cash. I'm a broken record like, in that about situation, souls. you'll also get a chance of getting random boss summoning material. You know, uh, and I'm you traumatized more opportunities through different parts of the experience. by Forgotten like Souls. Events. They always like seem to be what I am and missing because I don't to get a boss love Helltide content. You know, uh, even a leap so, of a very, very low chance <laughs> yeah, uh, to, drop, uh, to drop some of these materials. And again, <laughs> all to make it just a little bit easier to kind by of forgotten like souls. To these bosses so I want to see more of them everywhere. Even if not saying specifically in just Nightmare Dungeons to get Distilled Fear or something else, right? Um... So yeah, that's. I mean, those. I think those are going to be some pretty fun updates for the players. That's uh, obviously that's pretty not exciting. everything. Yeah. So we. Uh, <laughs> so another thing that we're doing as part of this is that we are adding a new. We're adding a new boss. A new uh, boss. Ooh. We're adding. Uh, uh, and Daryl. So uh, you can now fight and Daryl. Uh, she is summonable by defeating uh, Beast back. and Ice and, and Lord Zir, and she's got the same drop table as Duriel. So we want to make sure that players have a, a couple of Uber Andy. to kind of gain access to these really, really powerful uniques that Duriel drops, but also for that shot at getting those Uber uniques without always requiring players to go back to those same places. Yep. So between opening up the options of how you gain access to materials you can use to go farm Uber uniques a little bit earlier, uh, to like now saying, hey, go do Nightmare Dungeons, go do some of this overworld content and Helltide content to gain access to Beast and Ice in Lord Zir, so you can go farm Enduriel there. We think that's going to be like a really, really fun change. 
Uh, and but it's just uh, boss really cool farming. Fight. I think we might so. actually have like a quick little yeah. shot of the summoning for Andariel, as we all know her and love her. There oh, she is. is. Wow. She's back. And Daryl's pretty cool She's looking tough. in this game. You know, it's uh, it's it's gonna be. It's I want to say the fun. fight's been updated too. It's yeah, not fight. exactly the same as yeah. what we did before. Yeah, so. the uh, yeah, the designer's been very excited about this fight and very excited about Andariel for a while, bringing her back into the uh, into the equation. So yeah, I'm all She's for another boss. Ah, oh, the poison Nova class. Yeah. Okay, uh, enough yeah. on Dario. Yeah, enough on Dario. All right, yeah. Well, people will see that. <laughs> we got, we're, on, we're, on, we're on a timer, people. Okay, I got things to talk about still. Uh, okay, but that's not even all the things that we're changing with regards to, to bosses. There's, mm. there's more stuff that we're doing as well. Um, so one of the things that we're going to be talking about in just a minute is, uh, is a new feature called the pit. And inside the pit, you can be able to, you're going to more stuff. All right. be able to use the pit. to summon higher level versions of all of these bosses as you go with Fisto the in the expansion. So we think this is, when we get this is Diablo. extremely exciting. It provides a, about uh, another way for players to be able to like, express the their Diablo like, their game. strength. And going and fighting these bosses uh, are going to provide much, much greater rewards. In fact, when you kill one of these new, very, very powerful, tormented versions of these bosses uh, out there, uh, they are going to give you a, uh, they're going to give you one uh, resplendent spark the first time you kill any of them. Mm. You hear so, that? Uh, of like the, all the ones that you can summon, the first time you kill one of them, you're going to get a Resplendent Spark for you to use in the future. Resplendent now, Spark, if you haven't been paying attention to the changes, doing, obviously. I mentioned the pit. Okay. four so, Resplendent okay, Sparks ahead, makes and, an uber uh, unique. Well, I guess we'll, so we'll you can basically I mean, guarantee yeah. so we've been getting a lot an of uber unique uh, from one a season. With, uh, with the Avatar of Zir. You know, so uh, you're at the, towards the end of the season two, we had this like really, really Three more now? Oh, keep watching. Dungeon dive. We're going against, against again, forces of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of Lord Zir. Uh, the Helm of this, uh, Diablo? Fighting blood seekers yeah, and, they'll do and Diablo last. That'll be three well, that expansions a, away. Fun experience. Uh, no, it's guaranteed really drop information feedback on your first kill. Played out. We made a number of adjustments in the form of this new content type that we're calling uh, the Artificer's Only pick. your first kill. And what it effectively is, is a way for players to go and... Um, they're, like once players have have uh, managed to complete a, a tier 45 nightmare dungeon, which is filled with like level 100 monsters, they're going to gain access to a quest that's going to like send them around the world looking for rune shards. And rune shards are just this new rune shard. That that's what we saw to open up uh, artificial in the hell side. They drop from elite creatures. They drop all over the place. Like it's pretty. Yeah, easy a lot of them are dropping in the hell side. Start this so. process. Uh, and when you have a number of them, you can bring them back to this obelisk in Karagar. And kind of use that to like form a, uh, a your first pit run effectively, uh, and there there's hundreds of levels of this, and the monsters that you will begin fighting immediately are all like right at level 100. Do we have a? Uh, I think uh, we have a video of it. Or a, in, yeah, yeah. Let's see what we got. So we have a uh, Ruben like kind of near live, there. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. We have the live play <laughs> with that awesome debug. Text, yeah, there it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the awesome debug text. Everybody, it's PTR. Look forward. And it's a, we're looking at all my dev stuff right now. This is what it looks like sometimes. So okay. So we see here that, uh, that Ruben's coming here. He's already done uh, the, the rift before. He's going to go ahead and just open up a tier one uh, artificer's rift. And just we'll see how this goes. So he's going to spend one right. shard. This is the this. pit. That's going to open I haven't right seen any of this. Um, and we're going to go. There's, like, there's this is next season. Run. This is yeah, all next yeah. season. We're going to have that fixed too. Uh, <laughs> this is in the PTR. Right. Uh, and you're going to dive into your first pit run. Now, uh, each pit the pit experience is it's a, it's a randomized layout. Filled with random monsters, you know. Uh, there's no nightmare affixes like what we have in, uh, or like afflictions like we have in, uh, in Nightmare Dungeons. Instead, this is some more end game. Really, like just pushing themselves up as uh, against this timer as fast as they can. You're uh, in Schecter. So as you're going through this, you'll see it's very very similar to a lot of the things that we did in the Avatar Zir. Now we want to make sure that this is a, a quick punch. Yeah, like I said, I mean, you're playing and you're killing monsters. You can't deny that every single change that like they're this, making like not here to slow you is down. better for the game. You know, it's just about like pushing as hard as you can. Now, is it a couple perfect? Of the major differences between what we've done in uh, the artificial no. pit uh, relative to what we did in the Avatar Zir is first. Uh, uh, in, Gauntlet. In the this Avatar is Zier, um, Greater Rifts. Died, basically, uh, the experience they were immediately ejected from the Avatar Zir. Like their Greater Rifts, Monoliths. Here, just like a want to allow for a little bit endless more, uh, a few more, scaling uh, problems to occur, a few basically more errors, you know from the player as they're kind of going through dungeon Ab uh, abattoir so of zero you die what actually ends up happening is you add 30 seconds to your timer uh, uh, so okay. you're you're less and less likely to beat the timer 
and that's important. Not perfect, but headed in the right time, direction. Not Absolutely headed in the right direction. Like if you if you don't actually manage, I haven't played it all this season. Came time. back to you it like yesterday. Decided to wait till next condition. season. Honestly, the I missed this game, so looking forward to it. Machete. Using to go through the masterworking process. I don't think there will be ever a better time to play than than season four. To obtain the bulk majority. You can even test it out yourself in the PTR. So while you can get to the end of the experience and you will get rewards. So the cave for feel like the pit from D2. The end of the pit run if you don't manage yeah, to I mean, I think all the maps are you random. You won't get access to those materials. So why is this? So one of the things we recognize. Like I said, season six, seven, or eight. To Diablo, I, I think, uh, yeah, I think it'll be really good in those seasons a lot of too. Times, players are making uh, like efficiency bets about how they choose to engage with content. They're deciding, okay, I, I can kill monsters of this level fairly easily and without much risk. How much further yeah, I mean, this this is level can I push in order to maximize greater the rifts, I'm getting from the, uh, from 2.0 uh, and while also uh, like maintaining good cadence it's and, not like, exactly like monolith because kind of like that, that there doesn't seem to be any works really really well sort you know, of was meant to like tap targeting into a bit of this we went, but it was also AOZ like was designed tar targeting to be an items through challenging it. piece of content from the get-go here the pit starts in a somewhat more reasonable place I think we understand that, like, you know, tier, uh, like, tier 45. Yeah, you can go, like, right, right into pits. You know, uh, the like, most challenging basically, once you get to the game, world tier 4, I mean, it's only level 100 the stuff. As, well. as the pit can go, like, well past uh, tier 100, so you can be fighting level 200 monsters, level 200. Oh, yeah, look, you can, yeah, each deep, level. Deep, deep I mean, it's just, like, completely random, completely so, random. Okay, it looks like uh, Ruben's making pretty good time going through this. I think we saw earlier that Ruben actually like jumped into a portal to move to a different area. Yeah, it's yeah. D three rifts. Yeah, you can't finish like. an entire uh, pit run inside like that first that first area. Uh, you kind of are expected to like move on, but um, you also don't need to kill everything uh, in either of these uh, these areas either. There's a good amount of creatures in both spaces. You can kind of like make up the time that you need. He's making pretty good time here though. Okay. So the idea is to try and find that level in the pit. All right, and let's see what happens at the end. Quickly, but I'm guessing pushing hard so you can get better rewards. it's so going right. to be some okay, so random I'm boss. Great, great job, Ruben. Uh, so you managed to you managed to do it. Okay, let's not get too excited. All right, so, yeah. so yeah, so now he's going to go. He's going to go and he's going to fight the, uh, the boss Mark. in just a moment. Mm -hmm. Now the the second thing that's different about the uh, the, the pit. That, uh, oh that no, we, look at that. We, <laughs> you just start to see it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, that is different from what we've done in uh, in AOC. Is that a blood seeker again? Is that occasionally during a pit run you're going to be confronted by another major boss or villain uh, that you've seen. Like you'll see their echo occasionally appear just for a moment to perform a big attack. A uh, big sweeping attack, and or that you're gonna have to like avoid or deal with while you're. Dealing it's not with the, Tomb uh, Lord. The boss you're already fighting, and this is happening this, throughout the duration of the pit. As this well. is, you know, and yeah, as you go this deeper, is a new boss a actually. At the same time, so these are just another complication. Yeah, this like this isn't. I'm thinking about. There's nothing playing, in the game trying that to, like remember the source has. Of I've never seen these skills fight, before. See a couple of these appearing as well. You know, so like you'll you'll be dealing with that uh, like that kind of pattern following as you. So these are these are actually new bosses yeah, that they made for this. So, so it's kind of like Elias, for instance, so like a, 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 a the mini Lilith. Yeah, yeah. 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 So you can come and, and do an attack, attack. Just yeah. do an attack. And there's the rewards. Oh, shit, wow. wow, that's just yeah. from yeah. tier yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, cool. also appear, yeah. which is so yeah. cool. these are these are definitely tough, uh, t like tough things as you go deeper and deeper, and eventually you might see a couple of them as well in, in combination. So okay, so here yeah. Ruben killed the boss. Got and you get a chest. Drops. There's a there's a bug in this in this version that we're looking at right now where the items are dropping are not actually ancestral, but that's not the case when players will be playing on the PTR. You all see ancestral items as the rewards for killing the boss here at the end. And then after that, uh, when you open the chest, you're gonna see that there's a bunch of obdicite that popped out of it. Which yeah, what is was a, that? A master working material. Oh, okay. You know, I think he got I think he got five. You know, from the uh, from the first run. So. As you go deeper in the pit, there's basically three tiers of masterworking materials that you're going to be able to earn through. So there's the uh, there's the obdicite, there's the inglith, and then there is the yeah the neath iron. More materials. Uh, so these are available as you go deeper and deeper into the pit experience. I think obdicite right now is like like tiers one to twenty. You know you'll be getting uh, like amounts of obdicite hmm. as you go from like twenty one to forty. You get amounts of inglith, and as you go to neath iron, how beyond, grindy uh, like, you know, is this going like, to be? Beyond, you're starting seeing more and more neath iron. And these things can also be like condensed down to lower level materials if you need them for what, resetting. Uh, what are the different tiers at, mean too? I'm so you don't have to go curious, back to the low like, level. No, you can no, no. stay at the higher. You can stay at a higher level. But, level yeah. but to be clear, if this, you want to get to that rank twelve masterworking, really oh, it's for masterworking. Right, okay. You do need to be pushing deeper levels of the pit. You yeah, can't just yeah. continually farm level one. You you want to push to yeah, that yeah. efficiency bet. You said yeah. push this yourself. This is upgrade your pit level where you can only get this. Material really so that, that you can keep doing to bits. get the best items. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So yeah, P2 new season April 12th. That's right. Really get those really be the best items available for your build. 
uh, you're going to want to go through the master working process, maybe even probably more than once, almost certainly more than mm -hmm. once, right, to get the absolute very, very best items. You know, so we think the pit's going to be, it's a really fun experience. Let me get it some is, water. Uh, I'll be right back. Very extendable. So Let me know what I miss. Deeper players. And again, as you're going, you're getting these Stygian stones as you play. You know, like as you get deeper into the experience, you're going to get those. Uh, you're going to you're going to get the uh, the ability to go fight those those level 200 tormented versions of these bosses. So like a level 200 uh, tormented version of Barshan, yep. you know, and so on and so forth. All of these uh, bosses have a, a, a higher chance to drop uh, uh, uber unique item as well. So now there's even more reason to want to go get some of these uh, these creatures on farm. And they have they have better drops. They have a they have they more prolific in terms of the drops. They drop many more items uh, as you're going through this. So there's uh, these are gonna be huge, huge challenges for uh, for players to go and try to chase again just in season four. Yeah. You know, so there's that's that's like the 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 current look of some of the things we're working on right now. Yeah. Uh, yep. that we're we're currently very excited about. Yeah. So ton <laughs> on the on, on the content side. Right? Yeah. We. I mean, <laughs> we were we're an hour and a half in of all the uh, content that we just walked through with with season four. Uh, and as you know, Adam had mentioned earlier. You know, we haven't even gone through all the class updates. You guys will actually what see I miss. that. <laughs> There's a lot more. Uh, you oh, guys you guys are just excited for the week. chair. Normally, we do have a blog and patch notes kind of available uh, like a day or two after a campfire chat. Uh, I am asking the community if it's okay if we give it to you guys next week because the only reason why is that they're huge. They're, de not, they're <laughs> delaying it another week. Sure that we get all the information mm -hmm. in there. You guys will That's have fine. It well uh, I don't care. PTR as long as it's starts, before the PTR. And we will actually have uh, a, a blog kind of going through all the details of this actual campfire chat as well as the giant list of patch notes for the PTR, yeah. which again will begin on April 2nd, run for a week. Uh, on PC Battle.net, and we'll have instructions of how to actually get into the PTR, download the client, and everything from that end as well. So I know uh, we always end our campfire chats with a, a Q&A session. Yep. So yeah. we do want to make sure that we do a, a, a Q&A session right now. So if you guys have questions, please use Twitch yeah. chat. I can't imagine there's any questions. So no, I, yeah, we no, can't imagine. <laughs> we have a lot we did of questions. This week on the forums. If the, you well, on PS5, so I won't any any be able to try the PTR. It's, uh, can actually tee up a question mm -hmm. while people are Yeah, I think they said for this one, it's uh, PC uh, only, uh, but so they're we'll trying to fix that for the future. This is from Iggy. Thank you, Jim. What will to current items after this rework? Jim, can you come over and help? Just in case. Our past items are going to season four. Yeah, so all of the items that you, you fight level have 200 on uber bosses. Okay, so they revealed that. Will be flagged as what are called legacy the ultra items. bosses. And this means that they are not able to interact with the new systems of tempering or masterworking. Uh, they, they'll continue to function as they are, uh, so that they're not going to break, they're not going to be re rolled or changed in any way. Mm -hmm. They're just kind of say, hey, this was an item that, you know, you, in, in the old system, but if you want to engage with the new uh, systems and, and find those greater affixes and temper all the cool new affixes onto it, uh, and, and do master working, of course, you're going to need to go out and find new items. So yeah. your items will become um, legacy items. There is a question from Just kinda cool. Toast and Pen. Eternal legacy Realm. items are fun. New. I had those uh, in D2. Everything we just talked yeah. about. Yeah. Everything, yeah. everything yeah. we just yeah. talked about, Eternal. Toast and Pen, so. is going to be available in the Eternal Realm. So, And this will start with Season 4. So Yeah, they haven't even revealed seasonal stuff. This only plays on Eternal so. Realm and you have a character already there. Of course, you can just immediately start engaging in everything that we just kind of <laughs> talked about right here. Um... J Corsair 19, does the master working just increase the total range of the roll or does it get you closer to a max roll? So it increases the current value. So if you already had a max roll, oh, it's it up Calroon. So as an example, you have um, <laughs> Oh, subscribe Calroon with the sub McCall also you sub. Value of 90. Yo Calroon, thank you for Every 28 you months it, and McCall. that 90. Thank you for um, by, or, 33 months so you, probably you back had it at 100 work. uh just to make yeah. the math easier because <laughs> uh, quick math um, if it was already at 100, uh, the first mass working upgrade will take it to 105. Uh, even though the base roll range was just up to 100, you can continue progressing past that. Uh, if you had it you know, down at 50, it would go from 50 up to 55, and, and so on. Hmm. Um, Arrow1357 just asked, like, what about season? Like, is, this, is there season stuff as well? We actually aren't talking yet about the, the season items. So, mm -hmm. uh, yes, this is all part of the season and part of the Eternal Realm. But we do have, uh, there, there are some things that we haven't talked about regarding uh, Season 4 that we will be talking about here yeah. uh, in the future. The bulk team, of the, uh, the bulk effort for the team has really been spent on trying to ensure that this update is really meaty and all-inclusive. All like when I've talked before about 
you know, the, um, the season two updates where we talk about like vulnerability damage and the many, many yeah. changes we have to make to kind of like make that, to kind of like get that to a better spot for the players overall. You can see like the amount of things that we did are kind of all connected in a lot of ways. Uh, and it's important they kind of come out together. It's difficult to do one thing in isolation. So a lot of teams work yeah. together to kind of like yeah, bring that's, this update. That's a shame uh, that they couldn't get the PTR right. on so consoles. It's, it's a huge lift. But there's more things to talk Wasn't about later thinking on about that. in the season. Um, Thorag the Warrior says, uh, can multiple affixes uh, increase per masterwork or only one affix per masterwork? Right. So when, when you're masterworking, most of the ranks will increase all of the affixes on the gear by mm. a small amount. But when you hit those uh, thresholds, the rank 4, rank 8, and rank 12, a single random affix will get a much oh, larger Oh, that's chances. interesting. Yeah. Okay. And so, I didn't realize uh, that. Because there's three, that happens three times on your journey from you know, rank uh, 1 to 12. So you're not choosing uh, which theory, aspect you want to upgrade. All could land on the same affix if you get lucky. It's, and it's that one completely affix random the which uh, or can gets be spread out to upgraded at each of the tiers um, 4, 8, just and 12. The nature of can you working? fail uh, master You're going to get a different result every time you go through that process. Um, so I've seen a lot of people actually mention this in chat, and I, uh, Riker also just mentioned this in mm -hmm. chat, sure. uh, and they're asking, is it just me, or was the camera more zoomed out in the dev build? Actually... Oh, we didn't even talk about that. Actually, oh, wow. Uh, okay. <laughs> camera zoomed out more? In, in, in yeah. season four, the camera will be more zoomed Honing? out. Honing? Stop. Uh, and there will be an option. You can you can, you can can yeah. have what... Yes! Have wait, I love that. Zoom it out a I little. had no idea that so, they were doing yes. that. Yeah, yes. there's a gameplay <laughs> setting. It starts at the current default. Correct. You know, which is what we have in Diablo. You can zoom did, out more. Holy crap. Did make it, uh, we did make Stop. It Look at this. Uh, this is the, the, the most excited. They didn't even think to mention it. And this is the thing that the people are most excited about. What the heck? This is literally the biggest change. No. Like the codex stuff. And we forgot to say That's another really good one. The codex stuff. Um was the, big uh, <laughs> but this is also like questions about that else. reaction might have been better uh, though than the, did than you the guys want to codex stuff any context on that yeah so we are we've talked about this before we're very very excited about bringing in like an armory like feature to diablo 4. you know we've been hearing the feedback game of the like year the, the, the gauntlet went up uh which oh we're excited gosh. about and uh That's we see funny. if there's an opportunity uh here we don't have anything to announce today but we it is a thing the team has talked about, like the UI team is very excited about. It's a thing we definitely want to move on at some point, but nothing to announce. Yeah. Um, that, that, that way I lost my track here. Uh, do you have any intention of reviewing, I'm sorry, this is from VIX311 or 3II. Uh, do you have any intention of reviewing class optimization? Examples like give more customization points or put Paragon uh, after a higher level than 50? So there's a number of things that we're we're talking about for the future. Things we are, we can't talk about today, you know. But you can imagine that like we're going to be having an expansion soon. We probably want to talk about some of that stuff then, you know. Yeah. We, mm -hmm. There's things for us to be considering. A um, lot of people mentioning a loot filter. Yeah. Um, which I know, like we we had mentioned as well that we wanted to get through the the itemization. Loot stuff, filter. So. Here you go. A little bit about that. I think a lot of the desire for a loot filter in in the current version of Diablo 4 stems from the problems that we initially mentioned with. We really do just flood you with items, and it's like sifting sand, right? You, you need to look through all these items, and uh, the, the one response is, hey, a loot filter could automate all this. Uh, we think in this new itemization world, where we are simplifying it in a lot the of long ways, we already discussed. long-winded answer to say affixes, you're not getting a loot affixes, filter yet. Uh, the item power, once you get to the late game, always dropping at the max. Uh, will help to alleviate a lot of those concerns, and it will make parsing through the items a lot easier in this new uh, system. Um, Lady Ava 2016 mentioned, or actually brings up something that I think we should uh, talk about, which is, would it be possible to toss a different icon on the map when, uh, when uh, specific, like, uh, greater, greater axes and things like that drop? Uh, are there any plans for that um, in, in regards to, to changing some of that around? We really want to get feedback from players as you go through the PTR experience. Even the uh, the thing that we showed, like the, the Roman numerals, you know, mm -hmm. on the uh, attached to the uh, the item names on the ground, like even that's going through a bit of revision before it actually re is released mm -hmm. as part of the uh, the, the 1.4 uh, release moment. So like that's going to get a little bit better. But like I think that it would be good to get feedback to see how these things feel. And uh, it's something we'll continue to think about because we, we do want those moments to be exciting yeah. when they actually occur. Yeah. Um, Brian C22, uh, you say higher the rifts, the better the items. Are we talking about the equivalent to primals? 
So the and if people don't know, primals being a, a D three specific item yeah. that was super powerful. So mm -hmm. as you go, we're, we're not changing the rate at which like greater apexes, for example, could appear on like I power nine twenty five items, and mm -hmm. we're not raising the uh, the I power ceiling of items beyond nine twenty five as you're going deeper in the pit. Instead, it's more about like as you go deeper in the pit, you're going to get more legendary uh, like uh, uh, drops. So this is going to give you more options, more chances of getting things that uh, yeah. that have uh, like better greater uh, apex potential. You know, so that's that's really more the way that we're handling that. And then, of course, the master working materials that we're using to power and juice up all of your items. Uh, Drummer Boy had asked specifically, hey, can you do groups with uh, in the pit? Uh, yes, yes, you, you yes, can you party groups. in the pit, yes. Yes, okay. Uh, and then, let me see. Uh, we'll be seeing any, like, clan updates, social updates. This is another big question that a lot mm -hmm. of people are asking about from, from within chat. Are there any plans on that uh, or any progress regarding that? So uh, we have been talking a lot internally on the team about social updates and things we want to talk about soon. Uh, but we we definitely hear the uh, mm. the the desire from the players that we're they're looking for more ways to like kind of get into groups and to form parts of people online as opposed to just to, like talking in local chat or trade chat or trying to like reach out that way or just going to Discord or just going to external sources. So we do have thoughts on things we want to do to kind of help uh, that process along. Uh, but uh, nothing to announce for season four at this yeah. time. Yeah. Um, I know there's also um, there, there's some comments about like um, uh, the store, the shop, and things like that with related to items. There's actually I know um, last time we had a campfire chat, I had mentioned like, hey, our our team that that focuses on like the product team has been taking in a lot of feedback. Um, there's actually going to be some some changes here coming really yeah, soon. Same map, same mobs, terrible uh, content new, will never improve uh, the game. For people to use some of the only with seventy dollars new DLC. Uh, this game was a scam from the for, start. Some really cool looking. Uh, um, uh, sets and stuff that for or I think for we're gonna character. I'm, I'm gonna pull also, I believe, everyone the, um, the from the campfire chat once they get here but that, that I, I think yeah, that I, most I think people are pretty pleased with the changes class, so you, if you were like um, the $70 I mean it's a sunk cost at this time you're not getting it back right you already paid the $70 the fact that they're improving the game I think is good you will be able to choose I think most people agree that this is better I think that may be more significant changes I know coming with the store that that team has been like it could be better so we'll, we'll but at the moment we'll see more uh, i think it's pretty here, it's um, a soon. it's a pretty good step um, or leap in the right direction let me see if i can get any more uh questions cast or diff and that PvP boss is, at the end of the pits rewards. was had new moves at least uh, that, nothing I, I else on PvP see. right now the focus of this update has been predominantly on the core underpinnings of our like our sarpg experience yeah. trying to make sure that it feels like there's a really exciting gear chase for players to pursue once they get to a certain level of power that we have done a lot, like what Charles talked about, like condensing down a lot of our affixes to make items just feel more engaging in general. Uh, going through all of our various classes, trying to open yep. up a lot of new build opportunities. Party in the so pit. Kind of like trying, like what we're really trying to do here is respond to a lot of the, the really, really big major feedback we've been hearing, honestly, since launch, yeah. and try to like get a, a good, big, sizable update for players to go and engage with there. But we didn't spend time in features like PVP, you know, and because and, 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 that would distract us from what we're really trying to focus on at the time instead. These but, things yeah. are going to fundamentally change everything, though, like PvP as well. Like how, how, how you yeah. make yeah. a character, the builds you make, how you do everything fundamentally is going to change from this. Right. So this was the big thing we're trying to nail, and all of our eyes were focused on that. That's right. Uh, Dristren asks, I know Uber Uniques cannot be tempered, but can they roll greater affixes, and can they be mastercrafted? Yes. Yes to both. Uh, on both accounts. Uh, yes. Uniques can roll greater affixes, just the same as uh, Ancestral <laughs> That's Legendaries. That's broken. It doesn't need to be Ancestral, so it's World Tier 4. Same that is four. broken. Uh, same concept with uh, Uber Uniques. And I did the, love the, the game spark, for the one month. System. I paid $100. Uh, the next content will be 70 uh, It comes with an Uber... Or, sorry, I'd say Uber if you Uni haven't played it affix, since that one month graphic, silent, try the PTR. But, I mean, that's perfectly fair. Right, like, that you didn't enjoy the game PGI since then. I think well, a lot of people feel the same way. To alternate characters. Do I need to um, but I do think these improvements, they're free improvements. And they are undeniably improvements. What I mean by that is when... If you're playing a seasonal character and you want to play an I think your, if Blizzard, if they do like something that, wrong, also we should tell them that it's wrong, got, tell them how to fix power. it. But when they do something do right, we should acknowledge hardcore and that not hardcore. what that's they've right. done well. is that's good right. and reinforce it so that they do thing. more good things. Um, even on the seasonal realm. Yeah. Awesome. So um, but I, I understand where you're coming from. delivered in this this campfire. Well, you could get to level 100 now faster than you probably got to level 60. But... It's important uh, in, stuff the, in the preseason, it, I mean, it seems four, like it's gonna be like um, ten hours PTR now. Coming up, but for those that I mean, not that it, level one hundred is any on April second through April 9th. 
uh, and it'll be on PC Battle.net only. So players who uh, want to help test things out, provide feedback, Please do so. We'll be checking all our, you know, our social channels, Reddit, the forums. The forums will yeah. actually have. Maybe, I mean, you could try the PTR. It's not going to cost you anything. Uh, It'll take you right into Endgame. This you can see if you like it or not. Season three is going to be extended because we want to make sure we grab all the feedback. This is just um, reiterative, PTR, right? And all the feedback from the community, and we have enough time yeah. to actually implement cool. that. Cool. Well, let me know what you think. Four. So. Uh, season three is also, gonna be extended if you're on to YouTube, May 14th. If you haven't uh, liked four, the course, stream, that's a kind of a YouTube only thing. Well. Uh, and we'll be, be really swell if you could like the stream. On, uh, what season four is specifically. I guess I should ask that after. And all the details that we actually talked about here today will be in a very extensive blog along with all the patch mm -hmm. notes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All the like small things like the, the class changes uh, that Adam actually wasn't it's able small. to get through. Yeah. Small changes. Yeah. 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 Small. <laughs> Uh, uh, we'll be in those patch notes as well. Um, and we still actually do have uh, another update that will be coming out next week for Diablo 4. And this Thank one you, has King actually Titan. been long awaited uh, because this one does include um, some big quality features on the, on the graphics side for uh, D4. Uh, and we will have a blog that will be talking about it. Um, as you guys know, ray tracing is coming to D4 uh, and they'll be hitting next week on March 26. Um, so people uh, will be able to Maybe if you've got it, if you've got a rig for it, you can totally uh, turn up all your your graphical settings, get ray tracing with D4, um, and we'll also be talking about how uh, console players will also be able to uh, take advantage of it in our blog next week. So lots of stuff coming down, um, and lots to talk about. Again, next week we'll have all the information on blog and uh, patch notes. Um, but we thanks again. Yeah. Everyone, thanks yeah. again, Joe Shelley, who's also still in the room over here. <laughs> thanks, wait, Joe. Uh, Gave you a dislike and, on YouTube? Wait, you can uh, dislike yeah, the stream? Shout out to Don't do that. Community. Thank you guys again for all the wonderful feedback that you guys have been providing. Um, and we're really excited for you guys to jump into PTR, jump into all the Season 4 itemization, class changes, and of course our new endgame uh, changes as well. So uh, we will catch you soon. All right. And uh, yeah, next week. We'll see you with the, the blog and the patch notes. Thanks, guys. Thanks, thanks everybody. Uh, okay, let's, uh, okay, all right. You see this in the top right corner? They're coming. It's, uh, I want to get a pull up. this let's do like this this so I did try to get screen caps of, uh, of most of the stuff I'm trying not to distort the guys too much but um, let's see what happened Um, okay, it looks like they ended their stream. I don't think anyone got here yet. Let's check over on YouTube. Oh, I think the YouTube, the YouTube, uh, people are here. W, W, okay, wait, wait, wait. All right, YouTube people are here. Twitch, I don't know. Twitch is, Twitch is on its way. All right. I think the, the guys from Diablo... Uh, Twitch hey channel are here, Diablo, and uh, and everyone from YouTube is here as well. So so welcome everyone. Uh, you might be wondering why did Diablo put you here? Uh, I, and uh, I'm just some streamer that you probably don't know, and it's really not important. Uh, but I will say this: um, I got to see these updates ahead of time, and uh, and Blizzard asked us for our feedback, me and a couple other streamers. And we gave them our feedback, and they already made changes. This was just a week ago. They've already made changes uh, for what you saw today. Uh, so I think feedback is really important. And what I want to do with all of you that have come here is uh, is get your feedback, because I don't think there's enough opportunities for the community to get feedback. Like you don't need to know about me. You don't need to know about uh, you know uh, what I do. I want to make this game good. And all of you that just came from the campfire chat. We're going to go through and recap. I, I took screen caps, and if you missed anything, 
uh, we'll go through and, and we'll, I'll, uh, you know, I could take the poll down and go through everything. I'm going to do a quick summary and I want to get all of your feedback on, on everything that, that kind of happened. So you can vote on this by typing in chat on YouTube or on Twitch. Um, and the first one is just a simple one. Was the campfire chat overall, do you think it was a W or do you think it was an L? I'm going to try to reserve my judgments. Thank you, everyone. Oh, my gosh. So many people are following. Um, if you just joined on the, the YouTube, if you, if you want to give it a like, I'd appreciate it. I'm not going to ask you again, uh, but that really helps me. Uh, and everyone following on Twitch, you're awesome. Uh, I had to turn notifications off for this because there are a lot of people. But what I want to do is I want to get your feedback and I want to, I want to pass it on to Blizzard because that's one of the things that I get to do. And I think it's important uh, as a content creator to represent the community you know, that, that you content create in. So uh, the campfire chat, we just got over it. Poll's been active for about three minutes now. One's in chat. If it's a W, you can also type W. Takes either one or W. L, if the campfire chat was an L. Um, it seemed, and then I'll give my opinion. I'm going to give an overview. We'll poll, and then I'll, I'll give my opinion. I don't want to sway anyone on on what I think. Only complaint is that PTR is not on console. Yeah, that was that was. I'll say that's a, a a bit of a bummer. But I, I think that plans are for the future that they will uh, eventually bring it bring it to console. Hopefully, so. Uh, all right. So overwhelmingly, and now this is a bit of a biased crew. So with any poll, with any statistic, we wanted to call out that these are people that generally probably have an interest in, in Diablo 4. They wouldn't be watching a developer live stream if they weren't. You wouldn't hang out with some random Diablo streamer afterwards either if you really didn't care about the game. So it's a bit of a biased group, but overwhelmingly positive for the campfire chat uh, from, from this poll, which is good. So if we go through and let's just look kind of at, at everything that what we reviewed. So, oh yeah, the codex system, we'll get to it. Uh, okay, well, so the first announcement was, was that PTR is going to be on April 2nd. I think it's a great opportunity. If you haven't played the game since like season one, season two, to just jump in, you know, and, and just test the game out. But they announced that they're also delaying season three so that season three is going to have to last longer. And like I said, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sway you with with what I think, but let's let's uh, do another poll and say, you know, is is the PTR a good idea? Delaying the season a good idea. And we'll say one if you think it's a good idea for to run a PTR and delay the season. Or if it's a bad idea, I'll let it go for a little bit because I want to get your feedback before I give kind of my opinion here. And at first, it seemed like the stream in the live stream, there was a lot of people that were kind of upset by the fact that they're delaying season three. As as the votes come in, I, I will start talking about my opinion. Otherwise, it's just going to be a lot of downtime and, and no airtime. But I think that the decision to delay season three, listen, I don't want to play season three <laughs> any longer than, than I have to either. Uh, and I think most people can agree with that. Um, I'm, I'm ready for season three to be over, but I look at this a little bit differently. Um, my season three is going to end on April 2nd. <laughs> so actually my season got cut short. Like what, what I thought I was going to have to play season three got cut short. Once that PTR starts, like I want to get into the season four stuff as soon as possible. And the fact that they're even giving us a PTR is makes, makes me happy. And remember you can vote by typing uh, one, if it's a good idea, or you can type out good idea two, if it's a bad idea. Um, also, I think some of the reason why, the seasons that we've gotten so far have been a bit lackluster is because they feel a little bit rushed. They're trying to get the seasons out at the scheduled time that they want to. And, and, and as a result, we have the seasons that we, that we have, I'm going to read some of chat here. Um, better later than bad sooner. Right. So I'd rather have a better finished product then have something come out sooner that doesn't have all the features that we want. For perfect example, leaderboards. Now, leaderboards are a unique example because they got delayed and they, uh, the, 
the gauntlet was a little bit different because they got delayed and they also weren't great. Like, but if they had delayed the start of season three so that you could have leaderboards right at the start of the season, I would have been a lot more excited to play the gauntlet. I think a lot of people would. Uh, most people after a month or two of an ARPG kind of get bored with it and no longer really want to play. So I think that having that at the beginning of the season, having all of your features at the beginning of the season, not having these massive, massive mid-season updates, like it's great that the developers are listening and they make those mid-season updates, but I'd rather just have a killer season right at the start than have to wait for a mid-season update personally. So I think it's a good idea. Um, and, and someone said that disappointment doesn't mean it's a bad idea, right? People can be disappointed that season three is going to last longer. Um, but still think it's a good idea to have a PTR. And, and I think that's that's perfectly fair. So the game is boring. I left D4 due to many da dang nerfs. Well, we're going to get into the itemization next. I think it's it's literally the next thing. Um, and I think you can't deny that the game is not, you're not your power is not getting nerfed. Like these itemization changes are nuts. Let's get into it. So I think overwhelmingly, again, people think it's a pretty good idea uh, to, to have the PTR and delay the season as a result. So this was the overview of the itemization. They went over base item update. Each one of these was kind of like a banger uh, of things. And, and you could say that, you know, a lot of this stuff, maybe it should have been in the game already. But the fact is it wasn't. And now it is going to be. So I, I see these things and it, it kind of makes me want to play the game, but the, we, we got base item updates, additional updates just to items in general, the codex of power, tempering, greater affixes and master working to get right into it. Uh, the base item updates. And this is, if you, if you didn't see, you know, the, the stream, this is kind of just a review. We'll see, um, this is kind of getting cut off. Okay, uh, smaller affix pool, more relevant and potent affixes. I mean, I mean, this is this is all good. You're not gonna get anything besides sacred in world tier three, and you're only gonna get ancestral in world tier four. I thought that that was already the case. Uh, but then affix values are punchier and uh, and can be felt. So in, in addition to that, they're making the additional updates where. Everything you find now at monster level 95 plus is going to be 925 item power, which is kind of bonkers because now like just farming the overworld, the stuff is really weak content and everything you find is going to be basically perfect item power. It kind of diminishes like why you would want to run nightmare dungeons, but they're still kind of forcing you to run nightmare dungeons for the glyph XP. I think glyph XP right now is the only, is like one of the only gated things in the game. And then plus everything that's going to be gated in the pit, but glyph XP, you're still gonna have to run these nightmare dungeons, but now they're not, they're not going to be the only place that you can guarantee these 925 item powers. Gem simpler. That's, you know, I think an adjustment with, the, that goes hand in hand with the last one. They're just simplifying all the aff affixes. So gems are, are, are safe from that as well. Uh, salvage crafting uh, and rewards all retuned. So they, they reduce the amount of items like crafting materials. There were so many of them. I couldn't even keep track. Uh, forgotten souls from whispers, rare drop globally from elites. This is good because we're talking about gating aspects right gating things right like this is undeniably a good change um hell tides just always felt like a chore to me so being able to hopefully sustain forgotten souls elsewhere is 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 a good one but i think for this one the the thing that i'm curious about is because I, I don't know where i stand do, do we like 925 power from anything like area level 95 plus I'm, I'm curious about that one so let's get a pull up and uh and i want to talk about it too like let's have an active discussion in in chat once i get this poll going is 925 from all 95 plus mobs a good thing okay 
while that goes let's let's have a conversation uh so so what do we think we we like it one a lot of people are saying yes yeah i mean we're talking about hell tides feeling like chores right well they kind of felt like chores because you knew the items you were finding were kind of garbage well okay so it's 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 more split than uh some of the other it's it's definitely more split than some of the other changes that they make. They're oversimplifying the game. This is this is big power creep, right? I think it's a problem of now they uh that they added greater affixes. Do you think you think greater affixes what well, is what like too much to the power creep on the power creep side? I would rather have a loot filter, <laughs> yeah. Well, reducing the amount of items I do think that this is going to help with like not have the fact that we don't have a loot filter. I would love to have a loot filter. I am pro loot filter. I've been asking for a loot filter since beta. Um, I, I like they said that they weren't going to do a loot filter because they're doing all these itemization changes. Right. And they want to see, you know, where the game is at the end of the itemization changes. But I don't see how a loot filter could ever be a bad thing, especially in a modern day ARPG. But I th I do think that the changes that they make, that they have made already, are going to significantly reduce the importance of a loot filter. I would still like to have one though. <laughs> yeah, so we haven't gotten into the greater affixes yet and master crafting, but we will talk about the power creep there. Like, yeah, this is this is just the tip of the iceberg, I think, when it comes to the amount of uh, you know, power now that you're gonna feel in uh in the, the future state uh Diablo 4. So uh what 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 do other people think? The drop isn't the power creep thing, the other changes kind of are, yeah. What do we think about Nightmare Dungeons now, now that everything drops 925? There's going to be a lot of other RNG with items, so always having 925 is good. Right, so, okay. So then we're saying that all of the RNG, instead of being placed on finding the items, is now enhancing your items, which is what is going to come, come next. Right, because even your 925 items only have three affixes, which we are going to see next. All right. Um, oh, wait, we've got... Okay, so Codex of Power was next. I think we can all, like, just Ws in chat. Like, Codex of Power changes is a massive W. This, there, there's no need to even pull. Like, if you have a problem with Codex of Power right now... Put an L, because I just want to see. Does any, let me know, but and you're not trolling, like unironically have a have an issue with this. You could say the only L is that this wasn't in the game already. L mugshot? Mugshot, do you have a reason why this wouldn't be good? Being able to keep health tide currency between health size is still such a terrible thing. Like you don't want to keep currency in between health tides? W for sure. Boring loot should be a small chance for platinum to drop. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. There should be some achievement in the season outside of like just your battle pass to get platinum. Or there should be a way to earn anything in the shop in game if you're committed to playing the game. Uh, there, there should be a way to do it. Um, it it could be tough. It could be difficult. But it shouldn't be only locked behind money. There should be some other way to do it. I, I agree. Earnable platinum. But anyway, Codex, W, move on. And nobody had really an argument against that. Okay. So, and, and if you don't know, the Codex of Power changes. Now you're only going to have to find an affix once and you can apply it to as many items as you want. And if you find it multiple times and you find upgrades, now you're... Every affix is going to be in the Codex of Power and upgrade with each higher item you find. Right now, if you look at my characters, they're filled with multiple perfect affixes because I don't know if I'm going to upgrade my item, if I'm going to you know, find a different affix. So the majority of my stash issues come from this. So this Codex of Power 
change is going to completely fix a lot of the stash issues that I personally have. Um, and I might even be able to play another class besides the rogue, but when does this patch drop? PTR is April 2nd. You'll be able to play all of this. The season itself was like second week of May, something like that, that the exact date is escaping me. But uh, this, you're not going to have to wonder anymore. Like, am I going to find an item upgrade? You know, that I don't want to use my perfect affix on this item because I'm, I might find an upgrade later. Now you find a perfect affix, you can just put it on every every item that you find. And I don't have a, I, I don't have any issue with that. I don't think that that's even power creep. That's just convenience. May 14th. Thank you. May 14th for season four. All right. So those were the codex of power changes. Base item upgrades. So we've gone from four affixes down to three now, only on legendaries. Rare items only have two. And rare items, you cannot get to five affixes. Rare items will only have four affixes max if you if you temper them, you know, by making them legendary and whatever. Uh, so legendary items now is pretty much all you're going to pick up. Rare items are completely useless. Until you, I mean, until you get your legendary items, rare items have no purpose in the game. Uh, so this was a bit of an issue when we, we think about trading. Uh, but then with the caveat here, they said that they are opening trading now to legendary items and unique items, which is kind of crazy. Like trading is, is a thing now in Diablo four, you can trade just about everything. The only miss is Uber unique. You cannot trade Uber uniques. Uh, and item drops have become reduced. So you're not going to find as many items. So this, I mean, it just looks a lot cleaner. I will say it looks maybe a little bit boring, right? The, the stats are now very, very basic, but it was too much before anyway. Like I spent so much time at the end of a dungeon, just looking through my inventory and not killing mobs. So this I think is, is good for the longevity the affixes on these base items are boring, but the master working or the tempering affixes actually look a lot cooler. So what do we think? You think it's cleaner? So here, before, after, let's see. The last, the last poll, we were pretty split. So at least more, more than before. I think this one might be more unanimous, but which do you like more before or after? All right, one's, one's in chat uh, for before, two, if you like, after. If you're looking at this right now. So this is the, the main changes to your the base of your item. The, uh, the affixes aren't as interesting, <laughs> but interesting doesn't necessarily mean good. Like this is all of your damage on Tuesday. Uh, you know, damage while wow, vulnerable under a trap. Those are the affixes that they got rid of and they kept the heavy hitters. And they also increased them too. So these are higher than they were before. Like you couldn't get 83 of a main stat on a one hand before, but now they've, it's like almost doubled. It looks like. So you only get three, but they're twice as good each. And then you can improve them later, which we'll, we'll go on. It's a, a lot of you like after what's with some of the feedback. If the different affix actually worked before, but ease of farming end game straight damage buff versus random stats. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And for a think of a new player coming into an ARPG that maybe hasn't, hasn't played before. Uh, and they look at these two items, which are they going to have an easier time interpreting, you know? So we like, we like before, I, I'm sorry. We like after, which is number two. Not, not many people said they liked before, but less total affixes now. Uh, and they got rid of the conditional ones. Yes, but they added in and we'll we'll move on to the next one. Twos are probably all console players. You you liked one better. Dork pimp. See the, the thing about the old affixes that they're getting rid of 
it's just a bunch of different ways of saying the same thing, right? It's all just damage, but under a different condition. Like, why not just have damage all the time? What do you like about, what do you like about before more? Like, I mean, you clearly, you had to think about it more. Less affixes more. It's less affixes at first. But ultimately, which we'll see with tempering, you're going to get to five affixes. So you end up getting more. And the item is more of a journey, as they said, right? But I'm, I'm curious why, uh, like what you liked about one. I don't believe that you don't like it. I'm just kind of curious. They need to make the game attractive to new players. So making it more easy to understand is also the goal. Yeah. I mean, I think Diablo 4 is a very entry-level ARPG. If you want a more complicated ARPG, there are other, you know, ARPGs out there. Same thing, a different name for a different class doing the same thing. Yeah. I like changes, but the threat is always oversimplification. Well, I, I, I agree. Like this is a lot more simple and more boring <laughs> than, than this, but in the end state, right, which we're going to get to. I think that's what we should compare it against. What is your end state item going to look like? And I think even though they made the entry level of your item more basic, I think the end result is, well, we'll get to it, is 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 different. So we'll move on. But I, I appreciate the dialogue back and forth. And, and I do want to get everyone's uh, opinion. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm missing like responses. You can still reroll one affix before tempering. Yes. Yes, you can reroll. All right. Next up is tempering. So tempering. With tempering, this is a way to add affixes onto your, your legendary items now. Right. So your legendary items are only going to have three affixes now, but you can add from each of these six categories. Uh, you can add two affixes. They must be from different categories. So if you go offensive, then your second has to be utility, mobility, you know, it all depends on the item, but amulets have the a big range of, of affixes. And these categories are the same as like legendary affix categories, it seems. So you can choose uh, from two of these and you're going to get, you know, a random rolled affix from each of the categories. Uh, and you get like these little plans um, that have the, the recipes on it to, to be able to do this, right? So the end state now is an item that has five affixes with some interesting stuff. So a lot of the, there's a lot of complaints around the complexity of the skill tree in Diablo 4 saying that it, it is very um, you know basic. If we, we look at it, there's really not a whole lot of options. But I thought something that they did that was interesting here was uh, the skill changes that they've sort of incorporated into, into this. Like you can go for affixes that affect your skills or you could go for like mobility affixes. Or, and really, I mean, it, it, it is your way to customize an item to a level that we really never had before. Um, and then also it kind of just reminds me of crafting in, in other games, which we really didn't have in in. Diablo 4 outside of enchanting at the uh, at the occultist. So um, I would say the caveat of this is that it's completely random and there don't there doesn't seem to be any way to guarantee, you know, which of these affixes you're going to get. So in all likelihood, you could break an item. You have five tempering durability, so you can roll five times. And after that, whatever affixes the item has, it has. So do we, I think for this one, like obviously it's good to have these new things in the game, but after this one, I'll say, do we like that it's completely random or do we wish that there were a way, if you're a Path of Exile player, uh, for something like uh, the, the workbench crafting, something that you could guarantee an affix if you paid like five times the price, right? Say you use all five of your durability, but you have, or, or you use two durability and you have a 50% more chance or you use three durability and have a twice the chance, right? To get the actual affix that you want. So I'll say, I'll put the poll up. Um, 
Should tempering be 100% RNG? I'll say yes or no. Uh, should tempering be 100% RNG, yes or no? So this is the affix that you get as a result of tempering is completely random. Like you can obviously choose between your categories, but which affix it gets is a random roll. Should there be a way at an additional cost to guarantee or more closely guarantee an affix? You could pick an affix for one tempering. If you want a better roll on it, it'll cost two. That's, that's a little bit different. Or an, introduce a new currency for a better chance. Additional cost to reduce the randomness would be fantastic. What if you could only get one temper, but it's a guarantee that it's the temper that you want? You miss a whole extra affix, but if there's like that one build enabling tempering affix that we get from, from the scrolls, like, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't think half these people are understanding the poll. Um, how can I word the poll better? Uh, let's see. I don't know. I mean, it's it should it be luck based or should should it not be? Is like one in chat if you think tempering should be 100% luck. There's no way to improve those odds. Two in chat if you think that there should be a way at an additional cost to increase your chances of getting the desired ethics. That's it. It's one or two. Mostly, it seems like it seems like more on the verge of two. I feel like someone will find a way to break the game. I feel like with the 925 change, the luck is fine. I mean, that's a good point. Would make the game too easy. Just because it increases your chances doesn't mean it has to be guaranteed. It just increases your chances. But I, I totally understand that. But but yeah, I mean, and we also have the increase in 925 item drops, which is uh, good. Hopefully you'll have a ton of 925 items that you could com you could be tempering and uh, and, you, you know, you keep tempering them until you get what you need. Uh, but I don't know. Do we know like how? grindy is it going to be to attempt a temper in the first place i think remains to be seen same thing with like master working and uh and then also you have to consider um the empowered affixes that are going to drop so while 925 items might be coming up much more often we'll go to the next go to the next one uh we have this is master working. We have greater affixes now that are going to drop. So this is something that we've seen before in Diablo 3, kind of like primals. I think in primals, every stat on the item was a, a greater role. Uh, but this is kind of like exalted items in Last Epoch. Uh, but you have this chance now of rolling up to three Uh, greater affixes now on these legendary items. <laughs> There's also an indicator, but it, it it's this Roman numeral and it's it's literally the font that they chose is nearly invisible. I don't even know if I, I can't I can't zoom in on it, but the, the font that they've chosen is nearly invisible. I would I think I would like it to be a little bit more obvious um that that these have greater affixes, but I think this is I think this is um you know very very interesting. So I'll, uh, and, and again, now when we're talking about that RNG, what are the chances that you're going to be finding these greater affixes? You get a roll, you get an item and it drops three out of three greater affixes, all the greater affixes that you want. What are the odds that that's going to happen? It probably 
harder to find than an Uber unique, right? Three out of three greater affixes. Now for that item, would you want to be able to increase your odds of getting the right temper? Because you could brick the thing, like you, or you could just lose it. Or is that just, that's just ARPGs. We're playing a slot machine, you know, that's it. I think different people are, have different levels of risk aversion, right? So somebody may not be as as willing to to gamble on something like that, but uh, greater affixes I think are 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 interesting. Uh, do do we like greater affixes? I think probably. Let's see. Do we like greater affixes? Uh, one in chat if you like greater affixes. Two in chat if you don't. And let's see some some feedback. Uh, it's a three month season. Who cares if you brick it? But it'll feel like hell. Uh, feel a hell of a lot better when you don't. I mean that's that's totally fair. The game is already super easy. I think even with bad rolls on I all items, the game will be trivial. Um, I think you're. It, I, I agree. Like with these changes in the current game, the game is going to be completely trivial. That's a hundred percent. It already kind of is. Uh, but I think a like I think for season four, the verdict is still out because they're going to balance. They're they're gonna they're gonna balance a lot of the uh, the mobs, and then we're getting new bosses. All of that stuff will come. We'll we'll cover that. Uh, down the road. I'm just learning some of these changes. Miss most of the Diablo stream. Well, that's what I'm here for. So these are, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the highlight reel and you can always check out the, the stream itself, but this is the highlight reel and, and community feedback is kind of what, what the goal of this is. So we assume they're adjusting monsters. Yes, probably that I assume so too, Banton, but that was the patch that those were the balances that made the game so easy. Like I think that they over nerfed everything after the crit vulnerable damage change. And that's kind of what left us with season three and the kind of weak, weak enemies and bosses and Uber Lilith has like 20 million life now, but um, I hope they, I hope they do it right. And I hope the game is not trivial. I hope our decisions matter, but yeah, we're going to beta test it. Yep. That's, that's the point. That's the point of the PTR curious. I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a vibe check while we still have you. Um, will you be playing the PTR slash season four or one or the other? Uh, one in chat, if you plan on playing the PTR two, if you are not really interested in, uh, in testing it. I guess I should have had an option for no PTR, but I'm going to play season four. Yeah. <laughs> all, right, all, right, all right. All right. All right. We'll change it. We'll change it. Um, let's just do PTR. Good call. Okay. There you go. Will you play the PTR? We'll ask, will you play season four at the end? But see, I think a lot of the season four answers are probably going to be dependent on the PTR. But what I, the way I see the PTR is, and I'll talk about it now. Um, it's like, if you haven't played the game since season one launch, so a lot of people kind of got turned off from the game by then. We've been playing the PTR for three seasons. Uh, um, the PTR is a perfect opportunity to just get right into end game, right? Cause they're going to give you a level hundred character. They're going to give you mats. They're going to give you all that stuff. You just get right into end game and you can see if you like the end game of Diablo four now, again, like it's, it's, it's kind of free, right? Um, but, uh, some people say like, why doesn't blizzard just test their own games? Like someone said that, um, why, why are we the beta testers? 
uh, for, for Diablo four, like, why don't they just have their own beta testers? And I feel like that was always a thing back in the day. Maybe you had a lot of testers, but if you think about it from a business perspective, uh, when we had like open beta for Diablo four before the launch, they got more information about the game in probably the first five minutes of open beta, they could have paid a team of a hundred QA, you know, uh, QA devs, a year's salary, worked on it for a year. They got more play time in those first five minutes of open beta than a team of a hundred QA people would have had in a year of testing the game. And, and it was free. Like, it, like, if, if you're a business, and I'm very business-oriented, why wouldn't you have a PTR? Why wouldn't you... Like, you should release a finished product. But why wouldn't you take advantage of your very um, enthusiastic community to get in and test the game if, if you have that? PTR kills hype, Dork Pimp says. I think that while a PTR does remove some of the mystery, one, they can hold back the seasonal mechanic, right? Where this PTR is, I believe, is not, not going to include the seasonal mechanic. Uh, just the core foundation changes to the game. I think it does remove some of the mystery of a, of a fresh season. But what kills the hype more? Does killing the hype more, for the majority of people, does killing the hype more... Be, is that the the reveal of some of the core mechanic changes ahead of time? Or is it you get into the game and the things just don't work? I'll give an example. Uh, the Seneschal construct in season three. If you don't know, uh, in season three, the seasonal quest line, you get the Seneschal construct and you follow the quest line. When you got to like the first quest and you had to go to the... the the, the brazier or something and and you had to click on the construct you literally couldn't click on the construct and you could not advance the seasonal quest do you think that that was a hype killer more or do you th for, for more people or do you think more people would have had their hype killed if in the beta test we discovered that it was fixed before the season even came out? How many people do you think are even going to play the PTR and get the, the spoilers? Like you have to be pretty invested in the game to play a PTR, to follow the PTR, like to, to spoil all of the things. Most people aren't even watching the, the, the campfire chats. Like the majority of players aren't. The new season comes, they're just going to play it. The hype's not spoiled for them, but what they're going to get, the finished product, is going to be is going to be better. You're not going to find out the spoilers unless you're actively looking for them, right? I don't think there'll be any less negativity. Like, yeah. Yeah, like um I so you don't think that that if the season starts and everything works a lot better, you don't think that there would be less negativity? Like, I, I think that this res relieves a lot of potential errors from slipping through the cracks and we get a more polished product. See, now, what you're talking about is the vocal people that like to comment on everything, right? They're going to be in the PTR. You're going to be in the PTR. Like, if, if you're watching a developer live stream, you don't really care too much about spoilers like you're gonna follow whatever video if something's broken in the ptr somebody's gonna make a video about it and you're gonna find out about it because you're looking for it but there's people who aren't looking for spoilers and they're just gonna get you know a better finished product i think at the end of the day the only good thing in d4 is the multiplayer they didn't even talk about like social changes to the social aspects of the game which is kind of kind of a bummer um but we can talk about what wasn't covered uh, at, at the end because that, that's a good one. Like the social features really didn't get much love. So we're split. We're split 50-50. Who's going to play the PTR? Who's, who's not? I mean, I, I think that that's, that's pretty reasonable that people don't want to play the PTR. Um, all right. Let's go to the next one. Uh, master working. 
Okay, we already got the greater affixes. Uh, master working now. When you master work an item, uh, all of the stats are going to increase slightly. And then when you reach each interval of four, one stat is going to be randomly selected and get a massive boost. So this is replacing the honing system. It's a little bit different than honing. Uh, but it adds an extra layer sort of uh, of RNG and that that hype factor when you actually hit like a, a masterwork on an affix that you that you care about. So do we like masterworking? We'll go we'll go quick on this. Uh, do we like masterworking? Kind of reminds me of some other games, but we'll say yes or no. Um, and we lose honing in the process, right? So honing is gone. Do we like master working? One for yes, two for no. Still wish you could pick which one you wanted. Well, it's, it, this goes back to the RNG, right? All of this is 100% is RNG, right? So you could, you could almost have the same argument for, right, for master working as we did for tempering. Would you like a way to increase your odds or do you want it to just be completely random? I'll play for one week, maybe come back to the last epoch. This game is just so addictive. There's something about last epoch that makes it so addictive. I, I feel like it's because the monoliths are so short, like 60 seconds or less. It's so easy just to be like, all right, one more monolith, one more monolith. They took option three. They just didn't test it all instead of paying QA. That's why I had issues. This is more feedback on the PTR. I want to play PTR to finally play some real F and Diablo already. I'm excited for the change. Like I want to get in and, and, and test them out. Like what, I mean, what's the alternative is playing season three, which not, not too excited about season three. Um, but, or you could just always play other games, but I think with the changes, Diablo four is more closely resembling some of its competitors, which is good. PTR is the most fun about a uh, part of the season. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's fair. Like there is something to be said about discovering things for the first time when a season launches. Right. And that's all a PTR is. We're just discovering them ahead of time. Find out all the broken stuff. Uh, I'm confused. Did you say you could reset master working ranks? Did they not cover that? Master working improves the value of your current affixes. You can upgrade 12 ranks. Most ranks slightly increase the value of all affixes. Every four ranks, a single affix is massively upgraded. They said you can reset it. Yes, you can reset it. Yeah. So you, right. So in theory, you can't brick from master working, right? And it's reasonable to say like, are you going to master work an item that doesn't have the affixes you want? Like, any affix upgrade is probably going to be a good one. There are some that are better than others, but they're all going to be pretty good. And you can't technically brick it because for an additional cost, you can just reset your master working at, at whatever point. So you could just, you could brute force, you know, your four out of four in theory. It might take you a while, but it's possible. So that's fair. Technically, yeah. All these changes make me think of Last Epoch but you're crafting an exalt instead of finding an exalt. Yeah, well, I mean, you do kind of find exalts, right? So like, it, okay, so if you don't know um, Last Epoch, Last Epoch has items called uh, exalted items and they very closely resemble greater affixes. I mean, it, it is like lifted and shifted. Like it's, it's greater affixes. Basically in Last Epoch, now they have a range, the greater affixes in Last Epoch, Diablo 4, it's just guaranteed max stat. Even though they have a range, they're always going to be max stat. Um, but they do kind of drop as is, and then you craft onto them, right? Which you kind of still do in Last Epoch. Like, even if you get <clears throat> an exalted, you still might want to craft the other affixes that it has that aren't the exalted affix. Because you can't roll, you can't enchant into an exalted affix. It has to drop. So, and you can't change it to a different exalted affix or a greater affix. <laughs> Got me saying exalted now. Uh, but they do kind of drop the same. So like when it drops, it's an exalted, but then uh, you, you improve it from there, right? 
Yeah, greater affix is just an exalted affix. Uh, how many increasing stats bricks it? Uh, you, you can't you can't really brick it from increasing like from increasing the stats, uh, but you can increase them twelve times, and then it's it's done after that. So basically, you want to get like intervals of four on the specific affix. Like you don't want it to be too spread out. Because the intervals of four are where you're going to get your big boost. Uh, but that's master working. And then we got meaningful class updates. And if you don't think they're meaningful, just look at the slide. Like they are, they are meaningful because they've told us that they are. Uh, wish last epoch had that brute forcing option for legendaries. Feels so bad getting unlucky when crafting legendaries. Yeah, like you lose all of your uh, your forging potential. I mean, technically, you will lose all of your temper durability, which is forging potential in Diablo 4. Uh, so you can brick here, but for master working is where you can reset it, which is kind of nice. Uh, Tyrael's Might. A legendary armor from Diablo 2. Uh, it was in Diablo 3. I don't know how much use it got in Diablo 3, but uh, Tyrael's Might is coming to Diablo 4, which is cool. Uh, an interesting thing, and this is going to be an uber unique, uh, was the clarification that all of these features, masterworking and greater affixes, can also spawn on unique items. Um, the problem with unique items is that now they're only going to have a maximum of four affixes when all of your legendary items now have a possibility of rolling five affixes. So just there, basically every unique item in the game is now weaker than legendaries. Like they, the, the power has shifted more towards legendaries than uniques. Some uniques are still just going to be so good that they're going to be better than a legendary item. But the ability to have five affixes instead of four affixes is huge. What's cool is, though, that these unique items can also roll greater affixes and be masterworked. So it's, uh, it's, it's kind of interesting. Like some of these, like picture your max res to all elements. Like I don't know what the max is in Diablo 4. Is it 85 res, 90 res? Picture your max res to all elements on Tyrael's Might rolling as a as a greater affix and then you like 12 out of 12 master work it you're gonna be in invincible 80 yeah like you could probably get this up to like just max all res and it has damage reduction and all and all red like this is i feel like this is gonna be pretty good like defensive armor i don't know how strong the actual skill is gonna be I don't know if this was just scaling to like really low item power or what, because 900 kind of seems a little bit low. But anyway, Tyrael's Might's interesting. Yeah, you just walk, you just stand and fire, and you're invincible. More meaningful class updates. I don't. I, I like they couldn't go over all the class updates. It sounds like there's going to be a lot. Uh, but. What they showed was interesting. The rogue changes were, were not great. Um, the change to the uh, inner sight. I don't think I have a screenshot of inner sight, but for all you rogues out there, uh, inner sight, they just kind of unnerfed it. I don't know if you remember, but in the beginning of the season, it got nerfed for how quickly you could kind of build up your inner sight. Now they're saying, okay, you can build it up again. We're sorry we nerfed it. We nerfed it in the first place. Um, and then they're also giving you a damage buff, but that damage buff is just crit chance. It's not damage. So if you're playing like a precision build, you really don't get the damage buff from crit chance. It's kind of a dead stat um, because you're you're basically guaranteeing all your crits. But anyway, that's that's just the rogues. I won't get too into it. Uh, I was kind of disappointed that that was what they showed <laughs> for the rogue rework when like some of the other classes got kind of banger updates uh the rogue one is really a miss uh, i don't think anyone's going to use that new inner sight uh but uh, i digress <laughs> yeah exactly play a lot of rogue but what's inner sight yeah you're, you're still gonna it's it's a um what's it called 
it's a uh, it's a key passive. No, not a key. Pass. It's a specialty instead of like combo points or preparation. Uh, health side updates. The health side updates were interesting. So we have increased density. I'm gonna just go over what what they were, right? So we have increased density, a new threat meter that builds up on killing monsters and then spawns a bunch. Lots of ambushes and dynamic monster spawning. New content, rare summoning material drops during the health side. Use the summon, use to summon the Blood Maiden, a public event boss. And then there's many new mini events and harbingers to keep things fresh. I think improving health tides is good. The problem I saw with this, and let me know what you think. I will influence you here because I watched this whole thing. They, they did like a little playthrough and I did not see a single forgotten soul drop the entire time. Even from all these new bosses, new events, new monsters that are spawning. I don't think he ended up killing the blood maiden. So maybe the blood maiden was going to drop forgotten souls. I, like I'm looking at these explosions of mobs that are coming in and it's just cinders rune shards, which is that new material, which we know drops everywhere, but like should, should more forgotten souls drop in hell tide. Are you happy with the amount of Forgotten Souls that drop in Helltide now? Because it does, didn't look like that was changing. Like, you will get Cinders faster, so you can open chests faster. But I think if you were doing a Helltide, everyone was kind of opening up all the chests anyway. One in chat if you think more Forgotten Souls should be dropping in Helltides. Or two in chat if you think it's kind of okay and we don't, we don't need more Forgotten Souls. Density is great, but if density just means more cinders, like, I guess that just means you're going to be in and out of hell tides a lot quicker, which I'm, I'm fine with. Like the less time I spend in hell tides, the better. Maybe I'll want to spend more time in there now if they're dropping 925 items guaranteed and I'm finding a lot of, you know, greater affix rolls. Maybe I won't mind it so bad, but if I'm going to hell tides, it's because I need forgotten souls. So if we can find forgotten souls everywhere, then the purpose of Helltide should be, okay, that's where I go when I want to load up on forgotten souls. I can maintain with what I find naturally now with the increases from elite spawns and um, where else? Um, whispers. Whispers and, and uh, elite spawns now have a chance of giving you forgotten souls. But if I go to Helltide, I want it to rain Forgotten Souls, personally. You can do Grim Favors by getting them off Elites in Helltides. Yeah. I think it was not just Elites in Helltides. It's any Elites. Hate running out. Yeah. Like, when you're re-rolling, I guess this is a question I'd like to ask. Because this seems to be different from, from people that I, like, that, uh, that I that I ask and I know I'm a lot different than others uh, when it comes to this, but uh, I guess which material are you always out of for re-rolling? This is a bit confusing, but stick with me. It costs essentially like three main things when you're re-rolling. There's gold, there's veiled crystals, and there's Forgotten Souls. Which is your bottleneck when it comes to crafting? Like, which do you need more of? Are you, is it costing you too much gold? Is it costing you too, are you, are you always constantly out of Forgotten Souls? Or are you constantly out of Forgotten Crystals? Because I hear a lot of people I'm surprised nobody said Veiled Crystals yet. I hear so many people that say they don't have Veiled Crystals. So it seems like it's between Gold and Forgotten Souls. Well, the good news is that we're getting that Gold cap on re-rolling. Everyone's saying Gold and Souls. Nobody's saying Veiled Crystals. Interesting. 
I don't know where I heard that from. So it looks like leaning a little bit more towards Forgotten Souls. This is where I'm at too. I I would fall into number three. I I am definitely always lacking in Forgotten Souls. So I think the more opportunities to get them where I'm not forced into content like Helltides, the the better. Veil Crystals, you just get plenty from destroying items. Yeah. Season three, all of the above because all I did was run vaults. Well, you get some Forgotten Souls from salvaging. You get Veil Crystals from salvaging. Gold, you don't really get from vaults that much. I farm on my own mats and I'm never out of any of them. Well, you're just amazing. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. I am constantly out of Forgotten Souls because I don't really love doing Helltides personally, but I, I hope that that changes in the new season. All right, what do we have next? Uh, let's see. Okay, the pit. Um, I will give a brief overview and then I want to just get everyone's opinion on the pit. Uh, the pit essentially is a scaling dungeon. I don't want to compare it to anything because we have connotations with certain uh, areas and other and other games, but it is a scaling dungeon that you can, in theory, scale up to, you know, unbeatable level difficulty. Um, each each uh, each different tier that you go in is going to be increasing in difficulty, increasing in rewards as well. Um, uh, and some of those rewards that you can only get in the pit are uh, things for like masterworking, I believe. The masterworking materials you will only get from the pit. So in theory, as you're running through the pit, you are also simultaneously upgrading all of your items with those materials that you get from the pit. How grindy it's going to be to masterwork all 12 out of 12 remains to be seen. That'll be in the PTR. But uh, as far as the pit goes, um, that is sort of it at its, at its basic. Once you're done, you have a certain amount of time to clear it. Uh, once you have uh, cleared enough mobs to fill up your meter, uh, you are then sent to a boss room. And uh, the boss from the pit looked different from any boss I had seen in the game, at least the moves that it used were not moves that I have seen so far in Diablo four. So it's not just tomb Lord, you know, it, it seemingly from the one example that we saw, it was, it looked like a rogue. So it looked like it used the rogue character model, but it didn't use any rogue skills that I noticed. One of them looked kind of like a multi-shot, uh, but the, the skills all looked completely different. It looked like a sort of unique boss fight just to the pit. So I will say, with that said, do you like the sound of the pit? Uh, one for yes, two for no. If you like the sound of the pit and, uh, and, and you're excited to kind of get in there and uh and run the pit i remember doing tier 10 okay so you're you're thinking about abattoir of zir and right i didn't want to um i don't want to compare it to anything else yet but now as oh oops uh the poll there you go pulls up one for uh, one for yes you're excited about the pit two for no if you're not excited about the pit you can also type the words but three need more info that's that's fair that that the that, that's fair. I, I could have added that, but I didn't. But um, yes, so it could be compared to something like Abattoir of Zir. Um, the thing is, I'll say that that looks different is, um, you know, the scaling per level doesn't seem to be as severe as uh, Abattoir of Zir, where um, even the first level was very, very difficult. And then each one got exponentially difficult, more difficult. Like this seems like a more smooth transition it, um, at first glance. But yes, even the boss at the end kind of looked like a Bloodseeker from Abattoir of Zir. 
Uh, other people that have like other things that it's been compared to are greater rifts from Diablo three. Like if you know greater rifts from Diablo three, um, that is, uh, what a lot of people, I think myself included, you know, kind of <clears throat> were reminded of when they saw, uh, the pit. I think he's just one of the bandit dungeon bosses. Yeah. I mean, it looked like a new boss. I've never been more excited about a pit. A lot of people like the sound of the pit, which is good. Uh, I mean, it's, at the end of the day, it's just another option that you can do in end game. Now it seems like the master working is kind of locked behind the pit. So you will be forced to do it, but it looked interesting enough, right? It is, it is something new to do. It's not just the same old nightmare dungeon. It's not the same old hell tides. Like it's just another option in end game that you can do and kind of, it's a measuring stick as well for your build. Um, kind of like Avatar of Zir was, but at a at an even you know more granular level. I think this is a great opportunity for another leaderboard as well. The um, if we look at it, like the how high in the pit can you can you go right? Like leaderboards in season three, I think were a little bit of a disappointment just because. I think the gauntlet is fine. I think it's a fine idea. I think it's fun actually, but that's just the kind of like player that, that I am. I like doing that stuff. But I think the issue with the gauntlet is that it's the only leaderboard that we have. Like there wasn't a level 100 leaderboard. There's no type of tier leaderboard here. Like the gauntlet, nobody would complain about the gauntlet if it were just one of multiple leaderboards that we have. The fact that it's the only leaderboard, the fact that it was delayed, I think is the issue that people are having with the gauntlet, not the actual content itself. The content itself is actually pretty refreshing for an ARPG. I think it's, it's, it's new. Uh, they, they took a risk on it. This is, you know, recycled, uh, greater riffs and, and uh, things that we've seen before, but that's also a proven, you know, end game system that that's good. But I thought the gauntlet took a lot of, you know, a, a lot of risks and, uh, and I think it can be perfectly decent. It just can't be the only leaderboard. So I am very open and looking forward to hopefully more leaderboards in the future that aren't just the gauntlet, even though I think the gauntlet is pretty good. Uh, so big opportunity there with the, the pit and let's see what the final results were. Uh, overwhelming like the sound of pit. So that's pretty good. Yeah, what's up, Slaydra? Big fan of using the old W's? Yeah. I mean, let's... Okay. Like, it is good that these systems are coming to the game now. And we can't deny that they make the game better. But at the same time, a lot of people say they should have been in the game at launch. Especially if it's just something that you're pulling from Diablo 3. Um... And I think that that's a totally fair argument, but the game already launched. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't go back and change it. All we can do now is celebrate that these things are coming and that we're excited about them. So there's really, it, it, it's, it's very counterproductive, right? To go back and, and just harp on, well, at launch, we didn't have this. Like the game could be good now. You just gotta, you just gotta give it a try. And uh, unfortunately, I think with the negative negative feedback that Diablo 4 has gotten. Some people might not even give it a try, but there's no better no better time than the PTR. You have the little littlest bit of time investment to get in and actually test out the game with the uh with the free boosts and everything. Um then to just try it out and see if you if you like it again. Just get carried by shrines and gauntlet. Yeah, it's kind of just like a that that was that was probably maybe my only dat like the only thing I don't like of the gauntlet is that it's not really about your build. It's just about maintaining up time on shrines. So that, and I think that's a very fair uh, knock on, on gauntlet. I think anything that detracts from kind of like your, your build and it just becomes a shrine palooza. That that's kind of strange implementation of, of that whole thing. But um, I, I do like the idea of like just a timed run and, and the leaderboards for that. But anyway, when the expansions release, anyone's going to, everyone's going to play D4 again. 
Uh, got a meeting. Love you, bro. Take care, man. Glad to see Diablo. Oh, thanks, Daddy Diesel. Uh, let's see. Yeah, good news is many people already own it. Oh, that's a good point. You've already invested in this game. You might as well want it to be good, right? So uh, this is the materials that you get for masterworking from the, the pit. So let's take the pull down. Uh, there's three different levels of it, I believe. And, uh, as you get higher, you're going like, as you're master working your item, my guess is that the first four levels, because if you, if you notice that these are the same colors as like the, uh, let's see, these are the same colors as the colors of the affixes blue was like tier one, yellow is tier two. I'm guessing if you get 12 masterworks all on the, or if you get all three of your upgrades on the same affix, then it's gonna be like this legendary color. But my guess is the first four are gonna cost the abdicite, which is only gonna drop up to a certain level in the pit. Then the next four is probably gonna cost Ingolith. This is just my theory. And then the last four, if you want to master work from like eight to 12, then it's going to cost this last one, which I didn't get a picture of it in the clip, but it's like this legendary color one. Game is coming to Game Pass. That's a good point. Pit's good. You like the pit? Yeah, I think it seems like most people like the pit. So that's good. And uh, then the boss ladder updates sure why this is called ladder, but this is, this is just another, right? I guess it's ladder because it's building on top of the current bosses in the game. Right now there's those like Uber bosses is what they're called, but I don't know. I, I think we should just stop calling all the bosses Uber bosses at this point, maybe except Lilith, Uber Lilith, uh, because they're just so easy to kill. Even Uber Duriel, like these should be the new Uber bosses, right? Now, those are all level 100 versions. So Gr Grigori, those are only level 70. But like uh, Duriel, Varshan, all of those bosses, they're either 75, 85, 100. They're all extremely weak and should not be considered Uber bosses. They just die instantly. Uh, these, I think, are now the real Uber bosses, which we will only be able to fight also by getting these materials from the pit. Uh, but I love an Uber boss fight. I don't know how you guys feel about it, uh, guys and girls, but what, what do we think about level 200? I, I wonder if these will be in the PTR. I'd love to take a whack at them. Um, and I think this is a win, a easier to acquire uh, boss materials. A lot of people complained about the, the whole cycle of, of boss materials, but, um, Real Uber bosses. Do we think that that level 200 versions will be the real or will be a real challenge? Okay. So this one is going to be a little bit different. Not whether or not you like the idea of the Uber bosses, but do you think that these are going to actually be a challenge? Unlike any of the bosses we have now, maybe like launch Lilith is probably the most difficult boss that we had, but one in chat, if you think that level 200 versions will actually finally be the challenge, or if you think that they're just going to be weak, did they make Lilith a lot easier? They did make Lilith a lot easier. So Lilith is so much easier than she was at launch of the game. I think they reduced her life pool like, 10 times almost like it's one tenth of what it was uber butcher a tier 100 butcher kind of hurts depends on your build if you have a non-optimized build they're hella hard well i think even like the regular bosses are kind of hard if you don't have an optimized build but they've introduced a lot of power you know, through all this stuff. I have one question. Where's my hellfire torch and Nihilus? Maybe that's coming in season five. <laughs> mm. 
the flying skulls are a pain. Yeah. I mean, you still, the, the thing with Lilith is they reduce her life pool, but they just made her a guaranteed one shot. Like I had made a build that could tank three waves from Lilith. And now you can't even tank one, no matter what. It's just like instant one shot. Should be easier slash more options to make a great build this season. Yes, that's a good point. I think it is going to be a lot easier just for players to theory craft of their own as well. Not that Diablo four was too advanced, uh, you know, of a, of a game to theory craft, but still a lot of um, like my, my build guides got a, a lot of video uh, views. Like we got this. This is basically just from build guides in Diablo 4. So, like, um, I guess it was still too complicated. Uh, but it should be a lot. Like, I, I just feel like it should be so much easier to try different builds and different things. We're, we're going to open that up after after we're done, uh, the, the review. Uh, but I want to talk about some of the things that they didn't discuss on in the, in the PTR. So... Um, in the in the PTR or in season four that have been lacking. Um, one of the things that they didn't mention would love an offline mode. I, yeah, I hear that a lot too. Uh, Joe Joey P said all bosses will gain a small chance to drop Uber uniques. Okay, they did announce that. That was on Twitter but not in the presentation. Yes. So every boss now will have a chance of dropping an Uber unique. So before a lot of people were complaining that it's not too low of a chance either. Like it, it's, it's a pretty decent chance. So uh, there, a lot of people were complaining that they had to farm these bosses that they didn't care about their drops, right? You're farming Grigori a hundred times to go farm Uber Duriel, and you're not excited about anything that drops from him because it's not guaranteed 925 and well, it will be now. Uh, and, you know, it's items that you don't care about. You only care about that Uber Unique. It's, it's a means to an end. Now you have a chance of dropping an Uber Unique off all of those bosses too, which is kind of nice because one, they're a lot easier. So you might have access to Uber Uniques earlier if you're not strong enough to kill Uber Duriel. Those bosses are even easier than Uber Duriel. Uh, and now they all have a chance of dropping an Uber unique as well as Uber Duriel. So cool. He said it in a tweet. Okay, cool. He just said it on Twitter, but yeah. Okay. We, we, they told us that update, but I guess they didn't in the, in the campfire chat. So yeah. What makes a boss Uber? <laughs> Uh, Uber boss just means it is a stronger version of the boss that you probably were introduced to at some other point in the game. I mean, that's what we use it for, right? Uh, so all of these bosses are just campaign bosses that they have empowered and given some additional moves and additional strength that now you fight again in the late game. Um, and that's what we were calling Uber bosses just because they were stronger versions of the campaign bosses. But now there's like ultra uber bosses which are level 200 which we've never seen before so and and now all yes all summon bosses yes so gregory yes sorry so those are considered uber like for the purposes any of those bosses that give material have a chance of dropping it i don't know if uber lilith does or not because she doesn't drop anything after your first time and she doesn't require materials but anything that requires materials to kill can drop an uber unique so think living steel gregory think varshan and the mass for varshan beast of, beast of ice you need materials for that okay then you can get an uber unique from it and then anything that you can farm past it in your private meeting with the devs and content creators did anyone ask about ssf what was their response um i can't talk about that meeting but SSF has come up before in feedback. And I think the devs have said that it's, it's something that they're like interested in. Um, I, I think they even did something in Diablo. Did they do SSF in Diablo three recently? Um, like one of the recent seasons that people liked. 
if they did it in Diablo three, it's, it's only a matter of time before it comes to Diablo four. I, I, I just, I think SSF an SSF mode is something that they're interested in. They just haven't gotten around to it, but that's a good point. Yeah. SSF mode wasn't mentioned today. Another one that wasn't mentioned was PVP and people feel very differently about PVP. So I, I'm going to ask is, is it time after what you saw today? Like, is it time for Blizzard to focus on PvP again? Or is the game just like not in a good place still and you, you would rather see other updates before like they go and, and work on PvP? Give us some PvP game modes, something else. One, if you think that it's time for Blizzard to give PvP some love, you know, they, they, they gave us PVP at launch and they haven't touched it since. Do you want to see anything in PVP change or get updated or, or a new PVP mode? Something like, I don't know, whatever Diablo Immortal has with the team, team death match, uh, all, all different kinds of stuff. It doesn't just have to be balancing for the current PVP, just like any, any PVP stuff. Or do they need to keep focusing on the, the base of the game? Not yet. More important stuff first. Yeah. So is it time for Blizzard to focus on PvP again? Overwhelming say no. We'll say, okay. Last chance. One, if you think that Blizzard should try to balance PvP. Two, if no. Uh, and then I'll answer other questions. Blizzard fixing PvP is a moonshot? Yeah. Capture the flag, for example. PvP won't work. At least if they make something locked like a mortal. I feel like 90% of people don't care about PvP at all. I think 90 is is probably under underestimated. I mean, it, at least in an ARPG. Like I, I I've PvP'd a lot in Diablo 2. It's something that I get a lot of enjoyment out of. But even in those games, the PvP communities are not big. Like they are always very tiny, but they're a very dedicated player base. Like they love what they love and they love pvp so th there is a dedicated community of pvpers that would like blizzard to give pvp some love but just as you see here you estimate 90 percent. like that's kind of where this poll is at right now like 90 percent of players don't really care about pvp just in this very small sample size but yeah um the other one where are the social features so think like matchmaking. Um, uh, enhanced guild features. Maybe uh, like more organized parties for raid bosses or world bosses, whatever, whatever, um, whatever challenges, or or even introduce raid bosses or something like that. Um, do we think? Should Blizzard focus on social aspects of Diablo 4? All right. Next poll, uh, social aspects. Uh, do we think that the social, like it's time for improvement on the social aspects? And I, a lot of people just like playing this game single player, I think in general. Yo, what's up, Marty Mar? Um, zoom out was great. Yeah, that was so funny. Uh, a lot of people just like, uh, playing solo. They don't really need the social element of it. Maybe they join up in a guild, but I think, uh, a lot of the feedback from, from before was that, you know, we don't really need the, the social features of the game, but then Blizzard introduced these like Uber bosses and it's, it's so much more meaningful to farm in a group as opposed to farming solo and you really get the most bang for your buck the most materials if you are in a group so should there be better ways to connect yourself with other players in sanctuary currently even if you want to trade an item like they just opened up trading so much but if you want to trade an item like where are you going to go to find an item you're going to have to go to a third party site like there's you don't even have there's not even a a, a bazaar or some sort of in-game trading aspect which i consider a social feature trading brings people together um 
We don't even have like an in-game trading feature. Um, yet you just opened up trading for all legendary and unique items. Like that's that's insane. Um, so like, do do we need more of this now, or or again, do we just focus on improving the game, improving the the solo experience, and then we can worry about people grouping up later? Group finder that makes you provide mats for the boss you're looking to run. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Armor. So say like, oh, okay, I want a group finder. I put up one mat. It you know once four people join, it takes all your mats automatically and it it queues you up. Yeah, I mean, that's just quality of life, right? Conditional group finder. Yeah, I think a group finder would be. Uh, would benefit the game uh, uh, very much. Guilds, I can't even tell who in the guild is active or inactive. People buying mats through websites. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> with open trade, like RMT is going to be a thing. But I don't, like, while I wouldn't participate in RMT myself, I don't think the fact that your game has RMT going on is necessarily bad. Like it just means that people want to play the game. It just means that people are interested in the game. Like nobody's RMTing for Hello Kitty Island adventure. Like they're, they're RMTing for games that they like and enjoy playing. And if, if you have an economy and open trade, like you're just not going to be able to avoid that. The only thing you could do is try to police it more. Like I think grinding gear games does a better job at policing RMT than other ARPGs, but But, um, like if people are, are like the bots and, and all that stuff and RMT was basically what kept D Diablo two afloat. And it's been a popular game for 20 plus years. And, uh, I don't know. You're an adult. You can do whatever you want with your money. In my opinion, if you want to spend it on pixels, I'm not going to stop you. I, I don't care if people are RMT, but like if it's against TOS, like, Sure, like don't do it, then police it. But don't punish players that want to trade just because some people spend money on pixels. Hello Kitty Island Adventure probably gets so you think people are RMTing Hello Kitty Island Adventure? Let me sell stuff on eBay. All right, well, that's taking it too far. Um, all right. So the social aspects, PVP, loot filter. Do you want to talk about loot filter? We kind of touched on it. But with the changes that you saw, does Diablo 4 need a loot filter? If you're in the YouTube stream, hit it with a like for me. I'd appreciate that. All right, what happened? Uh, does Diablo 4 need a loot filter? Uh, yes or no? After the changes now in season four, if we go into season four, do you still need a loot filter? You're going to see a lot less items. Greater affix items are going to be obvious at least. Would you still like a loot filter? Maybe need a need a loot filter is is a bit much, but I would say in the current state, season three, I need a loot filter. But with the changes that are coming, I think the reliance on a loot filter is is probably a bit low. People voting w with one, why? So it seems like. The loot filter is an unpopular opinion. I'm curious why, uh, you know, why, why do you think that Diablo Four needs a loot filter? Then, if for for anyone that voted yes, it's quality of life they should they should consider. Yeah, see the the the, the thing I see about a loot filter is um, like you don't have to use it, right? If you don't want to use a loot filter, but 
it kind of just enables other people to play how they want to play and only see what they want to see. Quality of life, that's a feature in any RPG. Yeah, I, 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 I hear you on that. I, I agree. So maybe need was strong, like I worded it strongly. Um, like, it, like, does it need a loot filter? That's good that a lot of people don't think it needs a loot filter, especially with the changes that are made. I think that's a good thing. Um, but yeah, I think just, it's just another one of those quality of life things that probably isn't a priority for a lot of people. I think probably a lot of people are just going to load up the game and play the game how it's meant to be played. Uh, and that's probably the majority of people. I think the people that want a loot filter are, are going to be, you know, the blasters that just want to, they only want to stop if it's an item that they know is an upgrade or they know they're going to use and, uh, and then, and then keep blasting and not have to look at any items basically. So, uh, my rationale, loot filters make gear hunting a smoother experience. Adding a loot filter doesn't hurt anyone else's experience. Just makes mine better. Yeah. I think that's fair. Uh, they just added the ability to trade with the group members at the end of a run that would help. Well, you can trade anything now. Um, you can trade anything except Uber uniques, which is, which is massive. So yeah, even if you're not playing together in the same group, you can give an item to your, your buddy, as long as you haven't started crafting on it or anything. Changes may reduce the filter need to a like or have time will tell. I think that's fair. You can trade legendaries. Yep. D1 doesn't have it, nor does D2, D3, Torchlight, etc. All the old score school ARPGs that are considered golden era. That's fair. Personally, I the game that I play most is Diablo 2. The game that I played most in my lifetime is Diablo 2. I never had a loot filter in Diablo 2 until I started playing modded versions of Diablo 2. Sometimes you don't know what you don't have. The problem with Diablo 2 and the reason why I think Diablo 2 would benefit from a loot filter is if you're playing in a game with eight players where the drops are just so abundant, there is a limitation with how many items the game can actually show. And without a loot filter, you would actually just have to pick up every item to be able to see what else is out there. And that's bad. Like that, that is just categorically bad. Like you should know what has dropped. At, at the bare minimum of an ARPG, you should know what has dropped. And that's a problem in Diablo 2 personally. But So should you have a loot filter or a better loot system? I think that Diablo 4 has gone down the loot system path, but I don't think a loot filter is ever bad, right? Because it's not, like people have said, it's not taking away from anything. And you like, okay, so having a better loot system is still the developers telling you, okay, this is how we want you to play our game. You're going to see this item. We've made these items golden because we think they're the best and you should think they're the best because they're golden and highlighted. But what if I want to play the game how I want to play? What if I want to make this like crazy build that just uses this one stat and like, that's how I want to play the game. That's the only stat I want to look for. Like, you should encourage people to play your game how they want to want to play. It's like an author of a book and everyone has these interpretations of the book and it's like, Oh, this is what the author meant. And then, and then you go and say, no, this you're the author of the book. And you said, no, this is what I meant. And your interpretation of the game or your interpretation of the book is wrong. And this is what I meant. So this is how you have to interpret it. Like that's not how anything good like should be produced. Like you should encourage people to want to play your game, how you want to play it. You should encourage people to interpret your book or your writing, however they want to interpret. People are different. They have different experiences. They have different reactions to things. <laughs> Lou filter is players fan fiction. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's like forcing us to do hell tides. You're not letting us play the game how we want to play. You're forcing us to do a chore in order to advance in the game. Like you, you can't not do hell tides. But I compare it to something like Path of Exile. Path of Exile's end game system. Well, you have the Atlas. Once you're at the end game system of Path of Exile, Path of Exile has a super overinflated end game system because it's been out for 10 years and they 
keep adding, adding, and not taking out. But you can choose which end game systems you want to get the most rewards from and just play that end game system. Like if you just want to do, I don't know what they're all called, but if you, if you like just want to do Delve, you can put everything into that and you can just run that, you know, like you, you can, you can, you can boost up the area of the game that you want to play. And I think that that's such a good system. Like you should be encouraged to play how you want to play, not forced to play a certain way but anyway i'm go off on a tangent uh diablo 2 and other arpgs need loot filters because they don't have class based at oh well, yeah well smart loot was a thing right so the smart loot is part of the filtration like a uh, part of the the smarter loot systems um one of the things i brought up to the devs though is like i've asked them for the ability to disable smart loot. So, for instance, say you're farming Uber Durial, you're playing your rogue, you have 0% chance of finding a grandfather. Now, this doesn't take away from anyone's experience that likes smart loot, that only finds rogue items. Like, I would like the ability to disable smart loot to have a chance of dropping these classes for other players. What if I want to play a barb, but I don't want to farm Uber Dural on a barb. I want to farm it on my rogue. That's already like all max level max gear. I can just farm Uber Dural until I find that grandfather. Then I can go make a barb. Oh, did Darmy raid? So I'm not getting any notifications. Shout out for Darmy. Thank you, Darmy. I've got like no notifications and I've got no music playing or anything. I'm so afraid of like copyright on YouTube. <laughs> Bot commands aren't working. Oh, well. Oh, thank you, Darmy. Interesting subject. I'll stay and listen. I don't even know what we were talking about. Got distracted. Uh, what, what are we talking about? End game systems, loot filter. <laughs> Oh, playing how you want to play. Yeah, like like Path of Exile just enables you to play however you want to play, kind of. And I, and I really like that. I, I think that in a game like Diablo 2, there was no end game. Like, there, there wasn't an end game necessarily. Like, the, these ARPGs that come out today, they're coming out with designed end games. But we played Diablo 2 for 20 years without any end game like we did we just did what we wanted to do in the game and that was our end game we made our own end game by just doing the things that we liked doing oh remove smart loot yeah no i was i was saying that like another thing about path of exile diablo 2 is you can find items for other classes so like maybe you're playing a class that you are tired of playing but in Diablo 4 you have to start completely from scratch you're not going to find any items for that other class you have to refarm everything all over again from scratch you can't like there's no existing items that you can just transfer over so i think I'm, I'm all over the place now but i think for smart loot like being able to disable it to try to farm up items for other characters would be a good option to have like you, you can do it if you want but you don't have to let me farm with the tune i want to play i think a smart loot toggle would be pretty sweet right most people wouldn't toggle it off but for some people that, that are, it's just another way to play the game. Uh, D4 was called boring on launch for its lacking end game. See, now that, okay. It's like the chicken or the egg. Was Diablo 4 boring because it didn't have end game? Or did it just not have engaging itemization like the reason people play diablo 2 endgame is because the item like itemization was fun and exciting and cool so i actually think that the changes to itemization alone could solve all of the end game problems the end game is just you're playing the game after you've beaten the game like that's end game so what's going to keep you around playing the game is it this this dungeon that that keeps generating like that's all maps are in in path of exile like that 
or is it is it is it the itemization that's keeping you in like you want to find that next item you want to find that next upgrade that's what's driving your end game like it, 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 blaming a lack of ways to play after you've beaten the game for a boring end game i don't think is i don't think all the blame should be put there i think a lot of the blame should be on the itemization issues that people had like having to look through a laundry list of items is not fun. Whether you're in early game or late game or end game, like it, it it's not fun. You're not going to want to do that. You're not going to want to keep doing that. That's why end game is boring. Your stash would fill up. You wouldn't be able to put items anywhere. You, it would take you 20 minutes after running a dungeon. It takes you longer to look through your inventory after the end of a dungeon than it did to clear the dungeon itself. That's boring. That's the boring part. Like, some of the blame should be placed on the actual activities that you can do, but I think a lot of it has to do with just making an engaging game and a fun game and good itemization that makes you want to play that game. Trading got opened up, Darmy. You can trade legendaries and uniques now in season four. Not right now, but in season four, you can you can trade just about any item. Yep. There was a lot of good changes um, from this 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 PTR uh, we we did a poll at the at the beginning and it was overwhelming positive over 90% i think that that it was a, a big win for Diablo 4 but uh but once you start crafting an item once you start reworking it you can't then trade it but you could trade for any unique you could trade for any legendary that hasn't already started like crafting on it so it's it's almost bind on trade like you you could flip items if you wanted like you could trade for something and then trade it again if you haven't if you haven't worked on it, but otherwise, um, that's it. So we ended up exactly split on does Diablo 4 need a loot filter, but we've gone on, on different tangents since then. Uh, but yeah, I, I think like just calling out that Diablo 4 end game was boring and blaming it on the ac actual activities that you could do isn't like it's part of it, but it's not a hundred percent of the story. Like if itemization was just crazy good, I bet people would be like, oh, Nightmare Dungeons? Yeah, like let me let me smash some Nightmare Dungeons so I can have a chance of finding a Shaco. Like I could see people doing that. What's up, Kier? They need to delete legendary items from Diablo 4. Legendary items make magic and rare items useless. Legendary items make magic and rare items useless. Yes, they're... <clears throat> I don't know if they need to delete legendary items necessarily. So it's it's a really good point. Legendary items make magic and rare items useless. Yes. In the new state Diablo 4 season 4, rare items that once had a purpose are now completely worthless. They are useless. Um, but I don't think you need to delete legendary items. I think you just need to find out what to do with magic and rare items. Like, if anything, you should just delete them at this point. They're worthless. I don't even want them in my inventory. Just give me mats for them because they are completely worthless. Uh, or rework them, which I think they desperately need a rework. Like, what if a magic item, it only spawns one affix, but it's always a greater affix or something like that. Like, yeah, you're going to lose two affixes on your item, but if your build only cares about this one affix, then like a magic item, it's always a greater affix. You could get the highest possible like of that stat on, on that item. And then you could still like masterwork it or whatever. And then rares, maybe they don't always guarantee two greater affixes because that might be OP, but maybe they always guarantee one and then they have a really like a, a like a, a better chance of guaranteeing two. And then we kind of get into this area where, okay, I'm sacrificing an affix but I'm getting greater odds of having two greater affixes, which kind of balances it out. Like until I find that perfect three out of three greater affix item on a legendary, then this rare, this magic is pretty good. This is the only stat I really care about. This is my build enabling stat, say cooldown or something, right? I could see someone in order to reduce your cooldown to zero, like using a magic item that just has a greater affix cooldown role get that cooldown reduction down to zero and that's build enabling. And it was a magic item. All of a sudden magic item is cool, right? Now, sure. Once you find a legendary item that has cooldown reduction as a greater affix, you're going to replace it. But for a time that was still a kind of a really good item. 
I don't know. What what are your guys' thoughts? Diablo 2, yeah. Rares and magic items were best in slot sometimes. Yes. But that's kind of where my head's at with it too. Like saying that, okay, you guarantee a greater affix from a magic and then, you know, that might be something that would take you a while to find as a legendary items. Sounds like you're describing a cruel Colossus blade. I'm describing a cruel Colossus bait of quickness. And if you're a D2 legend, you know what that is. But um, but yes, actually, no, I would just be describing cruel because it's only one affix. <laughs> but I, I guess magic items, like they didn't say that magic items are reduced to one, but they said that rares are reduced to two, which would have to mean magic's reduced to one. But yes, if it only had one affix. The old Cruel Colossus Blade of Quickness. That was, if you don't know, like old school barbarian best in slot magic item in Diablo 2. Just because it could get like the most ED and the most attack rating. Uh, Lucky would love for you to solve this problem. My friend says the devs boost streamers RNG. That's why they have all the good items before anyone. Um, I have not received any boosted RNG. If, if I did, I would have my Shaco by now <laughs> or my Uber tuning stones. So maybe I just didn't get my RNG in the mail. But yes, there is a cat. I've got, there's two cats here. Uh, one and two. And I think, let's see. I mean, I think we covered, like, was there anything else that you guys and girls believe was glaringly missing from the developer stream. I'll, I'll, I'll leave you with that question and we can have a, a bit of a chat. One cat is, is sleeping in the plant. I don't want to wake him up. And then, uh, and then the other cat is in the cat bed there, but. Oh, he's up. He, he is up now. Hi, you. Okay. Here's here's one. And the the other one's still in the plant. Um why do we do world bosses now is one of the questions. World bosses. World bosses were not touched on in the the developer stream. Why do a world boss? That's a good question. If I'm being honest about world bosses, I don't know why anyone has ever done a world boss since the game launched. <laughs> like even when the game launched, they're like, okay, lucky let's go run the world boss. I'm like, why literally why would I ever run a world boss? Even when I haven't gotten my caches, the only reason I run world bosses now is because it's part of the seasonal achievement event. 925s. Yes. That was only for like one season though. The 925s. And because they, they were so easy to kill and they were just 925 pinatas. But they weren't like that at launch and people still love to run them. I did it for 925 last season. Yeah, I, I, that that's fair. And they died just instantly. It's good if you're like lagging behind the group and you get to a new world tier and you really need that not like a 925 item sacred ancestrals and you just go pop in a world boss, get carried and get those items. But for me, like for us, when we were playing through, it would really only be us. Like if you don't know, like I was the first rogue to hit level 100 last season. When you play at that rate, like there's just not going to be people to do world bosses with. So you just end up finding your items in like the overworld. And now literally like everything is going to drop 925. So good point though. What, what is the deal with world bosses? What are we going to do with world bosses? I don't know. I think they drop like some material, like one, one of the materials that's a little bit harder to find, but you can still find it elsewhere. There's like nothing really unique to them. World bosses on hardcore are funny. People run away scared. That sounds funny. Yeah, I never got that. I never got the appeal of world bosses. Like I find 925 items just like you just find them now from from just about everywhere. Like unless it's it's just like your first 925 items. That's the only purpose world boss serves. And even then it's it, it, it's just very little reason outside of that to, to ever run them again after. 
world bosses need to be harder in my opinion and the rewards need to be upgraded like i don't know they need to be much much harder i don't know how to fix them and be like the only way to get 950 items but you could only do them once a week each so it's a challenge you need to actually organize a group efficiently to go and beat them you get a chance at a really godly item but you don't have that fomo of having to get to every single world boss in order to get a chance at these nine 950 items like they only come in the cash which you can only earn once a week so then like you know people who are time crunched can just go in they can do their world boss they can try to get 950 if they get it they get it on the item they want if they don't they don't don't time gate stuff. See, the thing is, if you don't time gate it, like if you don't limit it to just once a week, then you are going to feel like you need to sign in for every single world boss. And that is not a good feeling. Like, I don't know if you guys played the ga this game. It's called um, Lost Ark. I never played MMOs or what people would consider MMORPG. But people describe Lost Ark as like an ARPG MMO, and I had never played one before. I heard Diablo 4 would have MMO aspects, so I checked it out. And the amount of like FOMO that you get from literally dailies, like having to do something, or you will miss your opportunity every single day, it was terrible. It was awful. Like I really enjoyed that game, up to a point where it was like, okay, if I don't sign in every day, I'm never going to upgrade my gear. And that was just, it's just not a good feeling. Like it felt very, um, felt very like predatory. Like I was being taken advantage of, like, I don't have good feelings. It didn't left me, leave me feeling warm and fuzzy that I felt like I had to sign in. And if this is going to be the only place that you can get those nine fifties, like, I'm going to I'm going to feel like I have to sign in every single day. Dailies killed MMOs for me. Dailies, yeah, dailies. Weeklies. <laughs> now we're talking weeklies. Weeklies, I don't feel as bad about. I don't know. I feel like if you can't play a game once a week, then you really shouldn't expect to keep up I don't know with like the metas or, or whatever i don't I, I i don't know like once a week feels like most people should be able to fit that into their schedule but anyway that that's my feeling maybe maybe that i think 950 would be a deal breaker maybe a combination of some item buffs they're adding okay maybe not okay okay maybe not 950 what if what if once a week you drop 925 with three out of three greater affixes. No 950. It's basically 950. Once a week from each world boss, they're hard though. They don't just fall over. Once a week, the world boss cash will give you a three out of three greater affix uh, legendary item. And... You know what those legend what those affixes are gonna be is, is gonna be completely random, but like it will basically will be the only place where you could guarantee something like that. <clears throat> Two seasons back at three forties. Well, I'm not able to click that link. Um if you were able to bank your dailies and do them when you wanted and everyone had equal attempts per account would make it fine. That's fair. I mean, that's fair. That, that, that's, that's kind of what I'm talking about. Like um, being able to play whenever you want, I guess, and not feel like you're just falling behind. That, that's, I like that voodoo. Um, the worry I have is with better loot slash harder boss world bosses is elite is, is in, elite ism instant shopping etc 
So like you're talking about instance shopping for a good party to be in, right? And that something hard rewarding you with a good item is elitism. I'm a firm believer that the hardest content in the game should reward you with the best rewards. Um, that's why I was happy with the changes to Nightmare Dungeons when they guaranteed you 925 drops. Now they've reverted that, which is kind of not great. But, yo, what's up, Kasahi? Um, but yeah, I don't think like... I don't know. I, I just I don't think everyone should just have all the same items regardless of what difficulty that that they're in. Like I I think do think that it's okay to lock like items behind a, a hard boss. I, I don't know. Um, people would be dumping groups and sh well well okay. I I think with this you need some sort of um like group finder right like and and you would organize it like you would you would be in a clan and 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 you would uh, I don't know maybe nine nine fifty items okay so I, I get it like uh, there the argument on the other side is that um this is forced group play right you're never gonna be able to beat one of these raid bosses solo so you'll have to play in a group. Whether that's instance shopping for a, a strong group, um, you know, or 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 organizing your own group, like it is gonna remove. You're not just gonna be able to take a pickup group and clear this 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 boss. And I think that that's fine. But I play this game with a lot of people. I I I I've, I'm a part of uh, you know uh, m many different groups of players, so I don't consider this an issue. But I could definitely see why it would be an issue for someone that likes to play solo, um, especially if this is the only place to get these items. So when I say like 950, that's maybe not a good idea. But maybe like three out of three greater affixes could still work because a solo player could still find those elsewhere. But if you're able to take down this raid, you just get one guaranteed a week, something like that. So maybe it's not fair to un, un, to to lock something behind this group forced group play only, but maybe it just gives you a lot better chance to get this thing that you want. I don't know. It, it, a lot of good points like being 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 thrown around. I'd be down if it was more like a raid summon with functioning community features. Yeah, I mean that sounds pretty cool. If you're doing the hardest content in the game to get better gear, what's the point of the better gear? <laughs> yeah. I mean... That's... That's a good point. Like, that that's such a good point, which I, I like, struggle with myself. And I, I struggle to see, like, where Diablo 4 fits into that. Because it's, like... It, it comes to a point, like, if we're thinking about the pit, Right? You can only get these master working materials in the pit. And then like if you're master working items, the, the hardest content is the pit. So you're just doing the pit so that you can clear higher levels of the pit, right? But I, I think it's like everyone is always holding out for that just like perfect item. Even if it only increases your damage 1%, like... I think that's the, 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 the strive for perfection seems to be a thing in ARPGs that like really encapsulates some people, at least, at least the real, real blasters. So the idea that you can always get something better and in Diablo two, I think Diablo two really suffered from this. Actually, they, they with really hard drop rates in Diablo two. That's kind of how they gated like perfect, perfect items. But in a system that has like corruptions, this tempering, master working with all these RNG things involved, it becomes a lot harder to get that like perfect, perfect item. So even when you're really strong, like you could always still want to hold out for like that next upgrade, that next item. And, and I think that's maybe what keeps people keep keeps people there and, and keeps them doing like hard content, even though they're already able to clear it. But I don't know. It's, it's a great question that I struggle with. 
to do it faster. Yeah. And find better gear. It's just a never ending loop that feeds upon itself. My point is, my point is playing in ARPG to have a progression into end game. Like the stronger my character, the better my reward is the other way around. Um, it's just pure RNG to get upgrades. Yeah. But like the world boss, like, like I want to say it, it helps your chances, but it's not the only chance. Like you could go into world tier four and immediately drop a three out of three, um, greater affix item. Right. But if you're doing harder content, it maybe just increases those chances. But what do you guys think about th this actually is a really, really good point. And I want to talk about maybe one more thing before I open the play button from YouTube spoiler. Um, after but um in diablo 4 every world tier that you go into you kind of like erase all of the items that you had previously outside of maybe le a legendary aspect or two um all of your items go from normal to what's what's sacred and then sacred to ancestral right so you're replacing everything and there's really there's no chance to get that like really good RNG item that you're going to use all into Endgame until you've actually gotten to Endgame. Now, they said that Uber Uniques can drop in World Tier 3, which is kind of cool. I'd like to see them in World Tier 2. That, that might be too OP. But um, like, do you think that there should be more stuff like that where you can find that like one out of 100,000 odd gg item like in diablo 2 you find an soj uh, you know off of um diablo or something in normal or, or you find um you know a gold dagger or mage fist something an item that you're going to use that you can find really early that you're going to use well into end game I mean, even last epoch has low level items that are viable for end game builds like do you want do you want more of that because it doesn't feel great jumping up a world tier and then all that connection you had with those items it's just like well they're all gone let me just replace them all so like you've had this whole journey with these items up until then and now it's just like okay we're just gonna we're just gonna send them all away Woot, thanks for the five bucks over on youtube uh but so i think it's cool that they're letting you find uber uniques there but but maybe i think people people feel like you should be able to find more, um, more there because as we were saying, like, what's the point of finding these items after you're already able to one shot Uber Durial? Like you can't one shot them any stronger. Right. So like, why are we locking Uber uniques behind them? Well, it, now it's to do these other end game systems like the pit. Uh, but it was, it was kind of silly there for, for a minute. So good discussions, uh, good, good talks. I'm going to uh, get all this feedback and uh, and try to provide it in a concise manner over to Blizzard. I think there are too many world tiers. Rush to get to T3 as soon as possible. Yeah, I, the, the whole tiered system, I, it's, it's just a little strange. First super on a live stream? Is that my first super? I thought someone else, yeah, someone had given me five bucks. Um, can't wait two months for new content. Well, you can play the PTR. PTR is in two weeks instead of two months. But yeah, they delayed the season. They're extending season three and um, season season four is going to be May 14th. Bought a sticker. Oh, well, thank you, Woot. I appreciate that. And now this. Thank you, YouTube. Here, let's make this bigger. Thank you, YouTube, and thank you all of you that made this possible. I think by now we, we kind of all know what this is, but I'll just open it up. Uh, we'll celebrate this together. What could it be? Oh, what could it be? And thank you, Diablo 4. Oh, let's see. Hold on. Okay, we'll open it. Uh, 
felt. Congratulations on your subscriber milestone. We're honored to take part in recognizing your achievement, part of the experience. This package was inspected with great care by Rick. Thank you, Rick. None of this is like private information or anything. There's just like a, a, a little letter from YouTube. Fancy knife, thank you. And we've got a cat. He's like been very interested in this uh, package. If you saw on uh, Twitter when I tweeted. Here it is. It's very reflective. You can see my whole setup. And presented to Lucky Luciano for passing 100,000 subscribers. I never thought that that would be possible, honestly. I think before Diablo 4, I might have had 10,000 subscribers. But that's crazy. Thank you, everyone on YouTube. First YouTube stream today. I thought I would uh, open this as a in honor of that. And um, I was going to hang it on my wall, but it's got like two doohickeys here. And I think I only have one, but I can give it a shot. Perfect. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Rip. <laughs> Rip award. <laughs> oh my gosh. That was, that was a 10 out of 10 hanging. We'll see if... <laughs> I might have to get another uh, command hook for that. <laughs> Couldn't have gone better. I'll try to get it up so that it's, <laughs> it's in the background. But um, that is it. Thank you, everyone. Spelled your name correctly? Yeah, I'm, I'm super stoked about it. We'll get it displayed. It's it's quite an achievement. Like I said, never thought it was possible and wouldn't be possible without you all. Uh, but thank you everyone that's come by, uh, that has checked out the stream. If you were here from the campfire chat and you stuck around, uh, I appreciate it. Thank you for sharing your feedback. Uh, I really want to get you know more feedback to Blizzard because they react to they reacted to our feedback and i they will to yours too uh it's partially our responsibility for making this game better making it a game that we like to play um so i appreciate all of you that stuck around if you would like to follow the stream then you'll get notified when i go live next so if you haven't yet uh, on youtube you can subscribe and you could thumbs up the stream and on twitch if you're still here you could give it a follow uh, but we are going to find someone to raid now. Uh, it's dinner time. So let's see. Who can we raid? There's not a lot of people still on. Thank you, villain. Uh, let's raid Sparkles. He's not playing Diablo 4. <clears throat> let's raid Macro. on twitch and i'm not sure how to raid on youtube uh so we will figure that out separately <laughs> uh but we're gonna raid macro on twitch um i think it's redirects over on youtube okay let's go raid macro it's <laughs> 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 
So in here we've got uh, you know our, our bow. He's rewatching. Looch. Looch coming through with the raid. Yo, what it do, Looch, my boy? GG. Welcome in everybody from Looch's stream. Hi, my name is Macro Bio Boy. I'm the Necromancer class dude from Axroll. If you've never met me before, it's a pleasure to have you here. What is good, my friend? I hope you had a fantastic stream. Nice big raid from Diablo after. I came in and added you. I don't know if you saw it though. I said a funny joke. But I appreciate you, man. Thank you for coming through. Yo, shouts to Lucky Luciano. Go give my boy some love. I think he just got his silver play button on YouTube. Big ups. Big, big ups. We are going through redirect uh, the live stream. Took a lot of notes. And then on top of that, uh, we're starting to collect things you probably missed. Um, so it turns out we actually saw a lot of aspects. Uh, we saw some of the new aspects that are going to be in the game. And we also saw changes or buffs to some of the aspects. So I'm going to be covering this in a video after. Right now we're re-watching the tempering section just to get like more specific details about it. Yeah, thank you very much to the Ray Man. I hope you had a fantastic stream. Wine sipping girl, what it do? Thank you for the follow. Welcome in. Here, because this is a weapon, we can attach. All right, real quick, real quick. While we have you here, here I'll put on some music while we're chit chatting. Luch, what do you, what do you think about the changes? Rare items are worse than legendaries. Yes. W changes step in the right direction. I can agree with that. Infinite scaling going to kill 90% of builds, so you're going to be forced to play meta if you check AOZ leaderboards. <laughs> infinite scaling there's no infinite everyone scaling. here from youtube there's i am still trying to figure scaling. this out redirect it's objectively good for the game it makes me want to play hard agree like every change is objectively good it's objectively good it fills the gaps for a lot of things that people have been looking for um yeah just straight up w's across the board actual end game actual crafting actual chase items uh, actual trading. <clears throat> You're still alive. Thank you. I know. I'm trying to figure out how to redirect. Just good. Just all, just objectively good. It's just, there's no, like... So they remove power from items and they give you new ways to create items one? that you already could get. <laughs> no, that is literally not what's happening. So items are strictly there's stronger. no like slash there redirect are different stats those stats are higher and now you can add on <clears> unique <throat> stats that never existed in the game previously interact with uniques uh so that's what i'm trying to remember i don't think there's a way i, I think you can it's, a, it's just impossible uniques. all right we'll just Luke, end do it you remember if you can but thank you uniques at all first youtube stream you in the books yeah. But as we saw, uniques have four affixes, or at least Ubers did.